Hello and welcome to a new course with me. In this course you are going to learn how to build a complete restaurant booking management system and online food ordering system in the same app with PHP, MySQL, Bootstrap, PayPal payment and PDO. So after you finish this course you should have a clear understanding of how web apps are created with modern technologies, how to combine the tools that I just mentioned to build something meaningful, plus you are gonna have fun along the way. Alright, so here is a little bit about me, so if you don't know me, my, my name is Mohammed Hassan, I'm a web developer, a freelancer and an instructor. I have taught more than 30,000 people programming in the past year only, and I have more than 600,000 people who enrolled in my courses. Alright, so let's now take a look at the finished version of our own web app. I'm just gonna give you a little, a very little sneak, sneak peek. Uh, after this short break. Alright, so now we're back once again and here is the finished version of our own web app. Um, so naturally we are in the index page right here. We will have a couple of links. Um, I would say the most important ones are the booking and simply uh, the cart uh, right here. Alright, so for the booking, it will simply allow us to go to another page where we, where we will have uh, the form that will allow us to book for the tables, alright? And if we go down at the bottom right here, we will view some information or we will see some information about our own web app. Um, and here we have the most popular items right here. Uh, so we can simply go to any one of those items and we can add it the card, you know, and we will also have the you know uh, the table booking form uh, right over here in the bottom all right and again this will not just be a, a normal uh, booking system we will also allow users to order food online we will allow them to add uh, food items to their cart uh, you know go and do a checkout and then pay for the products um, all right and here is our you know what our clients say this is just a simple review system right here uh, this is completely dynamic you know uh, let's now access these pages so there is the booking right here we can simply use this form uh, to book and we'll of course do a validation for the date so uh, the date right here the user can only pick up dates in the future you know um, all right and there is simply he can allow you know he can uh, specify the number of people right over here so let me just do a symbol booking uh, right over here so this will be at G mail.com and there is well actually we can paste this right here and there is the name all right so there is the special request we can simply grab some just some fake text you know um, let me copy this and paste it down here if we click on book now so we can simply now go to the index back once again so that means that this is actually working and you know every user can just access his booking from this right here um, all right and he can also access his own orders you know online um, now let's go to this page which is the cart right here so we have a couple of items that are already in the cart we can simply delete them all right we can delete one of them so there you can see that that the total price is, is changing dynamically you know if we go right here and if we refresh this so we have the chicken wings actually uh, in the cart this is why we will see something like added to the cart and you know the button will be disabled uh, we cannot add uh, you know the same item to the cart uh, twice of course uh, so this is the page for the bookings right here all right we can now view our own bookings we can view the status of this booking right here and we can only review uh, the bookings uh, you know that are already confirmed so since this user consumed uh, uh, this service now he can simply go to this page review.php and he can actually uh, review this all right write uh, a simple review um, okay so I want to show you uh, how the card works you know uh, how we can add products and so on so I want to go to any one of those uh, products right here if I simply click on add to cart all right so now this will be added to cart if I refresh this 
I can simply that we see that the total the total now is forty dollars. You know the submission of those two right here. Um, if we now go click on checkout. Um, all right, so there we go, right over here. So we can simply enter our own information quickly, and if we go right here, Gmail dot com if we go to the town and if we enter some town right here and if we go to the country and if we enter some country um, I'm just gonna go ahead and type some fake data right away so there is the phone number assembly and there is the address you can grab some text from here alright so if we click on order and pay we should now go to pay.php page which will allow us to view um, the PayPal uh, button right here if we click on it we we should see uh, that the PayPal window is opening up and we can now go ahead and pay for this service right here of course I will have to you know to log in with some special account uh, some special password and uh, email uh, right here um, and this will be the bu the buyer uh, account so I will show you how to set up uh, the PayPal accounts so we can grab some fake data you know some fake money and work with it um, all right so we will uh, you know we will get into a lot of things I will make a lot you know, we'll make everything easy for you to understand you know in the PayPal payment process we will set up some accounts um, we will uh, create some SDK app uh, and you know we will work our way through all of this so but I'm gonna cancel uh, this order uh, right now I'm gonna you know go back to the home page so yeah this is how everything works uh, basically uh, of course this is not everything um, you know in this app there's a lot of validations there's a lot of stuff that's going uh, under the hood in this web app so you will you will learn a lot of cool uh, features and a lot of stuff uh, this is completely real world you know um, I want to also go give you just a, a little sneak peek um, in the admin panel so I'm gonna log out right now and I'm gonna go to my PHP uh, admin right here and let me grab some account from the admin stable um, alright so there we go let me copy this email and if I go to admin dash panel right here this will redirect this will redirect me right away to the login page because we cannot access anything that's related to the admins unless we are logged in all right so let me just paste this right here and click on login all right so now we are at the index page so we will view some um, some statistics about our own web app and here is our admin name right here um, if we simply click on admins we can simply view the admins that we have and we can even create new ones right here and if we click on orders um, there is our orders that we have we can simply change the status of the orders you know to uh, something like uh, pending or confirmed you know however that we like it if, and if we click on foods right here this will allow us to grab you know to show the food items we can simply create a new food item right here and I'm gonna show you how to upload an image you know um, if we click also on bookings we will view also some information about the bookings right here and we can also change the status or even delete uh, the bookings uh, that we have uh, right here all right so this is a very you know again this is a very sneak peek in, inside our own web app there is a lot of stuff to go uh, to go through right here you know but once you buy the course or once you get the course you will have access to you know unlimited uh, opportunities to learn uh, how web apps are how web apps work and how they are built and so on so if you like this get it right now and I will simply I will simply see you inside. All right, so in this video, I'm going to teach you how to basically install Exam. An Exam is just um, just a server run or or just simply a program that will allow us to have a, a bunch of tools. You know, when we're working with uh, development, especially back end development. All right. So we will basically uh, have a server which is the Apache server um, which is simply just a local server and we will have um, MySQL and the PHP programming language and we will also have 
uh, PHP my admin which is just uh, a tool for managing uh, databases and we can also have a bunch of stuff like it also includes uh, the Perl programming language and if you're not familiar with it it's basically a programming language that's widely used for uh, programming uh, for um, networks stuff like that all right but you know this is not our uh, subject so what we need to do in this video we are going to go ahead and install exam so if we just go and type in exam right here we should see this link which is the apachefriends.org so if we click on this so now we will go to this page and it's telling us download right here so we can download this for different um for different operating systems so here we have windows and here we have exam uh, here we have linux and uh, this is uh, apple right here os so we click on this obviously i have windows so now it should a window should pop up right here and we can just download this right away all right so now we can just download it if i click on save i already downloaded uh, i already downloaded the program right here if i just click on save now it's starting to download i'm just gonna cancel this and i'm gonna go ahead right away and install it all right so after it after you download it just go ahead and click on it right here i saved it in my uh, desktop so if i click on yes all right so all right important because you uh, activated user account all right so if we simply click on ok and if we click on next so as you can see right here here are our own uh, components or the tools that we have uh, right here so right here i'm gonna keep my sql so we already have the server uh, checked for us we cannot even like edit it or something and we here we have the apache server and here we have my sql files uh, i don't want this and this also and this so i'm gonna remove them i'm gonna keep Perl. if you don't want it you can just uh go ahead and uncheck it um you know as you can see right here here is programming language and we already have php checked for us and here uh, program uh, program language is also uh, here i'm gonna and un uncheck this and uncheck this i want php uh, my admin because it's a very uh, very handy tool for managing uh, databases so if we click on next we also click on next the selected folder is not empty please select a different folder all right so if we if we go right here all right so i want to delete this because i tried to install it like before so if i go to my c you probably you're probably not going to do this because you did not install it before so if i just delete this if i go delete again all right so now if we just keep it for keep it right here at the c and it's going to create this folder right here and it's going to install install our program inside it so if we click on next now we can see the language is english now there is english and deutsch i'm going to keep it english and if we click next and also next now it's un it's installing this right here so here you can see it's it's generating uh this file right here and it's installing the files uh, inside right here which is in the c uh, partition all right so i'm gonna like i'm gonna close this and i'm gonna get back to you in a couple of minutes until uh, it finish all right so it's nearly finishing up and it's telling me that it's gonna access um gonna access the firewall uh, the firewall here so i'm gonna go and allow access for this in order for this installer or in order for this installer to finish up um all right so just let's wait a second all right so now it's over so it's still a means setup has finished installing exam on your computer do you want to start the control panel now and i'm gonna go ahead and 
uncheck this because if i lift this checked and if i clicked on finish you know we will have to start exam every time we want every time we like you uh you close or you turn off your uh, your own computer in order to go ahead and actually and actually work with it all right but if we uncheck this and if we click on finish and if i go ahead now to my the partition right here and if i go to exam and if i go down here and if i go to the control panel and if i try to run this as an administrator you know exam will run automatically every time you turn on your own computer right so you don't wanna uh, so you don't have to like start it uh, all over again right because this is just noisy you know all right so if we click on this click yes to install the apache server uh, apache server yes and if we also click on this so this is also yes all right if we click on start and if we simply start this also all right so great we click on admin all right so this should start all of this all right if we click also on php my admin right here all right so here is basically they're both working which is just awesome all right if we go hd docs right here all right so if we simply go localhost and if we go index dot php all right so it's still going to the same uh page all right which is this right here so yeah they're working well, now everything looks everything looks great so this will be it and i'll see you in the next video so in this one i'm going to show you how to install the visual studio code which is the text that we are going to be using and probably if you're watching this maybe like 99 percent of you guys have already like um set up this uh this program okay and if you did just leave um just follow along you know you can skip this video whatever you like so basically i have it down here but if you wanna i already have already installed it but if you look up down here visual studio code we go over here click on this link you can click on download for windows now it's gonna like show you how to download it gives you like um a visual studio code so if you click on save it's actually going to be downloaded so i actually downloaded it so i'm going to cancel it and i have it over here on my on desktop and you're gonna click i accept this agreement next and i'm not gonna add it uh, to the path so i'm gonna go ahead if you want to create like a desktop icon or anything it's basically like a symbol program like any other program that you set up and now if i click on install i'm gonna be like installing installing this like visual studio code and if you go up if you go up over here you can uh, after you install it you can look it up and it will show up right here and you can open uh, the visual studio you can start coding with me and of course if you have like a php store if you have like sublime like i have one over here if you have text plus plus it's all fine it will all of them will do the trick i don't want to like click install because i've already have my uh, visual studio code right here it will override this one that i already have and i have like I have, I have a lot of settings and extensions so i don't i don't want to like to set up all of that again so i'm just going to cancel but you will click on install and it will install it right away for you so yeah i hope this i will be like this one this one is so simple and as i said every uh, text editor will do the trick so thanks for this one and see you all right so here is the design that we are going to be using for our own project you know it's looking pretty neat right over here um so typically we'll have an index page of course we'll have a couple of links right here 
will have the, about uh, the service dominion uh so if we simply try to access a couple of these right here um yeah so you know if we go down we're gonna see a couple of information you know information about our own website and so on um so here we also have the menu we have the menu for the breakfast the lunch and the dinner um if we simply click on the view right here we will simply view um uh view this single item information and we can simply add it to cart uh, because this will not uh this will not be just uh, you know a regular uh restaurant booking system uh, all right uh we're not gonna only allow the users to just book tables and you know that that will be all we will also allow them to order uh food online all right so they will add you know um this food to cart simply uh and if we go right over here we go right over here to this link we can we can see that here is our own cart right here and yeah uh simply we have uh, information about um the orders or the cart uh, for for this user uh, right here um and simply the user can go and check out of course right here um all right so he's going to send information with this form right here and he can simply click on order and pay and he's simply going to pay you know with a payment uh, message that, yeah, that i'm going to show you uh, of course in uh in this course um all right so this will this will be like two systems or you know uh, inside one big website you know um uh, we are going to allow the users to order uh, allow the users to order food online and we're going to allow them to simply uh, book um book tables online all right and of course we will you know we will have um the login and the register pages you know these are like essential on every website that you know that i'm building um all right so here is also a page for the food menu right here um all right so yeah and here is our own form actually that we are going to use to simply allow users to book you know um the book tables right here all right so yeah here is also a couple of you know uh testimonials uh stuff like that so yeah it will be a, a really really uh good website to build or a really good system to build um all right so just check check out the resources section for this video and you will find uh, the code for this project so you can just follow along with me so we can build uh this amazing project uh, all right so i'm pretty excited already so go ahead and check out the resources section and i will see you in the next video all right so now we're back with another video um and you would think actually that i will just tell you to go ahead copy and paste the code inside your ht docs folder which is then which is in the exam right here uh, inside your c drive uh but i'm not actually gonna go ahead and do this um before we do all of this i want to go ahead uh, and create my class um all right and inside this uh, or create my file right here um, and inside this file we're going to create a class so this file will be like a simple library uh, that we will have our uh, database uh, you know processings uh, you know uh, selecting grabbing data from the database inserting uh, updating data uh, and so on um, so yeah this is what we are going to be building uh, first uh, all right so we're going to create a config file and we're going to go ahead and create uh, a file uh, that's basically a class um all right and inside this class again we will have uh, all uh, the stuff uh, that are related to our own uh, database um all right so we will build we will build this first after this we can take it and you know uh, and we can paste it inside of our own project and can start working with it uh, right away uh, all right so this will save us a lot of time uh, and effort all right so if we go right here and if i simply go ahead and just type in project like this and if i go ahead inside this folder i want to open this up uh with visual studio code right here all right so i want to go ahead right here and i want to create two folders so the first folder will be config right here um and inside this folder i'm going to go ahead and create um a file so i'm going to go new right here i'm going to go and name this config.php all right Ooh. 
and i'm gonna go also right here i'm gonna create another folder and i will call this libs as you know a short for libraries so i'm gonna go inside this and simply create a new file so this will simply be just app all right dot php this will be our class you know uh it's you know prefer but preferably uh, to name your class uh with a big uh with a big letter you know um right here just like uh, as your uh, class right here to, to name your file as your class um all right so i want to go ahead right here so here's our our files and folders um all right so let's go to the config right here and let's simply go ahead and type in our configurations so the configurations will simply be a constant right here so we will have four configurations the first one is simply the host and the host will be most always local host right here all right so after this we will have a couple more um, and this will be the p name this will be our database name so this will be just demo for now all right we're gonna all of course change uh, this and uh, this right here should be uh, the user so the user will be just root um all right and after this we're simply gonna go ahead and type in the password so the password in my uh, in my condition is nothing all right so we're gonna go ahead and save this right here and i want to now go to app.php so this is where our class will be well first of all i'm gonna require um the config first um all right so we're gonna go a step back first and we're gonna go ahead and go config slash config dot php and you know when we work with our own project we're not gonna actually uh, uh require it uh, inside the app right here all right but for now let's go ahead um and do this let's require it and now let's go ahead and start working with our own class so if i go right here and just uh you know go class app right here all right so this is where we can write our own uh, methods uh properties and stuff like that so if you're not familiar with oob i'm not going to explain everything um in this course this is uh, this is a, a project you know this is a project to teach you uh, the concepts that you already learned in OOP, uh, how to apply them, you know, and so on. So if you don't know uh, OOP, just go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, look up some course or something so you can learn it. You know, we're going to work with the most basic stuff. So you do not need like to take 20 hour, uh, 30 hour course. All right. We're going to learn with, you know, we're going to work with really basic stuff. So this should be really easy for you. All right. So inside our own class, we'll have a couple of properties, a couple of methods. So the first, um, the first uh, property that we're going to have, well, first of all, we should define it, whether it's uh, protective, uh, private, or public. So we're going to keep this public. And the host will simply equal um, the host that we have right here, all right, which is this right here. Um, and if we simply end this with a, with a semicolon, well, this will be db name um all right and this will be just db name is the constant that we have inside the config right here um all right after this this will be the user um so the user will simply be the constant for it is simply user and this right here will be the password um and this will also be password right here all right so there is just public after this and we're gonna define our own link which is the variable that we are going to use or the property that we are going to use to connect with our own database all right so we're done with the properties right now let's simply uh try to connect our to our database so we want um we want to go ahead and once we instantiate this class right here we want to go ahead and um uh, and connect our own database right away um all right because all the or the methods will be inside this class uh, inside this class right here all the methods that we are going to be working with so in order to do this we're going to go ahead and create a constructor and if you're not familiar with it well uh, the constructor is a is a type of um is a type of function that we can uh, you know that's triggered uh, right away once we instantiate this class 
all right so when i go ahead and keep this public function right here um underscore underscore construct so this is how we write um a construction or a construct uh, method all right and this is how we if we write the message just type in public uh you can also type private but we're going to keep this as public right and then you, you write the keyword function right here and then you type the name of your function but in this in this message right here is a construct so it doesn't so we do not need to define a name we're just going to write this right away um all right and the properties right here if you're not familiar with them well first of all the properties are just like uh variables um all right so we can type in you know the type of your uh, property first and then you type the name of your property and you simply uh, define the value uh, right here after the equal sign um all right and you can just you know define one just like this without no value and you can use it later um all right so here we have the construct so inside the construct i want to trigger the function that we are going to be creating in a second which is the connect function right here which will help us connect connect to our own database all right so go ahead and you know uh you know work with something uh right here we can use uh the, this keyword right here so this this keyword refers to the same class that we are going to be working with so simply i can access um i can access that I, I can access this property right here not just message you know using this keyword well all all what i need to do is just type in this and then i can type any name like host right here you know and i can simply access um this right over here all right and we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna write in um the dollar sign uh, the, the dollar sign right over here all right and we can simply access uh this right away all right so this is what uh the, this keyword right here refers to it refers to the same uh, class that we're working with all right so right here uh once once again once the class in is, is instantiated we're gonna go ahead and uh, you know this will be triggered this construct function will be triggered and then we're gonna connect to our own database right away all right so let's now go ahead and create our own um function right here public function right here um so this will be connect all right so to connect to our own database we're going to go ahead and type in this and then we're going to use the link right here the variables that we just uh created all right so this link right here it will uh be equal to new pdo we're going to be working with pdo right here so uh, right over here we need to specify a couple of things the first thing inside the you know the pdo class uh which is a mysql database so this will be the type of database that we are going to be working with and i'm going to work in this course with the mysql database after this we need to specify the host so the host will equal simply um if we concatenate like this it's equal uh the host right here so again we can go right here and access this inside this uh, function using the this keyword all right and after this we're going to go ahead and type in host um all right so after this we're going to go dp name and again we're going to concatenate this and we're going to type in this right here so this will be dp name all right so after this we're going to go right here and go and you know leave the double condition write a comma um right here so we're gonna go user um we only have one thing left and that is the password right here so this and the password is right over here then we're gonna end this with a semicolon all right so if we go right here and do just a little test we go this link right here so if this is true we're simply gonna echo out something like um db connection is working all right so D db connection right here let's remove this all right so db connection is working all right so this should be curly braces so let's cut this and paste it right here 
all right so this will be all for the function for the connect uh, right over here so let's save this whole thing let's also go to config and save this let's now try to access the page so if we simply um well actually in order for this to work um we need to instantiate the class first all right so if we go down at the bottom and of course this this is just a demo where we will not instantiate anything inside uh the app class or inside the app uh, file so i'm gonna name this object right here so in, to instantiate this we're simply gonna go ahead and create a variable right here we're gonna name it object and we're gonna go new and app all right and simply end this with the semicolon so save this whole thing right here and let's go all right over here and just type in local host um slash project and if we go slash right here um lips slash um app dot php all right so unknown database demo right over here all right so we have an error we do not have a database with the name demo so if we copy this if we go to new right here just go to localhost slash php my admin right away and create your database you know so here is the database demo right over here um so if we simply go ahead and refresh this now so as you can see db connection is working um so yeah the database connection is perfectly working right now i'm gonna stop till here you know of course we will do uh like a bunch of other methods uh, right over here this is just the starting point of our own uh, project and once we finish this file we can take it and we can simply uh, implement it um or paste it or integrate it inside uh, our own future projects all right uh, and it will work perfectly it will help us and save us a lot of time uh, and effort uh, this is what it will be uh, all about and it will also you know the code will be more organized all right so this will be all and i will see you on the next video all right so now let's go ahead and you know continue working with our app class right here in the last video we went ahead and we connected our own database now what we're gonna do is simply um uh, learn how to learn to grab data from the database all right so we're gonna go with the select all so we're gonna create a function that will simply that we can use later inside our own app uh that will allow us to grab all the data that we need um all right so if we go public function right here so we will name this select um all all right so if we pass in the query all right so well this this function right here will just accept one query you know uh when we build our own project this will all make sense we will pass in the query like select all from users something like that and then what we're gonna do inside um inside uh, the method with this query right here we're gonna go ahead and create a variable right here so this will be um we will name this as rows right here so this will equal this right here and you know with this right here now since we have um this part right here that will allow us to simply connect our own database we can simply grab it right over here and then we can perform any kind of query that we want like as like a query uh, right here we can use the query keyword in a uh, keyword inside the pdo or we can simply um use the prepare keyword inside um inside pdo <clears throat> all right excuse me so since we have this and it will allow us to simply connect our own database and now we can simply do any kind of query all right so i want to go right here and do a query um and we will pass in the query that we are going to be writing uh, later all right so if i paste this in like this and i want to go down i want to go right here and go rows uh, rows right here so this will be executed all right after this we're going to go ahead and go all rows so we're simply going to go ahead and fetch so this will be rows right here and this will be fetch all all right so this will be pdo right here fetch underscore opg all right so this will be all if we just go down at the bottom and if we test this all uh, rows right here all right if this returned uh, something we're gonna go ahead and simply um 
or if we have something inside this array right here we're simply just gonna return it all right so return right here all rows all right else we're gonna return false all right so this will simply be all all right so yeah this will be all if i simply copy this right now and if i go down at the bottom i want to also create um another uh method that will simply allow us to just select one row at a time all right sometimes you need this you know if you want to fetch like data in another page about a product let's say so if we go select one row right here so this will be select one like this and we will also pass in a query and we're going to go ahead and name this so it will actually be row um and this will also be row right here and this will also be row all right so we'll we will go ahead and use our own uh, link right here which will allow us to, to connect our own database we're going to pass in we're going to use the query keyword and we're going to pass in uh, the query right here and after this we're going to execute and um, this right here will be just um single um single row all right so yeah and after this we're simply just gonna fetch only fetch because we're fetching one row at a time and we will use the fetch uh, object right here uh, so we will actually fetch this as an object right and after this we're simply gonna return it um if we actually have something inside um this array right here we're gonna return it right away um all right so this is simply what we are going to be doing in this video i know it's not too big but i don't want to get you know too complicated and do a lot of things in um in simply one video all right so this will be all in the next video we're going to be working um with the crud uh functionality you know with the rest of the current uh functionality right so this will be all um uh make sure to save of course so this will be all and i'll see you on the next video all right so now let's move um to the insert and update uh query so in the last video we made uh the select all rows um and we did the select one row right here so now if we go down at the bottom if we just go public uh, function right here um so this will be insert like this all right and we're gonna pass uh three things actually yeah three um so we're gonna pass in first the query um and we're gonna pass the array and this will be the array of variables that we are gonna be inser inserting you know and we're gonna pass in uh the path right here so after the user inserts he you know he mainly goes to a, a path to another page or something so we're gonna send this in um all right so after this we're gonna go down here and go f uh we want to check first if the inputs are empty or not um all right so i want to go down here first and i want to create a function that will allow us to simply validate right away so i'm gonna go public function right here um validate um all right so for the validates uh, for for the validate i'm gonna send in the array of uh values that we are gonna be inserting inside our own database and i want to go down here and go f um n array in underscore array right here so i'm gonna check if we have nothing um right here so this double quotes right here means nothing so if we have a, a value uh with no uh, a value you know uh, an empty value um or uh, right inside the array right here um all right i'm gonna go ahead and equal out something like um empty all right so again we're gonna check we're gonna use the in array uh function right here and we'll we'll pass in uh the empty right here the empty uh double uh, codes and we will pass in the array that we want to check in it uh so the array uh, in array function basically checks for something in an array so if we have uh, nothing at uh the array uh, that we're passing in right here we're gonna go ahead simply and equal out something like empty um all right so i want to go ahead well i will name this validate I go ahead and copy this right here and i want to access this like this so this validate right here and again it's going to take in the array 
all right so if this right here equals empty which is uh, the value that's actually returning right here um all right so if this right here uh gives us empty so that means that we have um something uh, that's empty we have a value that's empty inside the array uh, uh right here so we want to echo out something like um echo um let's see we, we're gonna go ahead and type in script and we're gonna simply echo out a symbol alert right here uh we're gonna go one or more inputs are empty um all right and we're simply gonna finish this up by writing just script all right and if not we're gonna go ahead now and try to insert all right so i'm gonna go right here and just type in insert um record right here all right uh, so this will equal right here we're gonna go once again and grab the link that we have um and right here we're gonna type in the keyword prepare um all right and we're gonna pass in the query right here for the prepare all right so here we go and after this we're simply gonna go ahead and execute and and execute and this will be all all right so execute right over here so uh for the execute um we need to pass of course the array because since we are going to use the prepare right here uh, we're going to use some handlers um all right so for the execute we need to pass in the array so all of this will make sense once we actually go ahead and build our own project um all right so after this we're going to go ahead uh right here and type in header and we're going to go location right here and then we will go back to a pay uh, to a to the path that we are going to pass in right here so we just go ahead and paste this right over here all right so awesome great uh so i want to copy this part right here and i want to go down over here and paste um and this will be simply update right here so we're going to pass in the query the array and the pass right here all right and we're going to use the validate um function right here um because when we go ahead and update the user can you know go ahead and uh, and delete a, a value from the inputs and just leave it empty so we're not going to allow him to leave anything empty um all right so the validate right here so we're going to pass in the array all right and uh we're going to pass in the array and uh, you know if it's returning the value empty right here we're simply going to trigger this alert right here all right else we're going to go ahead and update uh, the value that we're having so this will be update uh record um all right so copy this paste it right here um all right and we're also going to work with the pre uh, with the prepare uh, function with the pdo prepare function so we're going to pass in the query that we have and after this we're going to execute and we're going to pass in the array of the new uh, values all right and after this we're we're going to go to a certain location so we're going to you know pass in the pass uh, right here or the directory um all right so we can simply go ahead also and you know work with the update that's fine you know it's pretty simple uh the update is the simplest query that you can do possibly so if we go right here and name this delete so we're going to send in the query and you know we're not going to send um any arrays actually so just go ahead and remove this we're going to send the pass right away all right so we're going to validate and once again we're going to go down here and name this so it will be delete right here so copy this part paste it right here and this will be simply query we're going to pass in the query right here um and we're not going to pass in the array all right well actually since we um let's say validate right here yeah we can simply remove this part for for the validation actually we do not need it you know because we're not going to validate any inputs that delete you know for the delete we do not need we do not even need a form so we're not going to validate anything you know it's going to just delete uh right away um all right so yeah this will be all we can write you know uh some comments right here to make this even more beautiful so we copy this part 
um if we go down here if we keep this as update all right so this will also be insert um all right so here we go so this will be all and i will see you on the next video all right so now let's move to another part which is the register and the login so we're going to create uh, two uh methods for those um all right so the register it's going to be pretty similar to the insert so just let's copy this uh part right here let's go down at the bottom let's simply try to paste this in so this will be just register uh, so we're going to send the query of course and we're going to send um the array of data and we're going to send the path um we're going to validate you know so that's fine we'll leave this as it is so this will be right here um register underscore user um all right so yeah we're going to keep this as prepare so we're going to pass in the query right here for the prepare method after this we're simply going to go ahead and execute uh this and we're going to go ahead and send you know go to a certain path right here it's probably going to be the login uh once we actually go ahead and create uh, our project in the next videos um all right so the next thing that we are going to be working with and would you know and that is on uh, the log n so for the login i guess that we are gonna also grab these right here so i want to call this uh the data that we are going to be sending it's simply i'm going to call it as a data um all right so after this we're going to go ahead down over here so think of the login uh, actually just a way uh, of validation all right so we're going to grab the email and the user uh the email sorry and the password from the user and we're going to validate them so first of all we're going to go ahead and validate the email right here so for validating the email we're validating the email right here i'm going to go ahead um just type in login um underscore user so this will equal this and we're going to grab the link right here and we're going to grab the query keyword um all right and we're going to pass in the query right here um all right so this will simply check um a query right here will check for the email that's coming from the user and after this we're simply going to go ahead and execute this all right so this will simply be all you know and after this we're going to go ahead and fetch so i'm going to go ahead and type in fetch and i'm going to tell you why why uh, i'm going to tell you why we are fetching since it's only a validation so this will be login user right here and we're going to simply fetch uh just fetch you know because we're checking for one row at a time um all right so fetch opg all right so yeah so this is this is all for the part for the email well to finish the part for the email up we're simply gonna go ahead and type in f um login user right here um and we're gonna go ahead and type in raw count all right so for the row count right over here it's gonna simply return the number it's gonna return a number uh, based on uh this query right here based on the affected rows in this query um so if we look at this query right over here um we're gonna see that we're checking one row at a time which is of course the username uh, sorry the email and the password all right so if we got the username sorry again if we got uh, the email and the password right this query right here it's gonna return one and if you know if it returns one then that means that we are a success well actually it's gonna only um sorry it's gonna only um uh, check for the email all right so if this right here if the row count returns a number of one if we if the user got the email if the user got the email right so that means that we can simply move on to the next point right here so if this returns one which is bigger or greater than zero that means that now we need to go ahead and validate the password all right if this whole thing doesn't make any sense i'm going to actually explain it um once again more in more details once we actually create our own project
all right a lot of stuff we are going to be cleared out once we go ahead and work uh, with the static project all right so after we validate the email right here um all what we're going to do is simply validate the password so to validate the password since we're going to go ahead actually and hash the password um with the password hash function we're going to go ahead and uh validate the you know or, or check for the password with the password uh verify function right here so for the password verify function we need to pass in the user that the the password that the user is writing in the input which is going to be uh, raw letters uh characters signs um uh numbers and stuff like that and we're simply going to go ahead and send in uh, the hash which is the next parameter right here so the hash that's already inside the database or inside um uh, inside the table all right because the, the user is of course is going to register before he logs in and he's going to register with the username password and email and once he once he writes his password inside the register uh right here is you know it's going to be hashed right away and since it's going to be hashed we're going to go ahead and use the password verify so we can grab uh the input from um so we can grab actually the input for the password uh for the user and after this we're gonna grab the hash that that's already inside the table users and we're simply gonna go ahead and validate it all right again some of the things do not make sense that i'm saying but you know they're gonna make sense once we get into the project so right over here we need to send first we simply go ahead and remove this all right so I copy this part right here and if I simply paste it in let's just read some information about it in the manual right here so let's just go ahead to PHP right away um, so we're gonna send first the password that the user is giving us and after this we're gonna send the hash um, all right so for the password that the user is giving us it's right over here in the fetch so this will be just password like this and after this we're simply gonna go ahead and send um and send in the hash well string password well actually this will be the date right here because this is the data that the user is giving us and right here we're gonna just write in the hash which is just the fetch right here all right so this will simply be just password right here um and after this if we got the email right if simply the, the the data that the user is entering right here which is coming from this array um all right that we are going to grab from the inputs is matching with the password that's already inside our own database which is hashed or now this user got the password right so we're going to go ahead and start uh our session variables all right so we will actually work with this once we inside we once we are inside the project um uh, all right and after this we're simply gonna go to the index page right away so i'm gonna go right over here um i'm gonna go location i'm gonna simply concatenate this you know with the path right here that the user um that we're actually gonna be sending once we go ahead and work with our own project um all right so this is the part for the login and for the register and again um uh, once we get into the project you know a lot of things were actually are actually going to make sense all right so for again for this part right here we're validating the email and we're creating this fetch right here so we can simply grab the password for the user and after this we're simply uh, validating the email uh, with the row count right here and after this we're going to go ahead and validate uh, the password all right so if he got his password right then we're going to move on uh, with the session and we're going to move uh, with the header right here all right so yeah this will be all so now you know and i will see you on the next video all right so this will probably be the last uh video you know like concerning uh, the class that we have right here uh so we're gonna create uh two more um it's you know just for uh starting 
on the session and simply validating the session so starting session right here um so this should be pretty simple we're only gonna just type in a public function right here um so this will be um starting session all right so this will simply be just session underscore start um all right that that will be all after this we're gonna go down at the bottom right here and just type in um validating sessions so this part right here will allow us to simply check if the user is logged in or not because you know if the user is simply uh, logged in we cannot allow him to access uh, the login and the register pages um all right uh, we you know we can only be uh, he can allow he can be allowed to access some other pages like you know the users pages the products pages but if he's logged in he's not gonna access the login and uh, the register pages uh, anymore you know once once he's simply logged out he can access them back again you know if he wants to log in once more or he can simply uh want to go ahead and create another uh, uh or you know register once more to our um to our website all right so this right right here this will be a public function um validate session um all right so this right here um i want to go ahead and just do a simple check so if i go f is set right here um so this will be a check for the session of course so session right here um this will be id simply um all right so f is set session right here so if the session is simply set we want to go back um to the index page um all right but we are going to make even this more dynamic and just set it uh to a pass right here all right so we will probably pass in the index page right away or the index uh link uh, but i'm gonna keep it as just pass right here um all right so yeah this will simply be also save uh this whole thing um and yeah i will just see you on the next video all right so now just go ahead and copy the code of the project you now the design all all of those things and just go to ht docs right here um and just paste them in all right so it's gonna take like a second or something because there's a lot of files and images all right so there we go here is our own uh folder um all right so let's try and open it up with vs code i'm gonna close this one that we have right here um all right so here is the new one all right so now go to your project folder which is the folder where we have uh, our own top files right here so just you know copy or even cut them or go to each to ht docs once again and go to restaurant right here to rest run it's a weird name i know but this is a project right here um anyway so just paste those in all right so if we simply go ahead to our own project right here so we're going to see that we have the config right here config folder now nothing is changed basically um and if we go to lips right here we're going to see that we have our own class all right so to make this work uh or to integrate this the right way well we were gonna go ahead and simply remove the part for the require and we're gonna go down at the bottom right here and we're simply gonna go ahead and remove this also save this whole thing and let's now go ahead and create um let's say uh let's create an includes folder so i'm gonna go right here i'm gonna go includes right here um so inside the includes folder i want to create a header and a footer file um and i'm going to tell you why in a second so right here i need to create order.php um 
all right so there we go so if you notice right here if you open up these files you're going to see that we have some common part right here which is the part for including uh the files right here um and we're also going to have a header you know stuff like that so these parts right here if you open up a couple of these files you're going to see that they're actually common so we're not going to go ahead and keep uh, this part uh, right here on every page we need to go ahead and cut it and put it inside those two right here uh, we're gonna put the part for the header in the header uh, file and the part for the footer which is also common in the footer file right here and we're gonna and we're going to require this on every page uh, that we have inside our own project all right so this will save us a lot of time and effort and it will help us with decisions once we actually go ahead and work with them um all right so i'm right here from at the index.php.html so go to your this page specifically you know and follow along with me don't go to any other page um all right so if we go down at the bottom right here so what do we need to cut from all right so enjoy your delicious meal right here um so if we also go right over here well i want to actually go ahead um right over here and i want to go local post slash rest restaurant right here um let's see and simply go right here and copy this part copy the name and simply this will allow us um this will allow us to go to the index.html right away um all right so we're gonna grab the part for the header right here because this part is going to be different for you know for the page and every page that we have um all right so we're gonna grab uh, starting from the nav bar right here from this nav dev so got this whole thing go to the header paste and save um all right so we want to go ahead right here and just go php well let's rename this first so it will be php so it can accept php code so if we go right here require um and we're gonna go to includes slash header dot php all right so there we go so if we also copy this and we go down at the bottom oh my god this is just all right so team start Monial start yeah we go right here so this is where we need to go ahead and work with it so let's go ahead um down at the bottom and cut this whole thing and let's go to footer and now paste this in save let's go right here and simply try to require the footer um so if we go right here require um includes slash footer dot php all right so there we go if we save this part right here let's now try to go ahead and refresh um all right so nothing is happening the page is still the same um of course you can check it's actually the page just by writing index.php but if you lift it just like this we'll actually go to the index um all right um so yeah this will simply be all we can go uh, right here and we can simply um, right here acquire uh, well first of all at the top I want to actually keep it so it will be the config so this will be config.php and after this I want to keep this so it will be lips and I'm gonna acquire um, uh, my app class so this will just be app.php and after this we're gonna acquire the header all right so save this whole thing right here um and if we refresh this um all right so nothing is happening uh we should actually get an error but it's not showing up but you know we should get an error because if you look well we look at the config yeah we should not get an error we already have the database i thought that we did not have this database name or we just changed it but we did not even change it but if we actually mess it up like this and save let's now refresh all right so we should should actually get some kind of um message that we're missing out the name maybe it's somewhere 
uh, right here under this image or something you know but let's go ahead and create our own database um our own database you know our new database so let's copy this because we're not going to work with the demo database um all right and if we click on new right here and let's simply paste this in we click on create all right so here is our own database down at the bottom let's simply paste this right here all right so yeah this will be all for the config now we did actually we did the configuration file we finished the configuration file right here so everything is cool there is no errors so let's save this whole thing and let's go well we can actually close this right now and let's go right here and refresh all right so nothing is showing up right here um so yeah everything is cool and I will actually see you on the next video. All right, so now let's go ahead and continue with our own project. Um, so now let's go ahead and work with the register page. Since, you know, we finished creating the header and the footer uh, files in the includes right here. Um, all right, so I want to go ahead and I want to copy these, you know. Now you want to go, I want to create a folder right here. It's indication, so this will handle and the login and the registration and the logout pages uh, i want to go ahead and grab the register right here and paste it um, and i want to access it so once again we're going to go ahead and cut this part you know starting from you know down uh, the nav um, uh, right here so remove this whole part and just add this we're probably going to do this for every page that we have all right so if we rename this to php all right, so there we go. I want to also go down at the bottom um, and I want to remove the part for the footer. Um, all right, so here is the footer. So I'll remove this. Let's go down here and try to include the footer. So PHP require, uh, we want to go a step back and we want to go ahead and go to includes first. And we want to go to footer.php. All right, so save this whole thing. I'm going to go also at the top, and I want to go a step back since we are now in a new folder. Uh, we need to go a step back so we can access the folders that are in the root. Um, all right, so there we go. So save this whole thing. Now let's go ahead and try to access the register page. So I'm going to go to us, and I'm going to go slash register.php. All right, so the design is messed up and that's totally normal and you know and that's totally normal if we go down and if we inspect right here we can see if we go to the console that is it's not rendering these files uh, right here the css and javascript files you know with a bootstrap and so on uh so it you know it's response to the 404 status right here not found so we need to go ahead actually um let's see we need to go ahead to the includes right here and look those up. So yeah, as you can see right here, they're going to uh, a lib uh, folder uh, right here. And this is actually in the root uh, right here in the root project. All right. Uh, so we need to go ahead and do the right path in order to go ahead and grab uh, these the right way. Um, all right. So I want to go right here and I want to create um, a base URL. For our own project so i want to go ahead and write in define um and i'm going to name this app url all right so i'm going to specify i'm going to grab you know the root directory for for my project right here so if i copy this part right here and if i go let's see yeah starting from here if I go PHP echo um, app URL. All right, so if I save this part, if I copy this once more, if I paste it right here, right here. Um, all right, also right here and right here. Uh, all right, so I guess that this will be it for um, for the header. We want to also do this for the footer. If we go down at the bottom. All right, so. If you're working with VS Code, just click, just, just keep clicking or pressing Alt and click on all of these right here. 
and you know we're gonna do it with only one click so just paste this like this right here and slash right here we need a slash yeah for every one of those save this part all right we go also to the header yeah we need to add still we need to add a slash right here save save both of those right here um all right so if we refresh now hopefully it's working all right so now it's working we got our own uh files right here since we created a base directory so there's actually no errors um all right and everything is working perfectly right here all right so we want to go ahead now and do the logic so close both of those right here um so if we go to register.php we go php all right so we want to go down here um so to work with our own class with, you know, with our own app class right here we need to instantiate it of course so we're going to create an object this is just plain you know ov so it's nothing big actually all what we're going to do is just go app right here it's going to equal new app you know and that's it now we can use this to access all the properties um all the methods that we have inside this class right here um all right so i want to go after this i want to go down here so you know um we want to go when the user clicks on the register button right here we want to check um we you know we want to grab the data that we have inside uh this input and simply insert it in, inside our own uh, user stable uh, inside our own database right here which we are going to be creating in just a, you know in just a minute uh so we want to go and right here go if is set right all right right here is set post all right submit so that means if the user clicks on this button you know with the name submit right here we're going to add the name later down in the form all right we're going to go ahead and grab the data all right so i want to grab the user name this will come from an input right here with um the user name with the name of the user name all right and we copy those and let's also grab the email and let's also grab the password all right so right here i don't want to just insert uh, the password um a plane or raw inside my table right over here i want to hash the password so uh, i want to make it secure so nobody can actually look at it uh and know what this password is it's very important to actually hash passwords when you're working with any kind of project right so even if hackers like hacked into your website i uh, you can still they cannot still um they cannot still log in with you know with the credentials because they don't know what the password is um all right so i want to go right here and i want to go password underscore hash all right so this right here the password hash it's simply used to hash passwords in php there is a lot of functions inside php basically hash passwords but i like this one it's really practical um and it's really strong all right so uh, you know password hash right here except two parameters well first of all this you know the string the password that the user is giving us and um the array options right here um all right so this will basically the type of you know uh the, the type of encryption that we need um all right and it's basically you know uh password default something like that all right so if we just paste this in so this is the first parameter um uh, right here you know which is the the password that the user is giving us if i simply copy this part right here if i go to google and if i just press enter right away all right so we have hash password right here if we go to the manual um so if we go down at the bottom it's going to give us the second uh the second parameter that we need which is password default um all right so if we just paste this in all right so here we go this is what we need uh right here so after this if we simply go 
um if we go to lips right here and if we go to app.php if we simply go um let's see to the register we can see that we should pass in three parameters in order for this to work um all right so the first one is the query the second one is array and the third one is the path uh, right here all right so after this we're going to go ahead and create the query all right so the query right here um should be insert into users which is our table um we're going to go ahead and insert into username email and password right here these are the names of the columns um values right here so the values will be some sort of handlers all right since we are using the prepare method in um in pdo all right we need to set up some handlers and then we're gonna match those handlers right here with the data that's coming uh from uh, right over here um all right so we're gonna go ahead and type in also email also password right here all right so this will be all for the query you know uh what else do we need is simply the array so the array right here which is simply the array of data so if we simply go down here we need to match um those handlers with um the data that's coming from here all right so this will be email and this will be password all right and if we go down at the bottom uh the last thing that we need is simply the path so after the user um goes ahead and inserts his data we want to send him so maybe login uh, dot php path right here um all right and we need to go ahead and grab the app object that we have right here and we need to go and simply we need to trigger our own function right here which is the register um all right so if we copy it and paste it right here uh the first thing that we need to know that we need to pass in is simply the query so here it is and after this we're sending the array so here it is and after this we're sending the pass all right so this this is simply it you can see how how elegant and how simple uh the code uh, is there's no complicated things you know we already did the job uh right here in this method so we can you know uh we can just use it right here uh, right away and we do not have to write too many things um right and you can of course take this and integrate it inside your own and uh, next uh, you know future projects and it will work uh, as perfect as here um all right so let's go down at the bottom so we can work with the form so here is the form we need two things um this will be uh for the method this will be post all right and for the action which is a page that you know where we have our own logic so this will be register.php which is the same page where you know where we have our own logic and after this we have some inputs so we better set up the name for the inputs right here so this is user name um all right if we copy this and if we go right here this is email all right and we also go down here so this will be name equal password all right so also for the buttons the type should be submit and the name should also be submit right here all right so save this whole thing um all right so it looks elegant it looks great so save once again uh, yeah i want to go ahead you know since i made this so it will go to the login.php um i want to go ahead and grab you know the login right here and i want to paste it inside the auth uh, folder so i want to rename this so it will be actually php all right so there we go so if we go down here and if we refresh this 
all right so there we go we can simply type in right here our own um our own username here are the email and here are the password so i'm gonna keep both of those are, are the same if i click on register right here all right so we possibly yeah you know why we got the error because we did not even create uh, the table just yet so it's not going to insert um yeah it's not going to insert because the table is not even there because the table is not even there all right so we just go to your database right here and go and type in uh, the table name uh, all right so we'll keep this the number of columns as five and let's click simply and um create all right so this will be the id right here as always the id will be um an auto increment so it's going to increment on its own and it's going to be a primary and it's going to be an index type of primary um all right so it will be unique and i want to keep the length for it so it will be 10 this will be user name right here um that type it will be the type will be varkar and this right here after this it will be email also of our car right here will be 200 um and this right here will be password all right so this will be our car and it will be 200 right here and this will be created at which is uh the date you know that this this same record where this same record is created so i want to go to timestamp right here and i want to set a default value for it so it will be current timestamp so it will grab at the current time all right so if i click on save all right so all right so we got now our own table so let's just go back refresh this once again um all right so let's go once again at gmail.com copy this part paste it right here and right here click on register all right so we're going now to login.php you know the page is messed up because it's not dynamic yet um so you know it doesn't matter for now let's now go ahead and click on browse all right so as you can see right here we got our own first record here is the username the email and as you can see the password now is hashed so you know if you look at it you don't even know what you know what this is all right if you let's say you're, you're a hacker and you hack inside our own database so you don't even know what that is um all right so yeah i would say that this will be all for this video i hope that you understood uh everything you know it's no big deal we're simply uh, just creating an object we already have the class right here since we're including this we're gonna create an object and you know since we're creating object from this class we can simply access um access the register method that we have right here and we can simply pass in the variables or the parameters to it and it will work uh right away all right so this will be all and i'll see you on the next video all right so now we're gonna go ahead and work with the login page um all right so it's gonna be pretty similar to the register actually so we're gonna copy the code and edit it and you know that will be all but you know there is a mistake that i did um, but there is an error that i did if we go to app.php once again if we go to login right here you can see that we're passing in the query the data and the the path you know and that's all fine and we're performing our query right here and we're executing we're fetching you know for the part for the fetch right here i fetch this as an object and i you know and i did it right here as an array so i should go right here and fetch this as an array all right in order for this to work and not give us um and that give us an error all right so just fetch right here a e s s o c which is just an associative array all right so this will work uh perfectly um all right so if we go right here to log well we go to register first i'm going to copy this whole code you know close this we now go to login so we need to make this dynamic and while we're at it we're gonna just paste this all code so we can edit it i want to go and copy the part for the header right here require for the header and when i go for the part for the footer and i want to go ahead and remove this so i can simply just paste this in all right so this will be footer.php so let's go at the top right here um 
All right, so again, we're instantiating the class and we're checking for a post submission right here. So for the login part, we're only, you know, we're only check, we're only gonna check for the email and the password right here. Um, all right, so this right here will not be password hash. If you look at the app right here, you can see that we're already checking for with, with the password verify. Um, all right, so all what we need right here is just the raw data. All right. So if we go down here for the query, so this will be um, for the query. The query will only uh, check for the email right here as we wrote. Um, all right. So you know the login method will be triggered, and then we should actually check for the email. So we should go ahead and write in um, select all from um, users where email is equal to the email that we're having right here all right so this will be all so uh the second parameter right here after the query is simply the data um and you know this will simply be just data and it will be huh will be just let's remove this part if we go right here where is simply the data all right so here is simply the data so this will be um email and password like this so we're gonna pass those two uh, right here so we can simply work uh, with them right here all right so here is the data we actually just need the password only the password right here you know was the part for verifying the password but we're gonna keep it as you know we're gonna keep the email and password it doesn't matter um all right and after this we're gonna go ahead uh let's say to the index dot php um all right which is actually the root directory so simply we can go right here um let's see we go yeah it's gonna go to pass right here um all right so we're gonna keep this as app um Tab URL like this, which is simply uh, the name. Um, if we go to includes and if we go to header, which is simply this path right here. All right, this. Um, and after this, we're going to trigger the login. All right, so now we give it a query, which is right here, which checks only for the email. And after this, we're going to give it the data um, right here. So when we go ahead and verify the password if we look at the password verify function right here this will actually take the password that you know that we're grabbing uh, right over here which is the password that the user give us uh, all right and it's gonna you know validate it with the password that's coming from the database since we already did the fetch uh, right over here um all right and after this it's gonna take the path which is the app url uh, all right so save this whole part um hopefully it works with no errors so if we go down at the bottom so if we go for the form right here this will be method so this will be login dot you know the method is simply post yeah the action which is the name of the page so this will be login dot php all right so if we go right here at the input so if we go name email right here and if we go right here, this will be name, password. And since we're checking for a post uh, submission or for a form submission, so we're going to set a name for the button right here. So this will be name uh, button. All right. So I guess that this will work right away. So again, if you're, you know, if you're having problem understanding, we're just uh, instantiating the class. And we're checking for a post submission and we're grabbing the data and we're doing the query so uh, as you can see right here for the part you know we're gonna pass uh, this whole three uh, parameters right here with the login method so if we go to the login method right here which is in the app um right here for the query for the part for the query we're simply gonna do the query right over here um all right and after this we're gonna execute it after this we're gonna fetch it you know to grab uh, to grab the password down here all right and after this we're going to check if the login user which is simply 
uh, the query right here if the row count is greater than the, uh, zero so that means that you know um where you know uh, this query right here is returning uh, something it's returning a number uh, all right so it will return one so if one is if, you know if it returns one that means that we have an email uh you know that matches the the one that the user uh wrote all right so if it's greater than zero so that means that we have an email a valid email and after this we're going to move to the next part which is validating the password so for the password verifier right here basically it takes up you know a, a raw password that the user entered right here so the data um array right here and it will match it with the one that we already have inside our own database which is the fetch password right here since we fetch the data uh, all right and after this it's going to go to this path uh, right away uh, right over here all right so save you know save this whole part right here for the login.php i guess that we do not have anything else so we refresh this right now so it should go all right db connection it's not working huh. if we go to ab right here db connection is working all right so we better go ahead and comment this part all right so save let's refresh now all right so now it's gone so let's go ahead and grab the email right here um all right so the email and the password are basically the same so if we click on login all right so we have an error rate over here so let me just you know pause this all right so the error was pretty simple i don't you know i don't know why i actually wrote this this right here so i should remove this and it will work right away do not need it so just save you know if you you did this mistake with me i don't think that you actually did it um all right so we just grab the email once again paste it right here right here um and click on login all right so we're gonna go to the index right away it says right here not found because you know we're not passing uh, the right pass right here um all right so let's go ahead once again to the path right here and pass this as app url all right so just make sure to type it like this um and let's go right here so the login is actually working all right but it's redirecting to uh you know to a non-existing page so let's pass this right here and right here let's click right here all right so again it's not passing um so if we just go right here and go to the header and we can simply copy this part um all right and we can simply pass this right here so save if we simply go back refresh this we'll copy this part once again all right so go right here paste this and paste this so click on login all right so now it's going to the right path it's going to the index page right away um and this is what we need all right so once again it's not pretty hard you know when you think about it and um, that only you know as you can see the code is actually pretty clean and it's pretty small um so yeah awesome and this will be all and i will see you on the next video all right so normally after you know after we log in we'll actually go ahead and start our own sessions um all right so and you might think why we need to start the session after the login well basically we need to go ahead after the user logs in naturally as every website that you're browsing on a daily basis after the user logs in you can see uh, like a menu right here with his uh username or email or something like that and you can simply click on it and you know and see the other options uh, right here uh, inside his you know drop down menu or whatever all right and if you're logged in on any website that you have you're not going to see the login and the register uh right here all right so this this only should be accessed when you're just logged out so you can log in once again or create a new uh or create a new account with the register page right here um all right so this is what we're gonna do so i want to go right here and i want to go um to the app.php 
So if you go to the login message right here so after we verify the password we need to go ahead and start our own session variables so i'm gonna go right here session um and i'm gonna go this will possibly like be uh, let's see email um let's see this will be email right here so we're gonna grab um we're gonna you can we can now grab the email since we have the fetch right here um, all right, so if we paste this, now we can grab the email. Um, all right, so let's copy this part. Um, and this will be user name. Um, all right, so I'll paste this also right here. Um, let's see, copy this, and you know, this will be user underscore ID. We need also to grab the ID for the user, so this will be uh, ID right here. And uh, right here, we can simply rename this as app url all right we're gonna pass this variable right away since we already have it we're gonna pass this constant since we already have it in the header uh, right here you know instead of passing uh uh the pass uh right away um all right so of course we set up our session variables right over here so we need to go ahead and start the session so this will actually will work all right so we already created um uh, a method for starting the session so all what we need to do is just copy this and we're gonna go to the header uh, right away right here and we're gonna go actually and go um app right here we need to instantiate this so this will be new app all right and after this we're gonna go app um and we're gonna go start session you know so we will trigger this method right right over here so save this go to the app.php and since we wrote this save this part uh, right over here and now uh let's let's go ahead to um let's see let's go ahead back to the header right over here and let's check for the session so again we need uh, uh when the user is logged in we need to hide both of those right here and we're gonna leave the rest of these links all right, and since we're logged in, we want to show the user some drown some drop down menu with his username. Um, all right, so if we go at the bottom, uh, right here, we can see that this is the part that we need to be working with. So we're gonna leave the home, the about, the service, the menu, and uh, the cart. Well, um, yeah, for the part for the cart also, where where for for the cart, we're also gonna. Uh, when the user is logged in, he can view uh, the card, all right. But when he's logged out, uh, he can only like access both of those right here. So we're gonna hide the card uh, when the user is logged out. Um, all right. So if we go, yeah, for the contact right here, we're gonna leave this out of this. Uh, we're gonna leave this link out of this equation. So if I go right here above the card, if I go um, HP f um as set session um user name right here so if the session is simply set you know view the card.html and if not don't simply view it so we're gonna go right here else all right uh view both of those right here the, the login and the register all right, so if we go right here and we simply go end F, so we can end this. All right, so there we go. Uh, something else that we want to show, uh, again, when the user is logged in, which is the menu, all right, where we're going to echo out um, the username. All right, so if I go to bootstrap, um, five, let's see. Uh, nav bar right here all right so if i try to access this link uh let's go down at the bottom so i want to grab this part right here the part for the drop down menu um so where is it so if we go and grab it like this um and if we go down here and paste this in All right, so now let's go ahead and echo out the username. So if we go down here, HP echo um, username. All right, so here we go. We simply paste 
this in right here. Uh, sorry, save this whole thing. Now let's go ahead now and refresh this. All right, so let's go. Let's go ahead and log in once again. And let's see what's gonna happen. So if we go os slash login dot php, let's copy the email and paste right here, right here one more time. We click on login. All right. So as you can see right here, we got our own um we got our own menu right here with these links. And you know we got our own card. All right, so let's go ahead now and create the logout page. So we can simply log out and we can see if the login and the register links are here or not. Um, all right, so if I go down over here, if I go something else, I place this with logout, and this right here will go to a page. Um, we're going to echo out the app URL first, which is simply the pass. All right. And if we go slash auth right here, I'm going to keep it in the auth. So this will be log out dot PHP. All right. So I simply go ahead and copy this. And if I go to auth, I simply go ahead and just type in log out. If I go right here, PHP. Um, and if I go session underscore start. All right, so to destroy the session, you know, and to log out, simply we need to start the session first. And this way we will, and after this, we will go session unset. So we will unset our own session variables. Um, and after this, we're going to go session underscore destroy. So this will simply destroy the session. After we destroy the session, we're going to head back with a header function. So we're going to head back. Um, to simply the index page once again um all right so yeah this is this should be all for the logout all right so save this whole thing go to the header and save um all right so let's now refresh all right so if we hover over this and click all right so as you can see down right here down at the bottom uh, left we're simply going to go to logout page so if we click this all right, so we're going back once again, and now we can view the login and the register. If you notice, you know, uh, the menu is gone, and also the card, um, the card is also gone, uh, the card link. Uh, all right. So, yeah, awesome. Uh, but, you know, I want to go ahead and log in once again. I want to show you, actually, I want to show you something. So, if I go to login at PHP once again, if I click on login. All right, so we can see, you know, we can see our own uh, menu right here and all, you know, but as I told you that we do not need to show the login and the register pages once the user is logged in because this is unacceptable and this is totally messed up. Um, but if they, you know, and he can, he cannot see them right here. The user cannot see them right here. But if he simply goes to the links and try to access them, he can still access them right here through the link. Um, all right, so this is totally messed up. I, we do not want to allow him to do this. And he can also access the register page. So we need to go ahead inside the pages and validate uh, them. Um, and if you remember, at the class right here, we did a validation for the session. So if we simply uh, copy this, you know, and go to uh, the login, let's see. And if we go after this right here, if we go app, and if we trigger this function right here, so this will accept, um, this will accept the pass. Um, all right. So for the pass, um, well, if we go actually right here, we can simply allow this to go app URL. All right. So, all right. So save this right here. Um, all right. So again, if the user tries, um, yeah, we can send the pass. No, it doesn't matter, or we can even just go ahead right here and simply remove this. That's fine. So we're not gonna send anything to this method. All right, that's that's fine. That's totally okay. All right. So if the user now comes in and he tries to, you know, access the login page through the link, you know, this uh, this method now will be triggered. You know, and if we look at this method, it simply checks if there is a session or not. So if there is a session. Uh, the user will go back to the index page 
All right, so we cannot access uh, this page directly, uh, directly the login page. All right, so we want to copy this one more time and we want to go to register right here. And we also want to go ahead and paste it right here. All right, so save this part also. Let's now go ahead and refresh. All right, so I want to go ahead right here. All right, so I want to go to auth slash login.php. All right, so it's still grabbing the page. Um, so what did we do wrong? Um, well, let's see if we go to login.php. Did we save this? Save this once again. And if we refresh, huh, still actually going. we go let me just clear the cache control f5 let's now go to auth all right so it's going so something is wrong so just give me a second yeah, so um you know the error was pretty simple well actually if you look at the session that we just said inside the login right here inside the login um message right here we can see that we do not have a session with the id all right so we have but we do have a session with the user underscore id so this is what we need to check for so it cannot check for a session that does not even exist so if we save this part right here if we go ahead and refresh um all right so headers already sent by huh. headers already sent started all right so i know a solution for this error right here so just give me a second give me a second and i'll get back all right so i'm back once again and again i told you now the reason this uh, error was happening well we're not going to use the header function right here to direct so just you know pause the video and write this so go to the validate session right here and type in echo script window that location dot href right here and simply concatenate the app url uh, which is the constant that we created in the past videos and simply close the script uh, tag and you know this will just do the trick right away and save this whole thing um all right and i actually refreshed it and it worked and it worked right away so you know we can simply check this once again if we go to us uh, slash login dot php all right so we're going back uh once again to the index page you know the user cannot access those pages since now we're logged in and we can also try it for uh for the register down here all right so it's going uh back once again you know and it's totally fine and if we simply just um click a logout right now you can simply he can simply access those uh, right here so if we go to us slash login.php all right so there you go you can also access the register um all right and it's all fine so let me fix the links for the login and the register i'm gonna make them dynamic you know not uh, html um all right so we can close the register and the login now since they're all done and if we go if we go down here we can simply go php echo app url slash os slash login dot php all right so you can copy this part and paste it down here and simply change this to php and save um we go down here and refresh all right did we do something wrong Oh. slash os slash app yeah this is app url all right not not app uh, rul so save this part and let's refresh once again all right so now if we click on this I'm gonna go to login and if we click on this I'm gonna go to register uh right here all right so it's working perfectly and uh, you know and this will be all for this video.
All right, so now let's go ahead and work with the index. You know, we, as we finished the authentication system, um, and if we look down here, the first part um, of the index page right here is simply book a table right here, and we can simply redirect to this um, to the booking uh, to the booking page right here. Um, all right, so if we open up the index, if we simply go right over here, so as you can see, book a table here is simply our own link. So we will link this to echo app URL and we're simply we will redirect this to booking.php. So we want to change this to dot PHP. And of course, we're not gonna go ahead and work uh with the booking for now. We want to finish um displaying the data inside our own index page first. All right, so if we go at the bottom, these right here are you know are gonna be static, and also this part right here all gonna be static you know if we go to popular items we want to now go ahead and work with uh, the food items right here so as you can see when we click on every and each one of those meals right here um, some certain uh, data uh, or uh, you know food items should pop up uh, right here All right so we want to make this uh, this whole thing dynamically so we want to go ahead um, uh, to our own you know database right here and we want to create another we want to create a new table and this table will be um foods right here um all right so you can you know we'll keep it you know six items uh, or six columns right here all right so this right here should be id um all right so if we go on over here this will be auto increment and it's going to be an index of primary and after this it's going to be the name of the food um and this will be like our car this will be 200 and the length of the id right here it's going to be 10. what else well if we look down over here you can see that we have a small description and we have the price so uh well before all of this we can simply grab an image so here is an image and this will be var car this will also be 200 all right, so after this, we'll have a description. Description right here. All right, so for the description, it's going to be a type of text, you know, and it's, you know, uh, the number uh, of values right here or the length is simply going to be unlimited. Um, all right, so after this, we will have a price for it. Um, all right, so the price will be, you know, we can keep it bar card, that's fine. We're going to keep it 20. Uh, what else? Um, let's see oh. yeah we can actually give it a menu uh item uh, right here all right so menu or just meal uh not meal item meal um underscore uh id all right so we're gonna link uh every you know we're gonna link every uh food item that we have with um an id of uh, a meal uh, right here so in order to simply go ahead and display those dynamically um all right so this will be integer that's fine um let's see huh yeah we can keep this 10 that's fine well it will actually be one because it's going to be either one two or three uh right here um all right and we possibly need one more so if we just go ahead create it underscore add all right so this will be just um timestamp right here and it's gonna be current timestamp so if we click on save all right please enter a valid length okay sounds like it's you know the php my admin tool is missing with us because everything is valid so if we click on preview sql this is simply uh, the SQL query for for, uh, for the structure of this table. So you just copy it and simply go um, to SQL right here, and we can simply process this just by right, just by pasting it right here and click on clicking on go. So as you can see, here is simply our own table. All right. So here is the structure. Everything looks good. Everything looks awesome. So let's now go ahead and insert some um, some food items. So the name right here. So I would say the first thing that we have is simply chicken uh, wings. 
all right so for the image right here i want to go right over here i want to go to exam i want to go to ht docs um let's see where is our own folder yeah there we go and if we simply go ahead to the images folder the image folder is right here we can simply go ahead and grab the menu dash one dot gpg right here so it's just rename copy this part and let's go right here and paste this in so for the description just go ahead and grab a fake text or install this extension which is corporate ipsum right here it's gonna give you uh some um fake text so just copy and paste right away so for the price i'm gonna keep it like ten dollars that's fine and for the meal id i want to keep it as one all right so for the next uh one that we have right here if we look at this uh this is possibly like stick or something you know um so i'm gonna keep this as stick all right well it's not like this you know yeah probably like this you know i'm probably missing up with uh with the names but you know yeah it's like this um so for the image again we can just grab now the second one is basically pizza not stick so excuse me so i'm gonna write this as pizza so for the next image let's simply go ahead and grab it all right so copy this whole thing um and for and if we go for the description right here so let's copy this part and paste it right here and as for the price it's gonna be like 20 dollars. that's fine um and as for the meal id i'm gonna keep it too so we will display it in the lunch right here um all right so we possibly need one more for the dinner so for the dinner we will grab simply the stick right here so this will simply be the stick for the name and for the image we simply go ahead and just grab this whole thing and yeah that's fine we will grab this so let's paste this in so for the description i'm going to go ahead and grab some fake text so this will also be like 30 dollars you know this is totally up to you you can set it as you know as you like um so for the mail id this is going to be three all right so let's see we simply click on go all right so if we click on browse all right so there we go we got our own data right here let's now go ahead and try to select uh, this based on uh, the mail right here so every mail will have a, a single food item um if you want to insert a couple more that's totally up to you but you know i'm gonna go ahead and just uh you know it's enough uh, three are, are enough right here to not make this uh, video too long um all right so uh if we go Right here let's minimize this let's also minimize this we want to go um to the menu start right here uh so most popular items right here so these are basically the meals here is the breakfast and here is the lunch and as you can see every and each one of those has a tab dash two right here which is href href basically you know allows us to go to a certain food items once we click on every and each one of those if we simply go ahead and go to tab dash one right here which is simply the breakfast and if you go control f now uh, you can see that we have another one uh right here you now we have two uh dash we have two of tab dash one well the first one is right here and the second one if you simply tab dash one right here you simply you know type it we will go to the second one which is right over here which simply selects um uh, the food items in this um in this uh, this meal right here so every and every time you click on one of those uh the, the href it's going you know it's going to be triggered and it's going to go to a some certain um or some certain food items all right if you try to go to tab dash two we're simply going now to the part where we have the items for the lunch um all right if you go to tab three now we're going to go to another part which have the items for uh for the dinner all right so i hope that this makes sense um all right so i want to go to tab dash one right here just the part for the breakfast um all right so i want to go 
down at the bottom. Um, let's see. Tab dash one right here. Tab dash one. All right. So here is the part uh, right here. You know where we're gonna simply select the data for for the breakfast. All right. So since this is tab one right here, uh, this is the idea that you know the href um href right here will go to all right so i want to go at the you know at the top first and i want to grab the data and i want to go ahead and simply do a for each and that will be all so if i go right here and if i simply go ahead and create app equal to um new app so i can use my select um all right so if i go right here if i go um app and we will trigger um let's see if we go lips right here if we go to app you know we want to trigger this function right here that will simply allow us to select all data and just fetch him with the fetch all uh method right here all right so if we simply add this right here and now we will all, all what we want to do is simply just um pass in the query so the query is right there so select all from um Males where the ID is equal to um uh let's say one all right so this will grab the food items for the breakfast all right well not ID um yeah mail ID right here all right so mail underscore ID all right so we want to pass in the query right here um and we want to go right here and just create males uh, underscore one all right so this will equal app right here um all right so we want to copy this part and simply do a for each and that will do the trick um all right so most po most popular items right here so i want to go to tab dash one um all right so I want to go to tab dash one right here yeah there we go um there is the part no we want to go still at the bottom to this part right here so yeah there is tab dash two so we probably missed it so if we go to the top let's see yeah there we go so we have a couple of food items right here yeah we have too many of them like um yeah like like um this we got four and we got four so we got eight for every and each one of those but we only have one for each uh, meal so we want to go ahead and simply delete the rest so if we delete the rest right here um Let's see. This template is kind of confusing me right now. All right, so there we go. We want to delete all of those. And we want to simply um, go right here and do our own for each. So PHP for each mail underscore one as mail right here. mail underscore one so this is mails underscore one as mail one all right i know it's kind of confusing you know but you know you do your own names just make sure to actually grab uh, the right names and we want to go right here so the first thing that we want to do dynamically is simply the image so php echo um mail right here so we will grab the image all right so copy this part um and there is the part for the name and there is the part for the price all right and what else um there is the part for the description and here is simply um the part for uh well the part for you know um simply 
the add card page so um for this part right here we will simply display uh the item our own foot item in another page you know we'll display Play some description about it and we will simply allow the user to add it to the cart um, all right so this will be app URL and you will go to slash add dash cart now this will simply be just PHP right away all right so we will leave it as this for now but we want to pass in the ID for this so if we go ID right here um, and I want to go ahead and add I go right here mail underscore one and you want to pass in the id so it will be dynamically um all right so after this we're going to go ahead right here php and for each all right so now if we simply go ahead and save this whole thing let's go ahead and refresh all right so looks like we got a problem. All right, so for each meal underscore meals underscore as meal underscore one. All right, so app select all query. Um, you know, app select all from meals where mail id is equal to one huh. we click on structure right here so this is an integer so that's fine so we simply add add it like this and if we go right here Oh, the table name is actually foods where where does meals come from so this will be just foods so save this let's now go ahead and refresh all right so now it's working all right so at the breakfast right here we got the chicken wings you know and we got the small description right here if you hover over this is going to give you the idea of one and here is simply the price which is 10 so let's do um uh let's let's do the others let's do the lunch and the dinner um all right so i want to copy those and go down here and paste them so this will be the meal idea will be two um all right and this will also be two right here um so i want to go um down at the bottom right here let's see and i want to go to the one with the tab dash two um all right so Let's actually go ahead and copy this whole block. All right, and I want to go ahead and delete um, and delete those right here because you do not have. If you if you simply click on this right here, you can see that you do not have um, a button uh, that we need right here. So I want to go ahead and copy it from um, from this right here, which we have uh, where we have the button. Um, all right, so we want to go ahead and delete every and each one of those all right so there we go let's now remove this and let's also remove this part and let's paste this in um all right so i forgot to copy this so if i paste this right here and if I simply go ahead and just give this a push. All right, so I'm sensing that something is wrong. Um, here we have something wrong. There's the devs right here. So, could this be right here? All right, so there we go. We have a dev right here. And we also have a div right here. All right, and we simply remove this. All right, so again, I have a div right here and a div right here. And here is also a div. And oh, 
yeah, we should have one. We should have one outside right here. So this will be just dev. All right, so save this part. So this will be mails dot two, and this will be mails, and this will be mail dot two. All right, so let's copy this part, and let's go down here and just paste it right here, and right here, and right here, and right here, and right here. All right, so save this whole thing. Hopefully, we do not give an errors because this part was a bit confusing, even for me. So save this whole thing. Let's now refresh. All right, so if we click on this, all right, so now we're getting the part of the lunch right here. If we simply go to this, we can see that the pizza has the ID of two. Um, all right, so great. Let's now do it also for the dinner. So I want to go. Um, I want to go at the top once again, and I want to do the same for this right here. So this will be three, um, and this will also be three, and I'm going to copy this well actually you do not need to copy it because we're going to copy something else and paste so let me just go ahead and delete now if we go to tab dash three i want to go ahead and delete these as always because now i'm going to grab the dynamic one right away all right so just delete delete this whole thing you know So if we simply go ahead right here and grab all for each block and paste it down here. All right, so there we go. So this will be mails dash three. This will be mail underscore three. All right, so copy this part. Let's go down here let's you know paste this and also paste this once again right here right here and right here all right so there we go save this whole thing now let's go ahead and refresh all right so if we simply click on dinner right now so as you can see we're getting the stick um possibly wrong All right, so there we go. Is it still wrong? Yeah, now it's right. So if we simply refresh this, all right, so we're simply gonna grab it dynamically right here. And now it's $30. And if we hover over this, you can see it's going to the ID of three um, right now, which is great. And yeah, this will be all for this video. And I will see you on the next one. All right, so in the last video, we went ahead and we displayed a bunch of food items for every one of those meals right here. I want to go ahead now and work with the add uh, dash to cart page, which will simply allow us to view um, more of the details about um, this, uh, this food item and also allow us to add it to cart. Um, all right, so if we go right here, well, I want to create a folder first, so I want to keep, I want to name this so it will be just food um all right so i want to go ahead and grab the add dash to car to it just go ahead and rename this so it will be php first and if we simply go to the index right here um can simply uh, rename uh or you know edit uh the link for it so this will be just food uh slash uh, add dash to car dot php all right, and of course we're sending the ID dynamically, so that's all fine. So if we also do this for the rest of these food items right here, and for this one also. All right, so save this whole thing. Let's now go ahead and refresh. All right, so if we simply click on this right here, so it's gonna go to add dash uh, add dash card dot php, and it's sending the ID of one um all right so let's go ahead and work with this page um so let's see well 
we go and remove the part for the nav bar right here remove this and i want to go to the index and i want to go at the top let's see i go right here and copy all of these um so since we are in a folder we need to go a step back all right so let's copy the part for the header and i want to simply remove the part for the footer um so remove this and paste this right here let's simply change this change this so it will be footer.php and save now it will be dynamic all right so as you can see right here yeah there is something wrong with the image right here but you know we're gonna go ahead and grab it and we're gonna make this whole thing dynamic um all right so this shouldn't be cart actually uh, yeah this shouldn't be car this should be like the food uh, item uh, name something like that or just uh, add to cart page now we're gonna fix it right now so i want to go at the top and i want to do my query so i'm gonna go right here php and i want to go down here and i want to go um app well since we have the class we can simply use it new app right here and we can just go app um and we're going to trigger now the select one um a select one method if we simply go to lips right here if we go to the select one this will simply allow us you know to fetch only one row at a time um so this will be just one and this will equal app right here and simply we will pass in the query all right so for the part for the query i want to go right here query it's going to equal select all from um let's see foods where the id equals the id right here that we're gonna pass in all right so i want to go right here first and i want to grab the id that we're passing in all right so we can actually grab it and use it dynamically so i want to check first get right here id all right so just grab this part and paste it right here all right so query select all from foods where id is equal to the id right here and uh, right after right after this we're going to go ahead and instantiate the class and then we're going to go and um, do the select one right here all right so this will simply be all now all that we need to do is just grab one right here and go at the bottom and and simply go instead of cart right here php echo and we're simply going to echo out and then you know one and we're going to grab the name from it um all right so if we copy this part right here um let's see we do not need a for each thing like that so there's also going to be the name um and if we simply remove one of these and if we go down here and simply paste this in so this is the description after this we have um the price so just paste this in this will be price um what else um thing that we forgot the image so if we go right here image hmm. image right here yeah there's actually the image so we want to go to the source and you want to paste this dynamically right here well let's add the pass first there would pass so if we go Ab url slash image now we need to add image right here all right so save this whole thing um all right and let's go ahead right here and refresh all right so attempt to read property all right here so it looks like we missed uh something up so one right here is equal to app select one oh. Did we grab this right? 
All right, so we're gonna pass in the query, select all from foods. Where is the ID? So the ID coming in. All right, so we did not actually grab the ID just yet. So if we go right here, get this will be ID. All right, so save. Let's now refresh. All right, so there we go. Chicken wings right here. Um, and also chicken wings. And here is the price, and here is simply the description. And in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and work with um at the uh, at the cart right here. So we will work with the form. Um, and yeah, this this will be all, and I will see you on the next video. All right. So in the last video, we went ahead and we actually displayed um the single uh, food item, you know, in the at dash the cart dot php. Uh, so we want to go ahead now and allow the user to simply add this item to the cart so we can display it later you know uh using this page right here cart.html uh, cart uh, sorry cart.html if we go right here we simply go to cart.html all right so there we go we're going to display um the output items you know for every uh, single user and of course you know they will differ so we will insert the user ID along uh, with uh, with every item that we're inserting inside the card. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do this. So if you go to add-card.php right here, um, it should go at the bottom and we should actually do a form. So here is the button uh, right here uh, with the add to cart. Um, so we're going to go right here and we want to uh, do some kind of symbol for me now. We're not going to show uh, the inputs. Actually, all the inputs will be hidden. Um, all right, so we want to go right here. So this will be method post. All right, and the action will go to the same page, actually. Uh, so this will be add-part.php. Um, and we're going to send along the ID, or this will actually trigger an error. So I'm going to echo out the ID right here. Um, all right, so we want to go right here. Well, we want to insert a couple of things. We want to insert the image. We want to insert the name. We want to insert the price. Um, and let's see what else do we need to insert. If we go once again, um, we go to slash cart dot html. So we want to insert the image, the name, and the price right here. Um, and we also want to insert the ID of this single item. Um, what else we need? And we also need to insert the user uh, ID. All right, so we want to go right here. So let's see. Let's see right here. This will be input uh, value. Let's keep it type first. So the type will be text and the value right here this will equal uh, since we're already getting the value using this array right here we can simply copy it and paste it down here um, so this will be the id first um, what else do we need to grab um, copy those so this will be for name and this will be for the image you know and this will be for the price all right so let's copy this one more time um what else i guess you know that these are uh, the four things that we need for the product and you know the last thing that we need to do or that we need to insert is basically the user id and we will insert uh this uh, right away um dynamically you know not using the form so after this we're simply gonna you know close the form like this all right so let's save this whole thing and let's see what we have right here of course we will make them hidden but just for now we're gonna go ahead and um and they're not showing up something is wrong this should actually show up right uh, right here so value equal one um Miss it right here. Post action. Add dash to cart. Hmm. 
everything seems normal to me. Let's cut this actually and paste it right here. Save. Well, not right here. Sorry, right here. Yeah. So there we go. Now we have the name, uh, the ID, um, uh, the name for the image, and we also has um, the price right here. All right. So again, we will hide those, but just in a second. So I want to go now at the top, and we want to insert this whole thing. Um, so we already have the logic for inserting. If we go to us simply, and if we go to register right here, we already have the logic right here. So let's copy this if block and try to go right here and simply just paste it. Um, all right. So insert into this will be just cart. Um, so this will be um item underscore id and this will be name this will also be uh price and after this we will have the image um all right and after this we will have the user underscore id all right so those those are the ones that we need name price image um id all right so for the values right here we're gonna grab the item ID and we're gonna grab after this the name, after this the price, and after this the image, and after this the user ID. Alright, so there we go. There is the item ID and there is the name. We're gonna send the array, the values. You know it's basically just like the register no big difference so let's copy those two more times all right so here is the user id all right so great and we also want to grab the data right here inside you know for the value uh, for the values right here using the post sober global um so we better set up the names in the form i will do just i will do this but just in a minute um so for the item ID right here, this will be item ID and this for the name. All right. And after this, we have the price and we're not going to hash it, of course. All right. So there we go. Let's copy those two times. And if we go to the image right here, um, and this is simply for the user ID, we will actually grab it from decision. So if we go right here, just session uh, user underscore id and so we're not putting an input for it down there in the form um all right so after we set up uh the variables after we set up the query and after we set up the array right here we're simply after we insert we will go oh what do you think where should we go um let's see right here we can go to cart that's fine all right so there we go i'm gonna change the name of this simply just php um so i want to go to cart dot php right away all right so now we're just gonna go ahead and change this to insert um all right so i guess now that that's all fine for the logic um i want to go down at the bottom and i will still add the names so this will be name right here um let's see this will be uh, item underscore id so let's copy this so let's go right here and paste it this will be name if we also paste this right here this will be image and down here this will be price All right, and this right here, we're gonna add a name for this. So this will be just submit, and the type also would be submit. Those are really important. The form will not work without them. All right, so save this whole thing. Now what we need to do is simply go ahead and grab um, and create the table. Grab the name and create the table right away. So I'm going to go to the my database right here. I'm going to go and paste this in. So we'll possibly need like seven columns for this. 
all right so the first one as always is going to be the id um and this will be auto increment um all right and it's going to be a primary key after this we will have item underscore id um all right so this will be you know what it will be integer or also you know we will keep it 10 for the length and this will be name um all right so this will be var car 200 after this we have um we look at the column columns right here we have the price so let's paste this in um var car right here this will be like 10 that's fine um and after this we have the image so paste this in so for the image let's give this var car will be 200 and after the image we have the user id all right so let's go this will be integer and after this we have created underscore add so this will be timestamp um and this will be current timestamp for the default right here all right so if we simply all right please enter yeah it's messing up with us again so you know it might you know the php my admin tool you know it's kind of messed up sometimes it gets messed up sometimes so if it doesn't do this with you you know that's fine but if it did this just go ahead and click on preview sql and simply copy this whole code this is the code for the structure of this table um and go ahead sql right here and simply uh, paste this code all right so this will create a query right away all right so this will create the table yeah there is actually um there is the table if you refresh it right here there is the table card all right so there we go here is the structure of the table now it looks great so if we go ahead and refresh this let's now go ahead and click on add the cart all right so possibly something is wrong because it's not not going to the card page so it's not still not inserting so something is wrong with the query um so if we go right here app app and we're grabbing simply insert yeah if we go if we go simply to lips right here um let's see yeah it's actually insert we're passing in the array in the pass uh -huh. so what's what's wrong we're instantiating we're already instantiating the app right here so we can actually use it now huh certain to cart and we're sending in everything after this we're simply going the array no nothing big and after this we're doing the pass let's go down to the form the method is post and the action is basically this the same page at the cart and we're sending in the idea right here and we have the name image price right here and we have this right here so this should be a button possibly not even submitting the form you know so something is wrong with this so we're not gonna make it so it will not go anywhere now it's a button so we do not need this even so save this whole thing let's now refresh all right so if we simply click on add to cart all right so it is already sent by blah 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 um i'm gonna go ahead first click on browse all right so it's actually inserting so here is id item id name price image user id so yeah it's grabbing the data so that's awesome and this error we already had uh this error uh, like a while ago and the reason we're having this error we're going to go to app uh, right here and let's go down the bottom um yeah we want to copy this part and we want to 
go right here and simply just paste this in. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add this right here. So save this whole thing. So let's now go ahead and refresh this. All right, so I want to go ahead and delete this right here. Let's refresh this once again. And now if I click on add to cart. All right. So we're now we're going to cart.php. So now it's grabbing this. You know, it's going to uh, the, the path that we that we set it. That we set it right here. Cart.php. You know, it's actually inserting. So as you can see right here, inserting this. So we want to go um, at the next video. And we want to check right here and validate this. So if the user... Uh, added an item to the card um we want to go ahead um and validate if the item is already in the cart we're gonna we're gonna actually uh display some other uh we're, we're gonna display something like added to cart all right we're gonna validate this because we don't want the user to simply add the same item to the card uh two times or even more than one time all right um so this will be it and i'll see you on the next video all right, now let's go ahead and validate uh, uh, the if we have this food item right here for this user in the cart or not. Because again, uh, a user can add you know uh, only different uh, items, uh, food items right here in the cart. So we cannot allow the user to simply go ahead and insert um, and insert the same uh, the same food item twice because this will just uh, flood our own table, you know, and it will be really uh, ineffective. Um, so we want to go ahead right over here, you know, we can go to the app.php and we can create, um, uh, a message right here. And I know that I might like promise you that we're not going to touch the app once again, but in this scenario, we need to go ahead and actually validate this. So this will be a public function right here, validate, um, cart. So I'm going to send something like um q just q right here um so this will be kind of similar to the select one um so i want to go right here and just copy those and i want to paste this in so this will just take the query all right just the letter q and you know that's this will simply um this will simply be all um so i want to go ahead and save this whole thing and i want to go ahead right here i want to go outside of this block um so i possibly um let's see yeah i can go right here that's fine and i can just do my view which is just a query this will be select all from a uh, cart where we're going to validate with a you know with two things well, first of all, we're going to validate um, with the item ID right here. All right, and the item ID, item underscore ID, will equal the ID that we're grabbing right here for the product. All right. Um, and let's see, the user underscore ID is going to equal um, position right here. This will be a uh, user underscore ID. All right, so yeah, this will simply be all. Well, we better actually go ahead and do a fetch. Uh, well, not a fetch. We better go ahead and check for the session first, you know, to validate this. So if we go right here, session um, user underscore ID. All right, so if this worked, we're going to go ahead and just copy this and paste it right here. So since we already instantiated the, uh, the app class, we can simply just copy this, paste it right here, and we're going to go ahead and validate. And uh, we're going to go ahead and grab our own method. So And we will pass in the queue right here. Um, so yeah, this, this is simply um, all that we need. Um, uh, right after this we now we have to do our own um let's see and go right here and just go um count 
all right it's equal to this right here so we better go uh, down at the bottom and do our own uh, row count so the row count simply will allow us you know to, to grab the number of um to grab uh, the number of uh, you know of uh, a query so the query right here that we're sending you know let's see yeah down at the bottom so the query right here should return a number so if this number right here is greater than one so that means that we already have this item right here in the cart and if it's not that means that we do not have it um all right so we better go and copy this and go at the bottom and let's you know based on uh, our own arrow count we're gonna go ahead and do something with the add to cart button so we're gonna go right here go f um count row count right here is actually greater than um zero so if it's greater than uh, zero that means that we actually have uh, this item inside our own cart all right so we're gonna go ahead actually and we're gonna make this button just disabled disabled like this and we're gonna name this so it will be added the cart all right otherwise that means that we do not have this item inside the cart so we're gonna go right here hp else we're gonna simply add this right here and we're gonna remove the disable so we're gonna allow the user to add it if he did not uh, if he did not add it to the cart all right so we're gonna go down here we're gonna go php and f all right so this will be all simply hopefully this works so if we save this whole thing let's now refresh all right so it looks like we got something wrong so the row count is greater than zero um app right here this link query raw cute um all right so we simply grab row right here um we go to add the cart yeah now it's gonna send the query right select all from cart where item underscore id is equal to the id and the user right here is equal to the session user or id um and after this we're simply gonna go ahead and do the count all right so I simply go here let's copy this part let's go down at the bottom let's go right here and just paste this in well we go row right here and save this part um let's refresh all right so it's still not working so just give me a second all right so I got a simple solution for it well we want to go to app.php and simply just go ahead right here and type count raw raw count and we're gonna do the raw count right here and after this we will return it um all right and then we were gonna go to app dash cart right here and we're simply gonna go ahead right here count this will equal uh the app validate cart right here which is gonna return you know after all uh the count right here all right the number so it's just Save this whole thing right here in the app. Let's go down at the bottom. And now, since we already have the count for this um, for this product, we can go down here and remove this whole part and just go if the count is greater than uh, zero. So we will display the disabled button, and if not, we will display the other button right here. Um, so save this whole thing. Let's now go ahead and refresh. All right, so if we go down at the bottom, as you can see, add it to cart. If we simply go ahead and delete this. All right, so there we go. If now we, if we go ahead now and refresh, so as you can see now, add the cart, which is great. So again, I know that this is, was kind of confusing, but you know, let's recap this um, quickly. We are gonna create a function validate cart right here. We're gonna send the query, all right? 
after this we're gonna do our own query we're gonna execute and we're gonna grab uh the count for uh for this query right here so the row count function right here will return a number based on the affected rows of this query row right here all right and after this if you know if we already have the number one because it's going to affect one row at a time um we're going to go ahead and return the count whether it's one or zero you know if if we got an affected row uh, that means that we have this product inside our own table and if not you know we we're going to go ahead and return zero uh, as you can see right here so it's returning the, it's returning the count um all right and if we go right here we already set up a name for the cat for uh we you know we did uh the query right here and uh, after we of course did uh, this uh, did this part for the session because this will protect our own session after this we're going to go ahead and simply add the account uh you know to handle uh this whole uh method and we're going to take this count right here um and we're going to simply go ahead down here and check for it so if that count is greater than one you know which, uh, sorry if it's greater than zero right here we're going to display the button right here the disabled button and if not we're going to display the other button which will simply allow us uh to add this to cart all right so i want to keep those as hidden you know the text inputs right here so save this whole thing um now let's refresh all right so as you can see if we click on this add the cart so we're going to cart.php once again if we click on browse all right so there we go um we're going back once again and if we simply refresh this as you can see add the cart so we added added the cart and the button is already disabled so we cannot add this to cart once more um and if you log in with uh, you know if you create another user and if you log in with it you can simply uh, see that you are and add this card because you know this is a new user all right so this will be all and i will see you on the next video all right so now let's go ahead and move to another part which is uh the card so if we try to access the card right here um card.php all right so as you can see where it's actually um in the food uh, right here so we want to go ahead um uh, let's go to the same to the last page and we can simply grab these um and if we go down at the bottom and remove the part for the nav right here and paste this whole thing and if we copy this part um and if we go down to the bottom to the footer right here we simply remove all of this paste this in now go ahead right here and Make this so it will be uh footer dot php so save this whole thing let's now refresh all right so there we go um for this part we only have like uh the data display uh, right here based on the user uh, id because every user will have a different uh number um of foot items uh, in his cart and we're not gonna go fancy and do something like with ajax we're not gonna do the deleting with ajax and so on uh, because this will just take too much time and you guys um you guys might not familiar with ajax so i don't i'm not gonna go ahead and do it in this um in this course all right and you know it will make the course just too lengthy um all right so let's go at the top right here and let's grab the data um let's see uh if we go right here and we can copy this part we can go paste those right here um all right so we're gonna pass in the query select all from a uh, cart right here where um the user underscore id is equal to the id that we're grabbing from the session so this should be session and we're going to pass in user underscore id um all right so after this we're going to instantiate uh, the app class and then we're going to go ahead and grab the data so this will be select all actually because we're going to we can grab more than one item 
for every card uh, as you're seeing right here um and after this well we do not even need this right over here we can just call this um card underscore items going to equal this all right so we want to copy this part right here and do a for each and that will actually be all all right so we have a couple of uh both items right here um we can simply delete both of those and if we go above this tr php for each card items as um card item like this and if we go ahead and copy this part um we go down here this is the part for the image so i'm going to keep this image source this will equal um php echo um yeah this should be item like this all right so copy this paste it right here and we're gonna simply grab the image all right so there we go um we need to first pass in uh where we're simply placing our own image so i'm gonna go down here and just go echo um app url and i'm gonna go slash image is the folder and we're gonna go ahead and concatenate or add uh, right away uh the image all right so this is awesome so i'm gonna go right here and we're gonna go style we're gonna style it a bit um style will equal um width like um let's like um 50 pixels and height right here um something like 50 pixels also all right so after this we're going to go ahead and grab name all right so there we go and after this we will have the price all right so and this will simply uh this button right here will allow us to simply go ahead and delete um the food items that we do not want so i'm gonna go right here and write in href so this should go um well first of all we're gonna pass in the app url slash um uh, we're gonna go to food to the food folder and we're gonna go to slash delete um dash um item right here um all right dot php we did not create this page but we will create it in a minute so if we echo out right here well we echo out cart item and if we echo out the id all right so here we go well actually the id or the item id um let's see right here yeah it's actually the id all right so we're gonna leave it as this so this is all fine and we're gonna go down here and we're gonna go php and for each all right so there we go um save this whole thing and if we go right here and simply if we refresh this all right so as you can see right here uh we got the price and we got the image and we got the name and if we go we hover over this you can see that this is not dynamic yet uh, the home uh, link if we go to enclose and if we go to header.php um we copy this part and if we go yeah this part right here um if we paste this in save this whole uh thing and if we go ahead and refresh all right so if we click on this this should go back to you know the home page so when i go ahead and add another item right here um so i'm gonna click on just view 
I'm gonna click add to cart. All right, so now it it's added being added to, to the cart, and we're going to cart.php. And as you can see right here, awesome. We click on this. So as you can see right here, we got the data uh, for it, and it's all. Good. All right, now so let's go ahead and display the total uh, price of the items that we have in the cart uh, right here. Um, all right, so this should be pretty simple, you know. If we go uh, at the bottom of the cart right here, if we go after this, and if we go um, cart underscore price, um, so this will equal app, and we're gonna go ahead and grab the select uh, one function, um, and we're gonna pass in the query actually right away, and instead of actually passing. Uh, a variable query because we already have a variable named query right here so we cannot use you know uh two variables with the same name so i thought that we we will just pass it uh, like this so we're gonna go select um actually sum and the submission will be for the price um uh from cart all right where um the user underscore id is equal to the id right here so here is decision and here is simply user underscore id all right so there we go after this we can actually just go ahead well we can set you know an alias for this so this is a fixed symbol name arrow you know we can simply set so we are gonna go right here and so in you know write in all price so we can now use this and print it out right away so if we go copy this we go at the bottom um we go at this part and if we go php echo um card price and if we go all underscore price right here so save this part and if we go refresh all right so now as you can see now it's 30 uh dollars all right so 10 and 20 uh the submission of them is basically 30. so this is working perfectly you know um let's go ahead and do the delete while we're at it you know it's not too big to do um so as you can see right here um we already uh did delete dash item dot php and we sent in uh, the id right here from the cart so we better go ahead and actually do this so if we copy this and go uh, right here and if we simply just paste this in all right so as you can see right here looks good um i want to go at the top and i want to grab um both of these three so I just paste them right here um and i want to go right over here php um can actually leave it like this that's fine now we simply need to grab this id actually go ahead and delete based on it so if we go right here get um and if we grab just the id and if we go down here and if we grab the id it's going to equal get id like this and if we go right over here um let's see uh did we actually delete something in this course i don't think that we deleted anything you know we can grab these um we can simply paste them right away right here so we're gonna do a query um and this will simply be delete all or not actually all delete from cart where um the id is equal to the id that we're grabbing all right so after this we're simply gonna instantiate the app class and after this um we're gonna go ahead uh, if we go to the lips uh, to the lips right here if we go to app um we go down at the bottom yeah we have the delete right here we're gonna send the delete and we're gonna send the path um yeah and it's gonna delete this right away so if we go uh, right here and simply um go delete um all right so and we're gonna send in a query after now after sending the query we should send in the path right here um so for the path i want to copy this part and paste it right here so this will 
simply equal um what do we need it to be equal to if we go down here and if we go down the bottom um so this is card.php and i want to name this so it will also uh cart um we're gonna go back to the cart once again that's that's fine if we save this i want to go to the app.php once again and i want to set it um and i don't want to use the look i don't want to use the header function i want to use uh the line that's down here all right so i want to go ahead copy this and i want to go to the date and i want to go and is this right here uh so this will be simply the path and i can concatenate this with a path right away so they save this close it and you know close the part uh, or save the part for the delete dash item.php um and yeah let's go ahead and try this out so if we hover over this if we if we uh, refresh this and hover over this right here so you can see down at the bottom that we're getting the id uh dynamically all right so if we click on this all right so now it got deleted and we're back to card.php if we browse all right so now it got deleted once again and as you can see the total now is ten dollars all right so i want to go to the home and i want to add one and i want to delete it once again if i go to the dinner right here if i go and view this if i simply click at cart i'm going to add cart.php once again so here is the stick here is simply 40 dollars so this is working perfectly and i can simply delete it once again you know if i want so and we're going back to the page so awesome great so yeah we close this this will be all and i will see and i will see you in the next video all right so in the past couple of videos we worked with the card we displayed the items um we did the delete and we did the total price right here so we want to go ahead and grab the total price so we can actually pre pay for it after we actually uh go to the checkout page uh, and submit the order um all right so how exactly are we going to do this well basically we're going to use the sessions um all right so this is quite a, a very simple thing to do so I want to go to food right here and i want to go to card.php uh this is where we're gonna do uh the form and just a very simple form you know if i go to the button right here so here we go the button is actually check out so i want to go right over here and i want to do a form like this i want to go method is equal to post all right and after this i want to go action um and the action assembly is going to go to the same page um so for the action well i forgot to close this um this will be cart.php all right so we're gonna close this and we're gonna give this a push like that and after this we're gonna close the form all right so yeah um this will actually add the name right here so this will be name uh it will be submit all right and i'm gonna give it a type of submit right here all right so i want to go at the top up there and i want to go down here and i want to check for a form submission so i want to go s that right here uh, post submit all right so after we submit the form we're simply going to go ahead and grab uh the price so I'm gonna go ahead right here i'm gonna type in session uh this will be total underscore price all right so inside the price we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab the submission right here which is all price um all right so just gonna paste this in and you know this will simply be all now we now we can just use this when we go ahead and pay um all right so that's cool let's now save this whole thing uh, let's now go ahead and move to uh well actually after we grab the price you know we while we are in the cart uh when he clicks on this we want to go to the checkout page so after this i want to go ahead um i want to grab uh this part of the link where we yeah 
it's right here i want to go ahead and grab this and paste it right here so this will be app url after this i want to go to slash code um and i want to go to slash um uh, let's see there is the checkout so i want to go ahead and move this right here so i'm gonna rename this so it will be checkout.php so this is where i want to go so if we rename this copy it and paste it down here all right so great this is app url all right it's a constant not a variable so yeah this is where we want it to go so let's go ahead now and work with the checkout page and the checkout page is actually nothing but you know a symbol form all right so let's copy this part and let's go down here and make this whole thing dynamic so let's paste all of this let's copy this let's go down at the bottom of the footer um all right so let's simply uh, delete this whole thing let's paste this in all right so this will be a footer um all right save this whole thing and now what we need to work with is simply uh the logic all right so where did we do the logic for uh, an add if we go to add dash cart right here you can see that we have a, a similar logic for adding right here so i want to go ahead and grab this all f statement um all right i want to copy it and i want to go down here and just paste it i want to push it a little um all right so we're checking for a form submission and after this we're going to grab um we're going to grab the data if i simply now go ahead and refresh this and if i click on checkout all right so it sounds like we go to cart did we save everything so if it said post and we're simply grabbing the session and after this we're going to this so i simply remove the whole part because the checkout page is actually right here it's, in, it's inside the same folder so we might not even need all of this so Let's save this whole thing. I want to go down at the bottom. So form method is post and the action is cart.php. Um, the button right here type. Yeah, we should remove this type right here. Since we already set a type of submit. Um, all right. I guess will work now save this let's now refresh we click on this right here all right so now it's going to check out that php which is what we need so this is how the page uh looks like um all right so let's now go to check out that php um yeah so we're gonna do the form submission and after this um we're gonna go ahead and grab the data you know um, so let me go down at the bottom of the form. So for the form right here, method is going to be post. Um, let's see. Uh, action going to equal checkout. So the action is going to be at the same page, checkout.php. All right, so great. Um, after this, we have a couple of input fields right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven um all right so go ahead simply and now do the names so name right here going to equal name all right and for this input the name is going to equal simply email email right here all right so if i go right here to this input paste this in so this will be just down and right here we go paste this in this will be country all right make sure to write the type in 
you make sure to write um the right names or this will blow up so if we go right here name zip code and if we go right here name equal to phone uh, underscore number all right so after this the name simply um address all right and actually i want to insert also the user um i want to insert uh, the user id um because we're gonna grab uh, every or you know we're gonna grab every orders for you know we're gonna grab uh, orders for every user um all right so uh, and also i want to i want to insert the price all right so i'm gonna insert those dynamically without any inputs so i want to go to the button right here and i'm gonna go submit this is the name and the type right here is equal to submit all right so yeah this is this will be it for yeah the top the, the type is actually right there all right so awesome let's now go at the top since we finished up the form um let's see all well, the first thing that i want right here if we go down once again is the name Well, not even here let's start right here all right then after this we have the email after this we have the town after this we have the country After this, we have the zip code. Well, actually, we need the user, uh, the user ID right here. So let's go copy this like three times or something. So this will be zip code. Um, all right, so it's going to be zip code like this. So let's go down at the bottom. Um, we want the phone number. Um, and we want the address all right so let's copy the phone number right here um paste it right here and right here and after this we have the address um all right so we want also the total price so i'm gonna name this total underscore price and we already have this from the session so we're gonna go right here and just go position total underscore price all right so this is what we need it's actually yeah it's right here all right so there we go uh, name one two three four five six seven yeah and we have the store so awesome so insert into this will simply be just orders which is the new table that we're going to create in a minute um <clears throat> excuse me and after this we're going to go ahead and add the name but also add it right here right here and right here and we're going to do the rest for you know both of those both of our own items so just speed up the video and do like what i'm doing right here so town um and yeah after this we have town we also have town right here and town um so for the country um in a paste it right here right here right here and right here um all right so for the zip code um we better go after country because we need the user id so we're gonna go right here um All right, so after this, we're going to go right here. I'll make sure to add those. Um, let's copy this a couple of times and paste it right here. All right, so 
let me just go ahead and yeah so after the country all right so let's paste this right here and right here so after the zip code we have the phone number um let's go right here first all right so we go right here um go right here and here all right so we go to the address um we paste this right here all right so for the phone for the address sorry let's paste it right here also right here and right here i know that this is completely boring but we have to do it so there is total price and also right here total price after the address also right here total price um and the user id is already there all right so three four five six seven eight nine awesome three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine all right so great so again we're doing the query and we're sending the array right here and we're sending the path um all right so this will be this will be a page we're gonna send the pass so we're gonna go to a page named a.php this is where we're gonna implement our own payment um all right so we're not gonna work well you know we're not gonna add anything to it just now so i'm gonna go right here and add pay.php and now we're simply gonna insert right away um did we instantiate our own class we did not even it so this will trigger an error so i want to go right here i'm going to go app new um app right here all right so this will work right away save this part um and i guess that we finished the part for um <clears throat> sorry for the form um all right so copy this um let's go right here and create new table all right so there we go orders so we'll possibly need like 11 columns uh so we already have four let's add like seven of those all right so this will be id this will be 10 um and as always let's go ahead and keep this an auto increment so it will be a primary key um all right so what else um we need right here the name All right, so this will be var car two hundred, and after this we're gonna need email. This will be var car right here. This will also be two hundred. Let's go ahead and add down, and this will be var car two hundred also. Let's add the country um all right and speed up the video again so this will be the zip code yeah this can be integer that's fine and this will be 20 um right here so this will be phone number um this will be this will also be integer let's keep it like 50 um all right so after this we have the address the address is going to be a type of text you know because it's going to be a limited characters so be a limited characters so the total price right here um let's keep it integer that's fine we're going to keep it 10. um all right so grab the user id right now this will also be integer and it will be 10. and the last one is simply the date so created underscore add um this will be a type of date will be a type sorry of timestamp and this will be you know the default value is going to be current timestamp so it will grab um the record so it will grab you know the date the current date all right so there we go let's now go ahead and refresh this 
all right so let's go ahead and test this out hopefully it works from the second from the first time you know uh, so the email um at gmail.com all right so the town let's write um sample town right here so the country um let's type in stamble country and the zip code right here let's type something weird like this the phone number something weird like this all right so the address let me grab just a simple text right here copy this part and just go ahead and click order and pay all right so we're going to pay.php which means that this actually worked if we click on browse as you can see the total price now is 10 which is awesome all right and here is the user id um and the rest of uh the rest of the data is just right there um so yeah it's working perfectly actually um so then in the next video we're gonna go ahead and work with uh the payment all right so this will be all all right now so let's actually go ahead um and work with the payment so this part you know you might think that it's too hard but it's not actually is so we're gonna implement the payment with paypal as i said in the you know in the past couple of videos so so to make this work we're gonna go ahead and go to developer.paypal.com right here um all right so it's gonna take a second all right so it's just you know i'm actually logged in right now it's gonna you know if you don't have uh, an account on paypal just go ahead and actually create one it's not not too hard to create and go to developer.paypal.com and just log in right away so after the login i'm possibly just gonna go um to the dashboard right here all right so I just give it a second All right, so here we go. I want to go right here, the apps and credentials. All right, or I go just to sandbox account first, and I can also go to apps and credentials right here. All right. Well, what exactly do we need to work with this? Well, first of all, we're going to set up some fake accounts. Um, all right, or sandbox test accounts, for, because of course we're going to work with the sandbox right here. We're not gonna work with the live version, so we're not gonna test with real money you now. Um uh so we look up over here, we're gonna create a couple of uh sandbox uh, account so we can test with them. We're gonna create uh you know we're gonna create two accounts, one for the business and one for the personal account, or one for the merchant, you know, which is like the email for the company or something, and one for the personal, which is the one for the user. Uh, all right you know which is simply gonna go ahead and buy our own uh food items um all right if that makes sense so after this after we create both of those uh we're gonna go ahead and link our own business account to uh, an sd key app that we are going to create in a minute and after this you know the hd key app will provide us with some kind of id and we're gonna take this id and integrate it inside uh you know inside the code uh, inside our co our own code that we are going to grab and you know and that will actually be it all right so it's not too big you know it sounds kind of scary first but you know once i walk you through it you'll notice that you know it's not you know it's not so hard um all right so i have a, a couple of pre-existing accounts right here but you know we can create one uh we can create two other accounts together uh that's fine uh with me all right so to create an account just go ahead and click on create account right here so the first account that we're going to create is a personal or a buyer account and keep this as the united states of america because it doesn't work in my country so just be safe uh, let's take you know the safe um choice right here and keep the country as the united states so let's click on create simply all right so sandbox account was created successfully so here is um my uh personal account right here that we're going to use to pay for the products um, all right so as you can see here is the country and here is the date it's 9th of april 2023 uh, and you know if you look at if you look over here here is you can actually see the date 
uh, so this is a very new account you know these accounts right here are accounts that i tested with them uh later all right so just you know pretend that they're not even there just uh we're gonna create a new ones uh, after we create the personal account, I want to also go ahead and create uh, a business account. I'm going to keep this business or merchant account. Again, keep this United States of America. Click on create. All right. So as you can see, the sandbox account was created successfully. And here is simply our uh, new account. Uh, as you can see, the type is business and the country is simply the US. And the date created, um, as you can see right here, the, the 9th uh, of, uh, of April. Um, all right so if we go right over here my apps and credentials you know uh we can see that we also have a couple of apps that i used uh, in the past but we can create a new sdk app so if we click on create app right here you can name this however that you like i'm gonna keep it like i'm gonna need restaurant um app that's fine and i'm you know the app type is going to be merchant and it's going to be linked uh to the to the latest business account that we created um as you can see right here um here is simply the id for it sbxdg uh blah 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 so if we go right here you can see sbxdg uh blah 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 right here so it's going to be linked to this specific account right here um all right so make sure that it's actually linked to it as you can see we have a couple of options but you know it will automatically choose the last uh business account uh, business account that you have all right, so if we click on create app, all right, so just give it a second. All right, so, all right, so as you can see, restaurant app right here, our app is created successfully, and here is simply the sandbox credentials. So there is a sandbox business account that we have that we link to, and here is the client ID right here, the secret ID, and you know, all of these stuff right here, they do not matter. All that it matters is the client ID right here. This is what we are going to use uh, and paste uh, inside our own uh, code. All right. So if we go back once again to developer.paypal.com and I want to go to the home right here. Um, so we can simply I show you the code and how it works and all of that. So go to developer.paypal.com slash home. If you if we go right here, accept payments, we can see that we have a couple of options. Of course, we're going to use online. We're not going to use in-person, third-party or any like that and of course we're gonna use the checkout um all right so something like this will open up if we go to the standard right here and if we go to integrate um if we look down at the bottom you can see that you know it tells you this is how it works um all right well basically we will add the button to our own page and the buyer will click the button after this the server i uh, will call the paypal order cbi to set up a transaction and the back-end server launch, launches uh, the PayPal, you know, um, experience, checkout experience. And then uh, the, the buyer will enter his um, his email and password, his PayPal email and password, which, you know, in our case, you know, since we are testing, we're going to use uh, the buyer account or the personal account. After this, you know, uh, the PayPal will call the orders EBI once again. You can simply click on it to read about it, one, you know, a lot more to finalize the transaction. And then uh, a confirmation message will show up. Um, all right, so we have the code right here, add payment buttons. Um, so here's actually the code. No, but uh, this code is a lot more complicated, you know. Um, I did this, uh, I, this I, 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 did, um, I did a couple of projects with PayPal in the past, and they used to provide um, a, a lot simpler uh, code. Uh, or a lot simpler version of this so i actually have it right over here so check out uh, the resources section for this uh, video and you will find the code this is the code that we are going to use you know instead of this this is this is a lot more complicated um all right so just go to your editor right here and we simply go to food if you remember we did the pay page we created this uh, file in the last video just paste the code um and so just a very simple html code you know not too big the most important part is right here which is uh where we're simply grabbing the paypal sdk uh, right here uh, from the paypal.com um all right and here we can see we need to simply add the id that we uh that we got you know when we created uh, the sdk app 
right we need to add it instead of this test word um right here so if we go right over here as you can see here is the client id so you just copy it you know carefully and paste it right here also carefully or this will not uh work um all right if we go down at the bottom here is simply the dev you know paypal uh, you know with an id paypal that a uh, dash button dash container um all right so after this we're gonna go ahead and create an order you know um and after this right here we're gonna go ahead and uh, pass in the actions and then we will create uh the we will create the order right away and then we're gonna pass in the value uh, right here that we are going to pay this is where uh, our value um this is our value right here where we're going to pay so i'm going to keep this just a 100 dollars. and if you look um at this right here you can see that the currency is actually us dollars right here um all right so again this is our own amount that we're going to pay we're going to make it dynamic but just in the in the next video all right and after this we're simply finalizing the transaction um all right so after the order is simply done we're simply going to go ahead to a page right here so what do you think what page do you think that we should go to um uh let's see right here so add dash card all right so i'm gonna make it so it will go um let's see right here gonna create a file let's say the late um dash um let's see cart right here dot php and you know with this page we're simply gonna go ahead and and like uh clean the cart or simply uh, remove all the items from the cart because after we uh, after we you know check out and pay we don't want any items in the cart because the that, you know the user will already pay for them um all right so copy this um so here we have it the delete dash card dot php um all right so we're gonna send it right after this to this right here so we're not gonna work with it uh, just now we're gonna just send it to this page to this page delete dash card dot php all right so just save this uh save this whole thing right here again just add the id and you know you can you know and change this to 100 and go ahead right here and change this to the late uh, uh dash card dot php um all right and you know this will do save this whole thing right over here if we go to the checkout um yeah we're going to pay that php after this so that's fine um so what else uh i think that you know it's all it's all gone and sorry it's all done it's all great uh we want to now i want to go ahead now and you know show you that we actually have some fake money inside those uh inside of those accounts right here the business and the personal accounts um all right so if we go right here i'm gonna access an incognito window i'm gonna go send box um dot yeah yeah, if I go to sandbox.paypal.com right here, just access this. All right, so let me change this to English. And now let's go ahead and sign in with um with this right here. So this is our own business account. If we click on view slash edit account right here, you're gonna see that you have an email and a password. So you just copy the email right here and let's simply click on this. All right, so for the password. If we simply go ahead um go ahead right here and paste this in so we're gonna go to this account right here all right so now we're going to the dashboard and we're gonna see that we have like five thousand dollars right here as a balance of course this is fake money it's not real um as you can see right here we got uh this to simply test with it you know but we're actually for for the business account of course we're gonna we're gonna just receive money all right we're not gonna pay money uh so as you can see right here here is the recent activities so we got this today uh once we create the account right away um all right and if we go to the buyer or to the personal account right here and if we do the same copy this 
And if we go right here and log out. All right, let's try to log in once again. And we go back and just copy this. All right, so there we go. Now we have five thousand uh, dollars right here. Um, now it's it. If you look at the recent activity right here, you can see that it's actually that it got sent today, the 9th of April. Now once we create the account right away. Um, all right, so I want to go right now, and I want to um, and I want to test the payment out. I want to do my first payment, and uh, we will actually pay just hundred dollars for now. Um, all right, so I want to go back. I want to go back right here to the orders. Um, all right, I want to now delete this. I delete this whole record. Um, I want to go, let's see, the food slash cart dot php. All right, so as you can see right here, we only have one item and it's only $10. Um, all right, so if we click on the checkout right here, um, so there we go. Now let's enter our own information. All right, so for the email right here, gmail.com all right so for the town symbol down right here and for the country symbol country right here um and for the zip code let's enter something weird like this and for the phone number right here let's enter something weird also um, and as for the address, let's grab any kind of text right here. We click on order and pay now. This should go to pay.php and we should actually see the buttons right over here. All right. But, you know, the design doesn't matter right now. What it matters is that we should see the buttons and we can complete our uh, first transaction. Um, all right. So if we click on PayPal right here, if we click on the button. Uh, this right here should show up. So... We want to go ahead right now and you know let's pretend that we're actually some kind of buyer right here that he wants to pay um so we want to go ahead and uh, grab um the data for the personal account so we can pay with it you know and that totally makes sense um because the personal account is the buyer account all right so we want to go right here when i click all right so let's simply click it once again All right, so there we go. If we simply paste this in, uh, if we click on next, we want to now go ahead and grab the password. Um, all right, so now let's enter the password. We click on login. All right, so now it's actually working. It's going to, the hundred dollars is going to show up right here. So here is, here we go. It's going to be taking, uh, Gonna be cut from the paypal balance right here so it is hundred dollars um so if we click on complete purchase right so as you can see thanks for using paypal right here all right just give it a second so it actually go to the page that we said it will go to which is this page right here delete dash card dot php all right so now as you can see it's going to delete dash card dot php now if we go ahead to our um, personal account right here, you should see that $100 should be taken, should be cut from uh, this balance right here. And of course, it's going to be added to the to the business account. So as you can see right here, awesome. It's now $4,900. As you can see, $100 now has been taken from uh, from this. So if we go to log out right here, and we want to now check for the business account all right so we're gonna see that you know a hundred dollars has been added to it um so if we click on login let's now log in with this let's grab password of course you will have your own emails and password if you have been following along from the beginning so as you can see now we're going to the dashboard um 
all right so now 96 dollars has been added to this uh, because you know the hundred dollars has been uh, not all the hundred dollars has been added because there is some kind of fee if we simply go um I, you know and click on payments uh, received um all right so there we go right here uh here's the gross and here's the fee three dollars 98 um and the net right here is 96 uh dollars and here is simply the whole balance um all right so this this is how this whole thing works you know as you can see i told you it's not not too big we're just creating a couple of accounts and we're simply hooking uh the business account with the sdk that we're creating and then we're gonna grab the code and the sdk will provide us with an id uh, that we pasted right here at uh, the client dash id um and yeah this this will simply be all for this video the next one we're gonna make this whole thing dynamic now so let's go ahead and actually make this you know this pay.php uh more dynamic um so i want to go ahead right over here at the nav bar part and i want to remove this whole thing and i want to add you know my usual uh code right here so let's grab this part um let's add this right here um all right so i want to go ahead right here so here we have the container um so let's see we do not need those two closing divs right here and we do not also need this um so i want to go ahead and grab the header and i want to go right here and paste this in all right, so this will be order.php. And I want to also go ahead and make this so it will actually be dynamic. So this will be position right here. Um, let's see. Um, this will be session. Uh, this will be total underscore price. So if we look at the checkout right here you can see that we're grabbing um this is actually the price in position so yeah so there we go we save this whole thing um let's see right here we go back to pay.php let's refresh this all right, so here we go. It's kind of messed up a little, you know. I know. So let's see. We go to the checkout right here. I want to grab this div. All right, so if we go to the pay, and I want to go ahead and paste it down here, so it will make this a lot more beautiful, you know, because we have a page. Um, we have a page after the nav bar, so we need to add it right here all right so now i guess that's looking a lot more beautiful you can simply do a margin and you know work uh, this part out um but i'm not gonna do it with here this is not a design course again uh, just a very simple margin you know html and css not you know it's no big deal i want to change this checkout right here so it will simply just pay uh so it will be pay with paypal um and this will be a all right so there we are um if we simply refresh this all right so i guess now that this will work perfectly if we try it out once again before we try before we try this out i want to go ahead and add the functionality um of the page delete dash card dot php right here um, all right, so it's a very delete, uh, you know, it's a very simple delete page. Well, again, after we go ahead and pay for, for the products, I want to go ahead and clear the cart. Um, all right, so of course, we're not going to allow the user, uh, you know, after he paid for, after he paid for the products inside the cart, we're simply going to clear the cart up. All right, so this is, you know, this is very logical. Um, if we simply go to, let's say, delete dash cart. Uh, or delete dash item right here we copy this whole code if we go right here and paste this in so we're simply grabbing all the files that we here that we need 
and you know we're not gonna go ahead actually and work with any idea right here so it's just remove remove all of these things um all right so we're gonna go delete from cart right here where's the id and we're gonna simply delete by uh decision um right here so we're gonna delete by the user underscore id because you know a lot you know a lot of users can have uh, can have a lot of uh, items inside their own card so you know the only difference thing uh, the only difference thing right here is the user id so this is what we are gonna be deleting with um all right so after this we're instantiating the app and we're simply after we after we complete this whole process we're gonna go back to the cart uh, dot php and you know after this we're simply gonna you know uh, work with the lit right here and we're gonna send this query um and after this we're gonna pass in uh, the query and uh, the pass right here um all right so save this whole thing i want to go back i want to go back from the beginning again i want to go from i want to go starting from cart.php uh right here all right so we only have one item at the cart which is ten dollars um if i go to the home once again if i add a couple of things uh let's see um i can add let's see what we have yeah we have the chicken wings right here if i actually click on it we can see that we cannot add it so i want to go ahead and add something else let's go to the launch and i want to add this all right so if we click and add the cart right here so we're going now to cart.php so this is our new page and as you can see the total right here is 30 dollars you know because we have 10 and 20 right here we simply click on the checkout so here's the checkout um all right so i want to go back and insert once again very quick so for the email right here um i'm gonna go and insert uh something like this so for the town right here this is going to be symbol uh town um let's see this will also be symbol country all right for the zip code let's enter something like this and for the phone number let's enter something like this and here's simply the address um so if we simply paste this in if we click on order and pay now all right so now we're going to pay that php and here is our own paypal button um all right so something wrong is happening right here if I go to pay, if I wrap this up in double quotes. Session. If I go back and wrap this up in double quotes, if I simply save this whole thing, let's now refresh. All right, let's now try to click it once again. All right, so, all right, so just give me a second. All right, so the problem is pretty simple, you know. Uh, we should go right here and add this as a PHP code. So we're gonna echo this out right here. All right, so save this whole thing. Now we should actually grab this from the session. Do not forget to add double codes right here because this is an array. We now just refresh this. We click on this right now all right so this should show up and we should actually see 30 dollars now all right so as you can see 30 dollars so this is this is being pulled dynamically from the session if we click on complete purchase right here so as you can see thanks for using paypal right here and this should actually go back you know as you can see it got, it got back to the delete uh dash card first you know, but it did not actually delete it so we have something wrong with the you know with deleting from the cart we simply click on the cart we can see that you know the items are still there but if we go uh to the payment you can see that it's actually working um if we go back you can see that actually 30 yeah 30 dollars or around 30 dollars has been added to this as you can see right here um all right and if we try to log out and log in to our own um let's see personal account we can see that like 
thirty dollars has been taken away from this. So if we copy this, if we go to login, all right. So there we go. Let's copy this also. And if we go right here and just click on login, all right. So there we go. Thirty dollars, you know, minus thirty dollars. So this is the buyer account that we logged in with when we paid um so yeah the payment now is working uh dynamically um and the session is being pulled away and you know, it's all it's all good you know what we need to do in the next video um is simply going ahead and deleting um this card uh these card items so you know so we can finish uh this up all right so now let's go ahead and continue this so in the last video we um we did the payment dynamically and now we want to go ahead and see what's wrong with the code you know with leaning or deleting the card after we simply pay um so if we go right here to delete dash card now we're saying we're saying that uh, we set it so it will actually delete with the id uh, from the card table uh so if we go back um right here we go to the card table all right we want to we want to allow it so it will delete not with the id we want to allow it so it will delete with the user underscore id so this was the problem uh, right here um so it was not finding um the id of one because that you know the value the value of this in is simply one so it's not going to delete even anything using the id so we want it to delete using the user underscore id and of course because it's going to you know delete more it can delete more than one uh, i i more than one item at a time um all right so this is how it will work so let's just save this whole thing let's now go ahead once back and you know refresh this all right so i want to go ahead and delete you know i want to go ahead and pay and do all of these things once again so i want to go to the orders now i want to go ahead and delete both of those orders all right so delete all right so if we go right here um if we go to check out right here all right so now we should enter our own data all right so that is simply email.com and here is the town um all right so this will be just town like this and here is simply the country you can type any na country name that you like all right and here is the zip code and here is simply the phone number and here is the address i guess that this will be the last time that we actually try uh paying you know this will be officially finishing this part so now we're going to pay that php and if we click this All right, so there we go. We want to now grab, um, we want to grab our own account. So let's grab personal account right here so we can pay for this. And it should be $30. So just copy this, go back right here, paste this in. Now go ahead and grab um, the password. All right, so just give it a second. Uh, so if we simply log in, all right, with a, uh, all right, all right. So now we're seeing this window right here. Let's see thirty dollars. Scroll the session, and as you can see, thirty dollars. We click on complete purchase right here. Um. All right. So thanks for using PayPal. All right, so we're gonna see that it's gonna go to delete dash cart or something. Yeah, delete dash cart. Now it's it went back to cart.php and we're getting, you know, um, we're getting some kind of error right here, but it, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can see um, that, you know, uh, that the items are gone. Um, all right, so if we go to the cart right here. all right so as you can see right now there is nothing in the cart you know the items got um those items got deleted um all right so and the total right here is basically nothing 
all right so this is awesome this is great we're gonna take care of this um we're gonna take care of this right now so card.php line 58 so if we go to card.php important thing that it's actually worked so it's checking right here yeah if we simply go down here if i do a symbol if statement so i want to go and i want to count you know the number of items inside this array so i'm gonna go if the count of this array is bigger than or greater than uh zero that means that we actually have uh, some items inside uh inside our own card so we're simply going to do the for each and display them um otherwise we should go right here and display symbol message like um let's say um card is empty add some um food items or add something like this you can type any uh message that you like and we're simply going to end if this whole thing so save um if we go ahead and refresh this all right so looks like we got a problem um if count card items is greater than yeah um hmm this is weird everything seems normal to me um so just give me a second all right so you know instead of actually uh counting for the cart items you just go ahead and we're gonna actually um uh, we're gonna get the prices so if the price uh, of the products of the price of the total products is greater than zero zero that means that we actually have something uh, inside the cards we have products inside the cards right that means you know we have uh some kind of items uh, right there because the price is greater than zero all right that makes sense uh so we're gonna go ahead and display these items if we have them else we're gonna display something like cart is empty add some food items to it so just save this refresh and it will work uh right away all right so the most important thing right here uh is the cart uh is empty after we pay so this whole process now um is done uh something else that i want to talk about is we cannot allow the user uh to simply go ahead and access some pages directly uh, through the url uh, like the checkout page and the pay page because um they actually have some kind of um they have sessions inside them we're working with sessions and stuff like that um so I don't want the user to simply uh, access the checkout page and the pay page uh, directly uh, right here, all right, uh, through the link like this. All right, so I wanna um, I wanna go ahead and grab this code, and you will find it, of course, in the resources section. Just copy it uh, right away, and let's go uh, above the pay.php right here. And if we go PHP, we simply paste this code in. So once a user tries to access this directly, uh, this will allow him to go back, let's say, uh, to the index page once again. So I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, this. I'm going to paste this in. So it's going to go back to the index page. Um, all right. So I want to copy this. Um, let's save this. And I want to go check out .php. And I can go down here and paste this whole thing in. Save once again. Let's now go ahead. Um, let's see. Uh, probably we will do this also for um, add dash to cart. Uh, no, not here. Um, delete dash cart. Yeah, we probably can do it right here. So save this whole thing. Um, and also delete dash item. All right. So save this once again. All right, so let's now try to access checkout. We are now at the cart. So if we go to checkout.php, um, looks like we got a problem. So it's just refreshing right there. Let's try to access the pay. Let's see if it's working or not. So it's still also refreshing. So it's gonna go 
if this is not set, we're gonna go back once again to this. Uh huh. You know why? Because we're using, we're still using the header probably. So we wanna go, um, we wanna go to libs right here. And we wanna go tab.php. And I wanna go ahead and copy this part. Um, so I wanna go to the checkout and paste this right here. So this will be app URL. Hopefully it works now. So let's copy this part, save. Um, let's just first try to test it out. So we're going to go to checkout.php. All right, so now it's going back to the index page. So it's working. So there was a problem uh, just with the link. All right, so copy this, close, and let's paste. Um, see, yeah, it's we're not here even if, you know, we did the checkout. So what else did we do? Uh, we did this page right here so just save this right away and we also did it for this part so add and save right away and we also did it for the pay so just add and save um so close all of these let's now try to access the pay because this is also one of the crucial pages that we have that we cannot allow the user to access directly um so if i go right here pay.php so we're going back to the index page once again all right and it's all fine it's all great i guess that you know we finished uh, everything right here that we need to finish i want to go ahead and change uh the name of the cart right here um and the index if we go to header and if we try to go um the cart let's see um where exactly is cart yeah it's right here so this will be let me add right path. So this will be PHP echo tab URL slash food slash cart dot PHP. All right, so there we go. Let's now refresh this. We simply click on this right here. This will go to the cart. So again, cart is empty. Add some food items. You can style this however that you like. You can add an alert if you want um that i'm not gonna add it so if we go to the home if now we add some food items so if we click add the cart right here all right so now we're going to the cart and you know it's displaying uh, the item that we have all right so if you go to the table cart now as you can see right here we got our own uh, food item inside the cart you know and here is the total and you can simply do this all over again so uh, everything is dynamic right now and if of course if you check uh, the part uh, for the payment it will work right away if you did everything uh, as i did the right way um and yeah this will be all for this video and i will see you on the next one all right so now let's go ahead and add a 404 page to our own project um uh, this is going to be really important you know if somebody tries to mess up with our own link then we're going to add it only to the pages uh, where we have somewhere where we're sending some kind of id to the link right here or to the url All right so just gra uh, grab grab uh, the code that i just gave you in the resources section of this video um and let's go right here and if we go to the road folder i want to create it right here so this will be 404.php we simply paste this in all right so great i want to go ahead um probably to booking.php well let's leave this out of the way for now if we go to add dash cart.php and if we go right here and just copy all of those and paste them right here so i want to go ahead and add right links um all right so there we go and this will simply be the footer as it is and this is simply just an html code so it says 404 right here in bold um page not found all right and we're sending we're giving him a, a link right here so we can go back to the index page you know so all of this is going to be fine so save this um again we want to do this um for the pages where we're sending an ideal just like the add add dash to cart 
uh, page right here. So we're going to go down at the bottom and we want to type in else. Um, and we're going to go, let's see the cart right here. And we're going to grab this cart. Um, and we're going to go right here and go since this is already um, in the root folder, we're going to go to the root and we're going to go to slash for. 404.php all right so save this let's now go ahead to the home let's try to access this page um if we simply go to any product as you can see we can access this page it's, it's basically uh the few the few details uh, page for the products um so if we go ahead now and try to remove the id if some user tries to mess up with our own id if we click right here so as you can see we're going to a 404 page um the design is messed up a little you know just because the part of the nav bar we need some kind of um we need this diff right here the diff for the page um all right so we go right here and simply try to paste this in all right so save this part and let's go ahead and refresh all right so undefined it variable one and blah blah Yeah, let's go right here. We probably out. All right, so it'll be 404. Let's now save this. Um, and let's remove this part for the cart. So save. Let's now refresh. All right, so as you can see right here, 404. Um, doesn't look that nice to me. So let's slide it up a bit. Um, I want to go. Let's see. I want to go and copy this whole part right here uh, with the dev text dash center. And I want it. Um, I want to remove. Um, I want to like go to this H1 right here. I'm just going to paste it uh, right away. Um, all right. So, yeah. Just like this. If I simply refresh now, so as you can see right here, 404, um, page not found. The page that you're looking for does not exist. So I want to go ahead and delete the part of this div down here. Um, that's fine. And we can style this a bit, you know. I'm going to keep this so it will be text dash white. Um, so save this. And we can also comment this for now. Save this whole thing. Let's refresh right here. All right, so it's looking better right here. The page that you're looking for that does not exist. And if we simply click on this, it's going to go back to the index page once again. Um, all right, so I would say that this page now is over. You can, you know, you can design it however that you like, but I'm going to stop right here. So we want to also add it to a couple more pages. So if we copy this, um, and if we go to the card, do we have something? Do we have, uh, like, uh, a part where we're simply fetching an ID at the link? We do not have one in the cart. Um, let's also close this. If we go to the checkout, no. We do not have something like this. We go to the lead dash card right here. Um, no. We go to the lead dash item. Um, yeah, we have, you know, like we have it right here. So save this whole thing. I don't think that we have one at the pay. So yeah, it was only like two pages, but we're going to actually fetch some IDs also um, in the URL when we go ahead and work with um, grabbing the orders and the bookings for other user you know uh, in the future of this course so yeah this will be all just check out the code in the resources section um all right so this will be all and i'll see you on the next video all right so with the last video we finished validating the payment and we finished um the cart we finished the checkout and so on so we want to go ahead right now and work with the form for the booking um 
all right so this is going to be too complicated you know the only uh you know complicated thing which is not very complicated um is actually uh, not allowing the user to book a date for the booking uh in the past all right like yesterday before yesterday and so on we can only allow him to book dates uh just in the future uh, all right like like starting from tomorrow or something um all right so this should be pretty easy to do just go ahead to your index page right here um i want to go to the form just go ahead and click control five uh click control five and just go book um a table or something let's say book a table online all right so just type this right here and this will allow you to simply see the form all right so i want to go so this method will be post right here and i want to um i want to do the booking actually in another page this page right here will be booking.php all right so i'm just going to copy this part um and i'm going to go down here and i'm going to create a new um all right so we already have this we already have this uh file actually we have a file with this uh, name so we're gonna go uh booking underscore table all right right here so if we copy this part um all right and save this let's now go ahead and paste this in all right so there we go booking underscore table um all right and let's take care of the input so the first thing that we have right here is the name so this will be named like this all right so after this we have the email after this we have the date time so this will be um date underscore booking after this we have um the number of people um all right so i want to keep this so it will be just one two three um and maybe i'll keep it like four you can add as many as that you want so this will be also four for the value and we should see the name right here at the select so this will be um number underscore people um all right so after this we have the special request so this will be name special request let's see it's kind of a weird name no but we will grab it anyway let me make this small all right let me make the r small and let me just put this underscore right here um all right so the button the name right here should be submit and the type is already submit right here type is submit right here all right so this is pretty great you know let's save this all uh thing right here and i want to go to booking underscore table hmm. um so i want to go right here again to the index and i want to grab these right here all right so just copy this also and just include the footer that's fine um so what else do we need to grab we need to grab uh you know the code for inserting I guess we have it somewhere here um so if we grab the part right here for the form submission um if we go ahead right here and start our php and just paste this to go up there all right so we're gonna check for a post submit right here and we're gonna simply grab um grab the names that we want so there is actually the form and there is the name here the first thing that we need to pass in all right and after this we need to pass um the email and after this we need date booking um all right so after this we're gonna go ahead and go grab the number of people um all right 
what else do we have special request right here well actually we need the user id all right so i'm just gonna go ahead and go right here or maybe i will paste this one more so i will grab the special request right here all right so right and after this i want to set some kind of status you know so the status will allow, will allow us to see if the booking is like pending you know it's sent to the admins or it's actually confirmed so the people who book this can go right now um and so on all right so we're gonna set it by default so it will actually be just pending all right and then we will go to the admins and we will change it however that we like um all right and we know we're gonna go ahead and insert also the user id and you know since you know so we can grab uh the bookings for every user uh later on um all right so i guess that you know this part now is over we want to go ahead and go to the part right here so this will be a new table that we're going to create and the name of it is simply bookings um all right so there is the name and there is the email and there is the date booking right here um so there is date booking there is number of people um all right so after this we have a special request so after this right here we have special request and there is the status all right and right here also we have uh, the status all right so great after this we're going to pass in the array of data um so this right here should be the name and this should be the email um all right and after this we got the date booking and after this we got the number of people and right here is a special request well let's copy this one more time because we need the user ID. and after this we got the status all right so one two three four and those are seven and if we look at here these are also seven all right and after this after we book what what do you think should we go um we can go to the index page once again that's fine um insert right here all right so we're passing in um but we did not do the part for the validation yet so i want to go right over here Oh. I'm gonna go down here. F um date. I'm gonna pass in my date format. So this will be D slash um sorry, this will be Y slash M slash D. So this is simply the date of the day. So if if the date booking right here is greater than uh the date of today that means that he is actually picking uh, another day uh sorry another date which is tomorrow or something so we're gonna go ahead and process the code that means that he is picking a valid date um all right but if if it's something else if it's like greater uh, sorry if it's lesser than this date right here we're gonna add something like um let's see we need to add some kind of alert right here so i'm gonna go echo um prepped um alert right here uh, invalid date pick a date starting from tomorrow all right so if am i if if i'm typing even this right because i don't think i am just you know check your spelling and it will 
goes just fine. Um, all right, so this is what we need to do. Let's now try this out. Hopefully it works. But before we even try it out, let's go ahead and copy the bookings right here and let's create this table. All right, so there we go. The bookings, um, I guess that we need like four or five other columns, you know. So the first one, it will be the ID will be 10 will still be an integer so if we go down here and if we make this so it will be auto increment and after this we're going to go ahead and grab the name this will be var car will be 200 um all right and after this we need the email um again it will be var car 200 after this we have the date booking um all right so there we go we will have the this also as a bar car um all right so we're gonna keep it 200 that's fine the number of people um this will be like integer i guess um this can be like in um that's fine so the special request right here this is going to be a text because this is a text area, we want it to be unlimited, so we're not going to add a link for it. And after this, we have the status. So the status, it will be bar car, and it will be 200. All right. So what else? We have the user ID. So there we go. The user ID, it will be an integer, and it will be 10. After this, the last thing that we need is the created or add. Um, so this will be just timestamp and it will be current timestamp and let's simply click right here all right all right so there we go now we will get our table structure right here so let's just go ahead and refresh this all right so now let's pick a date like tomorrow or something um i want to make so it will be actually uh let's see eight all right, so today is the 9th of April. I'm going to keep it like the 8th of April. So for this right here, I'm going to type in my name and I'm going to go ahead and type in my email. All right, so the number of people, I'm going to keep it so it will be two. And the special request, I will just grab a simple text and just click on book now. All right, so as you can see, invalidate because it's starting from tomorrow. If we click on OK, we're going to go back to the index. Huh. You know, booking underscore table. All right, so we should go back to the index page. We should not access this page, booking underscore table dot PHP. Well, I want to actually name it. It will be booking dash table like this. Um, all right, so copy this part and I want to go to the index. And I want to go right here and change it before we forget. Dot PHP. All right, so there we go. Um, all right, so it's actually working, but you know, we got uh, something wrong right here. So after the alert, we should go. Um, Let's see if I simply exit something like the card. I want to grab this right here. Um, and I want to go ahead down over here. And I want to go ahead and echo this out. So this should go to the index.php right away. All right. So it's probably not going to display the alert, you know. But, we're, but we want it to go just to the index.php. Um, all right, so let's go back and let's refresh this. All right, so let me type in name. Um, this will be email. And this will be the type of date. All right, so I'm going to keep this so it's just the eight. It's of um, April. It will be two, that's fine. And if I go right here, 
if I click unlock now. All right, so invalidate pick a date starting from tomorrow. All right, and we're gonna go back to the index page. You know, that's fine. That's okay. Now let's click on browse if you know if it's, if it's inserting or not. So if it's not, so it's not inserting. So it's working perfectly. Now let's go ahead and you now do something valid. Uh, book with a valid date or something so if we go email.com and the date right here so this will be just 11th um all right and people i will keep it three and if i go right here for the special request and paste this in i click book now all right so it looks like we got a problem we click on browse All right, so I'm picking a valid date and not working. All right, so there's a date booking right here. Should this be like a bigger Y? Let me just push this. All right, so if the date booking right here is greater than the date of today, um, go ahead and insert right, so it should actually be okay i don't see where is the problem where is the problem coming from um so let me try once again So this will be like right so 10 is fine so we're gonna keep this too and we're gonna go here and copy this part and paste in click book now right so it's still still not inserting so just give me a second all right so now i know what's going on well basically we need to format the date in some other way so just go ahead right here and just paste uh go ahead and pause the video and write this so right here we're typing the date function in php which will get the date we'll format this as month um day and year and after this we will get uh the, also the current uh time um all right because and so you know if you look at the index page right here um well yeah, if you look at the input, that's simply getting the date. It's not going to only grab the date. It's also going to grab the time. Um, all right, so this is how it simply works. So you just go ahead right here. As you can see, you can pause the video if you want like to copy uh, or you want to write something, you know. But, you know, this is the only part that we are going to change. Uh, simply everything else will stay uh, the same. So you just save this part right here. Um, and refresh let's go down at the bottom and yeah let's simply go ahead right here and um let's see we want to go ahead and type in our name and we're gonna type my email so this will be just gmail.com right here all right so the date time so um now if we keep it so it will be like after tomorrow the 11th of uh, april right here so the number of people it's going to be you now keep it as month so the special request it's right over here now go ahead and grab this and paste it we click on book now all right so we're going back to index.php which is a good uh sign so if we go right here and click on browse I already inserted one so here is the new one right here um and the status now is pending all right and you know there is the number of people you should request and here is simply the date booking all right over here so it's working perfectly i want to now insert an invalid one with an invalid date so um let me go ahead once again and this will be email dot com and the date time is right here grab the 7th of april um all right so for the special request if we click book now 
right so invalid date big date starting from tomorrow um all right and we're gonna go back to the index once again and if we click on browse um all right so it's not inserting so awesome great it's working perfectly um something that's really small that i want to do uh, as you can see we did a status uh for the bookings and the bookings table you know to simply get back to the admins and change this like confirmed or done you know for the bookings i want to also do this uh for the orders uh, right here so we're not going to go ahead and grab the data from a form you know and uh edit uh edit a lot of stuff in the checkout right here we're not no we're not going to do this we can simply just uh, go ahead and do it right here in the database uh, as um as a default value right so if we go to the structure um uh, let's see let's see right here i can put it under the user id all right um and if i click on go all right so this will the name for this will be status all right like this and this will be varkar um will be 200 and we're gonna keep the default as defined so i'm gonna keep it just pending uh like this and i'm gonna click on save all right so now every time we insert a new uh order right here um this will the status will be pending right away and we do not need like to edit uh the query um if we go right here to the checkout we do not need to edit this query or anything like that so yeah, it will be inserted uh right away all right then you can you can actually do um and do some kind of checkout um and so on um and yeah um this is it for this video and i'll see you on the next one all right now so let's go ahead and work with something else now we finished um the part for the booking and only in one video um if we go down at the bottom right here these will simply be static i will leave them as it is if you want to create a table um and make them dynamic you know that's you know that's totally up to you this is like your homework um this is actually no big deal you're just going to create a table and insert data and just view it right here so yeah um and this part you know i'm gonna create it with you this will be uh dynamic um all right but we're not gonna add an image we're, go we're only gonna add like the name and we're gonna add the review and that will be all but before we go ahead and work with the reviews i want to go ahead and allow the user to view his bookings and his uh, orders uh, right here um all right so i want to go ahead right over here so the includes and if i go to the header so this part right here will be just bookings um and i will make this so it will go to uh well first of all i want to add the app url slash and i'm going to create a folder i'm going to name it users and after this i'm going to go and write and show or simply just bookings right away um dot php all right so i'm gonna also copy this call thing and go right here and paste this so this will simply be um just orders um all right so this right here will be just orders all right so great so yeah let's go ahead and work with the bookings just in this video so save this whole thing now create um the folder first and let's inside the folder go ahead and create a file we'll name it bookings.php so there we go um the design for it it's going to be pretty similar to the cart you know um where we have the cart if we go cart.php we copy this whole thing and if we just paste here in the bookings.php um all right so we're grabbing all the files and now let's go ahead and grab um the items right here so this will be grabbed from bookings uh where the user id is equal to the id coming from the session that's fine we're instantiating our class 
and there we're gonna grab um the bookings right here so these will be bookings uh all right so there is no price right here that we're gonna grab and um there's no any kind of form submission actually all right so this is the part that we need now if we go down at the bottom uh we will not name this card we will name it just bookings all right and it's also going to be right here you should actually add the links for this so you know the links for the home uh you know what it is it's it's the base directory or the base url and this right here you can add the base like this p uh you know php echo um app url and simply go to users and simply go to bookings.php and send in um send in the id of the user which we forgot to add and the header all right so just go ahead and send it in right away you should add um you know the links for every page that we uh have i did not add them so just go ahead and add them on your own i already showed i already showed you how to add them in this example right here all right so save this part um all right so this is what it is we go down here let's see what do we need to display from the booking stable um yeah there is our own let's see the bookings yeah there we go so we got a couple of things right here to add we got the name email the date booking the number of people the special request um and we got the status so we're gonna add like Five things, five things or uh, or more so we go to name if we go to email and add this right here so date booking number of people and let's copy this a couple times special request and there is the status all right so there we go now we gonna go ahead and work with the for each all right so if we copy the bookings right here um all right we can actually yeah we can do this part for huh this is the part for counting you know so we can remove that's fine and remove also the part for if right here um all right so bookings as just booking right here um so if we copy this part we paste this in so the first thing that we need to add simply name all right so yeah this whole thing is just a big image so let's remove all thing let's go down here and go php echo um booking first and we're gonna grab the name from it all right so it's just copy this whole thing let's go down here and, pa and paste right away so this is the email and this is the date booking All right, so there we go. And after this, we do not need any links. Um, all right, so we do not need the dollar sign right here. So let's copy this. What else do we have? So the number of people. So there we go. copy this right here. So this is special request and this the status hopefully this will do um for this part right here where we have the button you know you do not need this right here we only table um all right so save this whole thing let's go ahead right here and refresh all right so if we hover over this 
click on it so as you can see we click on this right here bookings.php all right so it worked we do not need even to add the id right here um and that's actually better so yeah we look down here at browse you can see that we have um the store right here all right for for the bookings all right so yeah everything everything's working right here when we change the status it will um when when we change the status you know it will change on its own when we change it when we change it when we create the admins and so on um all right so this will be all and i'll see you on the next video so now to another part which is the orders so it should be pretty quick and pretty simple because it's pretty similar uh, to the bookings so i want to go to users right here and i want to create this page so this will be just orders.php all right so i want to go to bookings.php right here copy this close and paste this right away so i want to go at the top and we're going to grab data from the orders and we're going to grab it you, you know by uh, the user id and we're going to instantiate and then we're going to go right here and go orders all right so i also want to change the design a bit so this will be orders um and this right here this should go to orders page dot php and this right here should be orders all right so there we go um so we go down at the bottom let's check what we need to grab from the orders right here um all right so we're gonna grab a couple of things uh, here we got some some things so we're gonna grab the name the email um gonna grab the town and country we're gonna grab the phone number uh maybe the address and the price and the status so it's a lot of things actually so let's grab the name right here so we got the name the email that's that's even better if we grab the town and we grab the country all right just pretty quick we can copy this part and add it like a couple of times right here after the country we got um zip code and we phone number and we got the address and after the address we got the total price um and it would actually display even the created ad uh, which is the date you can just go right here and type in date um all right so that's all you know if we go down here so this will not be booking this will be just orders uh and this order all right so we'll paste paste this right away right here all right so the booking and we do not need booking right here so we want to grab the town and after the town we want to grab the country and after this we got the zip code and after this we got the phone now we can is this like here several times address total price you know and here we can simply grab the date or even right here and this is just the status um all right so this will be all you know save this whole thing let's go right here fresh all right so we can go and click on this so orders.php so as you can see undefined the property yeah find the property date blah blah yeah there's the name the email the town the country the zip code the phone number so we missed up right here so let's see after the country right here we got the zip code first so if we go ahead right here this will be the code all right so 
after this we got the phone number and we got the address we got the total price got the status and this right here should not be date this is actually created underscore add so save let's now go ahead and refresh it will work for it so as you can see the town the country the zip code the phone number and here is the address and here is the total price in dollars so i want to add like a dollar sign somewhere right here so there we go all right so save right now all right so there we go 30 dollars and the status is pending and here is the date um so yeah it's working perfectly actually so yeah this will be all and i will see you on the next video all right so now let's do some cleaning up you know so i told you that there are some pages that we cannot allow the user to access um you know to access through the url or to access directly or right, it's you know one of these pages is basically um let's see it's basically the booking dash table right here because this will only handle a post request all right so we need to grab the code um that we have inside the pay let's say right here and we need to copy it and simply go to booking dash table right here just go right here and paste it so the user cannot access this page uh, right here directly because uh, if this did not handle a post request and the user just comes in and types the name for it right here it will just blow up with errors so we want to protect it um all right so let's now try and access it right away so this will be booking dash table all right so we're going back to the index page which is you know great um awesome you know there is also um the card page right here that we cannot allow the user to simply access when he when he's logged out um all right so if we go right here and if we go f um decision is not set user id we're gonna go head back once again to the index page so i want to go ahead right here and you want to you want to go ahead and concatenate the app url all right so if we save this we can of course we can access it once you know when we are logged in just like this but if we try to log out right now let's try to access it so we're going to go and access old slash card dot php so we're going to go they're going to get back to the index page which is just awesome this is what we need you know um i want to also fix these links uh, right here they're still all html and this even this image is also html so i want to go to the header so let me close this and also close this hmm now let me go to includes header.php so i want to copy part for the link all right so here is the home symbol and uh the about so i want to go ahead and paste this in and i'm going to go to about dot php all right so the part for the services service dot html so this will also php um all right and i'm not going to leave I'm gonna simply remove the part for the menu because we already have the menu uh, in the index you know the menu.html page if we try to access it right here um menu.html will simply just show you uh, the menu of the code that we have but we already have this so why would we go ahead and actually work with it once again if you want to leave it and you want to go ahead and select the data and make it hold dynamically it's just like the part that we have in the index you know that's totally up to you but i'm not I'm not gonna do this so i'm gonna just remove it um all right so now it's done let me also remove it from here um i want to have um and also fix the contact page so it will be just php all right so yeah this is all what we need actually um so let's see i want to go ahead and change this so it will be just php and the contact also going to be php 
um the service.html well let's also change this and the team right here we're not going to need neither the team and neither the testimonial.html well the team right here if we go we go actually to the index back there is you know the the team page will only show this part right here uh, where we have the master ships and so on so right now i i don't think you know that this is really important we already have it in the index why we we need just a single page for it if you want to leave it again and you're going to make it dynamic you know that's totally up to you but i'm not gonna go ahead and leave it so delete it and the this the testimonial.html um it's this part right here so again you can do the same but i'm you know i'm gonna display them right here in the index so I do not need it to be here. So let's just delete this part. Um, delete this file, sorry. And I want to go and fix the part for um, for the image, the logo. You know. So I want to go ahead right here. I want to go right here and click just on inspect. So I can have the logo. Not even logo just in each one right here so if i go ahead i grab this class so i can look it up inside the header so here we go the, the class so it just yeah not even a link it does not have a, a link inside it yeah here is sorry there is the link so we go right here echo app url right here and save this whole thing let's now close this and let's refresh all right so here we go now we can access this right here so yeah we can simply go ahead and make them dynamic because they're not dynamic just yet so we go to the index we go at the top we copy this here close this um if we go to about right let's simply go ahead and read the part for the nav um we copy this you know you know what you know what you need to do right here the whole page is going to be static you know except the part for the footer for the header so this will be just footer dot php save this uh if we go to the contact dot php right here all right so if we simply paste um all right so we want to go ahead top of at the top of the index copy this part and if we simply go ahead right here and paste well let's do it once again copy this and paste right here um let's copy this part you know and let's go ahead and paste down here let's paste this in so this will be just footer dot php and save and you're gonna do like you're gonna do it like this for the service right here you're not gonna do it so just go ahead and do it you know it's very repetitive and boring you can do it by yourself already all right so i would say you know and this will this will be all um and i will see you on the next video all right so now let's move to the part where we actually allow our lit users um uh, write reviews you know after the uh, after they grabbed our own service or after the uh consumed our own service you know um then before we go ahead and do this i want to validate the part right here i want to go ahead and uh, when we're logged out i want to uh, display some kind of text right here so um you know in, inside the part where we book if the user is simply uh, logged out we're not going to go ahead and um, allow him to book right he should be only logged in to go ahead and book uh, a table um all right so if we go to index right here um and let's see there is the part uh, there is the reservation right here part 
So I want to go right here, go down at the bottom, and here is simply our own button. So I want to go above this and go PHP F um if the session is simply set. So session right here. User underscore ID. Well, let's check if that first. So if the session is set right here. Um I want to go ahead and simply display the button. Um, all right, else I want to go down here. PHP display something like um, log and go book a table. So this will simply be all. And F right here. Save this. Let's go down here and let's refresh. All right. So as you can see, log in to book a table right over here. Um, so yeah, you can you know can style this however that you like, but I'm gonna give it as um, as this. Um, all right, and let's now move to the part where we allow users to write reviews. So, but you know before this, I want to go ahead and simply um log in all right so copy this part and let's click on again right here let's go right here and paste those and again all right so now we are at the index we got our username right here so if we simply click on bookings we're going to go to the booking uh part where we allow the user to view their bookings um all right, we we need to go ahead and like uh, show some kind of uh, button right here where we allow the user to simply uh, write a review once you know once the status of the server of the service uh, right here or, or once the status of the booking is confirmed. Um, all right, and we're gonna also do this also for the orders. Um, all right, so I wanna go close this first, and we wanna go to users. I go to bookings right here um and i want to go after the status and write in th uh well i can copy this right away all right so this will be um review right here so i want to go right over here add the td so i don't i i want him to only uh review our own service if he actually consumed it um all right um not just you know when the status is bending no when the status is confirmed all right and we cannot allow him to like review something that he did not even uh consume just yet or that he did not you know we cannot allow him to review some kind of service that he didn't took um all right so that makes sense i want to go down here first and go php f um f like the booking that is right here is equal to or is not equal to like confirmed so that means you know what we're gonna keep it just equal to and i'm gonna grab the word bending so we're gonna reverse it you know that's even better so if it's already if it's already bending you know let's see in status no i'm sorry about that we're gonna make it the opposite so confirmed confirmed how do you write confirmed I'm beginning to lose my writing because i don't even write enough all right so let's paste this right here so it's actually equal confirmed we're gonna go ahead and allow we're gonna grab a button uh, right here so if we go to food and if we go to cart we can go down at the bottom and grab the delete you know this delete right here link um so we're gonna view this all right um so this should be review us something like this and it's going to be like a type of success a button you know 
and we're gonna go ahead and work with the lang just in a second so let me just remove this right here and yeah and after this we're simply gonna go ahead and and if this all right so only confirmed if the status is confirmed we're gonna view this right here uh, otherwise we're not gonna do anything else so we simply just go ahead and save this and if we go right here and go refresh all right nothing will happen only this will show up just review um so i want to also go right here and go wait for the th so if the th if this is confirmed right here we're gonna go ahead and view this otherwise we're not gonna do anything so this will be just end f so save this whole thing now refresh um all right so undefined variable booking uh-huh we do not actually hmm. yeah of course um let's see yeah we cannot set the status right here unfortunately so we're gonna go right here just leave it as this that's fine save this whole thing all right so that's that's fine let's now go ahead and actually change one of the bookings right here um and we're going to change it to confirm so let me just go ahead and copy the word right here and i'm going to change the last one to confirm let's see what's going to happen so if we refresh this so as you can see right here review uh, us all right so we want this to go to another page well while we work with it so this will go on to php echo app url slash users and we're gonna go to slash review um dot php um all right so yeah let me just copy this let's go ahead inside the same folder let's create this review dot php um all right so what should we have right here we go to bookings dot php um we can actually can grab the code for the form um we just try to access it bookings dot php yeah. booking booking dot just booking dot php all right so you know this is this is another form for the booking we should actually work with it we're gonna work with it in the next couple of videos you know it's pretty simple we're only gonna like add the names for the form and you know uh make the action for the form so it will go to uh, the booking dash table right here so it's no big deal but i want to go ahead and grab this and allow the user to simply write us a review and this will be all you know um all right so i want to go right here i want to copy this whole thing just paste this in at the review.php for now um and i want to go ahead right here and remove the part for nav um all right and i want to go ahead right here and grab these links so paste this in so for the part for the header go down at the bottom uh, right here and let's remove the footer paste this in so this will be um footer dot php so save this whole thing right here um all right so i want to go back to bookings slash to bookings dot php right here if i click on this so now as you can see uh-huh where does it go actually i want to go ahead if i hover over this it's going it's still going right here so possibly yeah i did not even um i did not save something right here yeah i did not save this 
So save this. Um, if we now go ahead and click on this, all right. So now it's going to review.php. We need now to, need to change a couple of things. Um, so if we go at the top right here, um, let's see. So this will be right review. Um, and this right here will be the right here. Um, okay. Right review. All right, so paste this also right here. Um, let's go down at the bottom. This will be right review. Um, all right, so save so now and let's see what we got. All right, so there we go. Right, the review we should remove the remove this right. So, remove. All right, so there we go. This will be right to view, and the review will only have you know this text area. Do not want any one of those. We're gonna insert the username through the session. Um all right, so we're gonna remove all of these. So we're gonna remove the name, the email, the date, and we're gonna remove the part for the select box. We're only gonna we're only gonna have the text area. Um all right, so for the form right here, as always. The method uh, thod is simply just post, and um, the action right here is going to be um, let's see right here. The action is going to be in the same page, so this will be just review.php. All right, so for the text area, the name is going to be review. Save this and right here the button is going to be the type is already submit so the name is going to be submit right here so save this whole thing um all right so this will be just right review or submit review all right so great um, and the text area, and you're gonna see um, this will be just submit review right here. All right, so the label will be submit also. Save once again. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and process um, and process the logic for this page right away. So. I guess that we have a couple of um couple of pages where we process the logic for for an insert not in the cart well probably inside um at the cart right here yeah there we go so let's copy this um let's go down here and add these php tags so we can work with this we go here and this will check for a post Submit right here. All right. So, what did we set the name for it? Um, so it's actually just review. Um, all right. So if we paste this in, paste this one also. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove those. Um, now what we need is simply the user, the user right here. So for the user name, it will be grabbed from the session um so this will just be a session right here user name all right so this will be reviews for the table um will only be to right here so this will be review and it will the second one will be just user name right away so for the handlers, um, 
let's remove this right here all right so once again we should pass in the arrays as always um there is the username just remove those um after we simply go ahead and um after we write our own review we want to go back to bookings.php you know all right so i guess that this will be all all what we need to do now is just create our own table all right so there we go reviews right here so this will be id as always will be auto increment and this right here will be just review all right and this will be you know we can make it so it will be text actually this will be just 10 and this will be just user name right here um this is going to be a var car and this is going to be a create underscore at um all right so it will be temp and it will be current timestamp right here so here we go click on save all right so there is our own table you know let's go ahead and refresh this now all right so as you can see right review um right here so it looks pretty simple it looks pretty neat and there is our own first review click on submit review right here so we're going back to bookings now that's that's fine that's okay um we go right here and click on browse so there is our own first review right here so in the next video we're gonna go ahead simply um let's see and we're gonna uh show the reviews in the index page right here down at the bottom all right i want to go ahead after we write this i want to go to the same page actually so review.php now to the bookings all right so yeah this was a simple very simple video probably too long now so we're gonna in the next video we're gonna review them right here and so we're gonna view them right here. so this will be all in the next all right so in the last video we went ahead um and we inserted uh, the reviews um in the reviews table right here um all right so let's now go ahead and display them so we have a section down here at the bottom uh that we need to display um our reviews in all right so let's go ahead um to index.php all right and let me go at the top right here um and I can copy this, you know, paste right here. Um, so this should be select all from reviews. All right, so this is Arabic. Where, well, we do not even need where right here. All right, so after this, we're going to instantiate the app class. Um, I don't think that we even need to instantiate it since already, since it's already right there. Um, but you know, it doesn't matter. So after this, well, what we need to do is just pass in this right here. So this will be reviews. Um, and we will simply take this down there and we will display the reviews with a for each. All right. So if we go down here. All right, so this is testimonial start. Uh, you know, our clients stay right here. Um, so, yeah, we we need to go ahead and only keep one review so we can loop through it. So I'm going to remove those three. And I'm going to go ahead um, down here. Go PHP for each reviews as review all right so let me now grab this if we go right here and remove this part of the paragraph if we go php echo review and we're gonna grab the review right here all right 
so um what else do we have right here yeah we only need this right here and we need just the user um the username and this will simply be all all right so as a part for the image i actually want to comment it so after this we simply need to go ahead and end this for each so end for each save let's now go ahead and refresh all right so we only have one so you know it, since it's displaying uh, you know since we only have one review so it's going to display this one review at all uh the slider uh, right here we can actually insert one more um we just click copy right here um yeah we can we can simply go ahead and change this to something something like like that all right so we simply click on go so we refresh now all right so here we go now we have uh, another one right here which is a lot smaller you know so yeah this is how it works um the other thing that we want to that i want to talk about which is the booking.php page this is a page that we have right here that only contains um the booking form if we simply go to it if we go right here to booking.php all right so we're gonna find a page you know that only contains uh the booking form so the user can simply uh you know use it uh to simply do the booking yeah i know that we already did it uh we already did the booking um in the index but i guess you know it would be a good idea to add a link at the header and uh simply link to the form in another page um all right so i want to go to includes i want to go to the header um let's see right here let's go um down at the bottom i want to go right here and i want to copy this um let me see i want to I want to display it. I want to display it right here. All right, so this will be just booking. Booking.php. Um, all right, so this will be booking. I want to only display it when the user uh, is logged in. All right, so save this part right here. Um, let's now go ahead and actually make it dynamic um if we go to the index right here and if we go and grab this part um so if we go right here and let's actually move starting from the nav right here and paste this in let's copy the part for the header let's simply remove the part for the footer um and we can simply paste this in order.php and save this whole thing let's now go ahead right here and refresh this so this thing right here should be all dynamic as you're seeing so yeah it's looking looking great if we simply click on this right now so here we go i want to also validate uh, i want to now work with the form you know um so let's see if we go to the index right here if we go down at the bottom um team start no i guess it's actually above um reservation start let's see login yeah it's right over here this is the div that we need to copy uh, res uh you know reservation start right here we need to copy this whole thing and uh paste it instead of the part uh, that we have right here all right so we go down there let's see we can only like take the form you no know? 
that will be fine so let's remove the part for the form and let's go to index right here and let me go to the form copy it and let's go to booking right here and let's paste this in all right so save this whole thing right now so this this whole thing now should be dynamic and we can actually book uh using uh this form um which is in the booking.php so save let's now refresh all right so there we go let's now try to make a booking so i'm gonna go right here um one two three add yahoo does anybody use yahoo right now i don't know i'm gonna make this so it will be like um the 12th you know and the number of people i'm gonna keep it so it will be four i'm gonna go ahead right here copy this part um click a book now all right so we're getting back to the index.php which is just awesome that means that it's actually working if we click on bookings right here so as you can see um as you can see here is the date the 12th you know of april um, and the number of people is basically four and the status is pending and the user id is simply one because this is the only user that we have um and if we go down there and if we click on bookings all right so as you can see right here we got it um all right so yeah amazing that's awesome so this will be all you know um this is what i want to do in this video and i will see you in the next one all right now so in the last video uh we finished the user's side so what i want to do now i want to go ahead and you know start with our own admin panel it's going to be pretty pretty simple um and this is basically the design all right so we have uh, a couple of links uh, down over here so we have the home where we're going to show uh, some statistics about uh, our own web app um we have a login page right here all right we have the admins so we can view the admins and we can create new admins and then we have the orders right here we can simply view the orders and we can actually change uh, the status of the orders right here and we can also delete them and we have um, a page also for the food items you know we can simply delete them or we can simply create uh, new food items all right and after this the last thing that we have is the booking uh, the bookings you know we can also change the status and we can uh delete uh this you know delete the bookings uh, right here if we want um all right so it's going to be pretty simple actually it's not going to take that much um yeah this is simply the login page um all right so this will be all just check out the resources uh section for this video and you will find uh the code all right so this will be all and i will see you on the next video all right now so just grab the code you know that i just gave you in the last video go ahead to your htdocs folder in the exam folder right here and your C partition and just go to the road of uh, our own project um and just paste this code right away all right so it's gonna look like this so let me now go ahead and open this up with visual studio code all right and of course we're not going to create a registration page for the admin panel because you know that will allow everybody to go and register uh, for a user on your admin panel and we don't want to do this so we're actually going to go ahead and uh, work with the login page right away and inside the admin panel we're simply going to go ahead and create uh, admins all right so if somebody wants to be an admin on your website you can simply create the email and the password and just give it to them and they can log in right away all right, you know, if some things that I'm seeing sound a little confusing to you, you know, you will know everything, you know, at the right time. All right, so if we go to admin dash panel right here, we're going to see here is our own folders, uh, admins, bookings dash admins, foods that dash admins, folders dash admins, and here's simply just a simple style that sees is uh, file, and we have the index.html right here. So before we go ahead and work with the login, I want to actually go ahead and do an includes folder. It's just like uh, the ones that we have right here in the user's end, uh, because I want to grab a header and a footer. Um, all right, so let me just create a new folder right here. So I'm going to call this layouts. All right, because this again will save us some time, you know, will help us with uh, decisions. Um, 
All right, so if I go right here, let's see, this will be footer.php. And then when I go specifically to the index right here, and I want to grab, um, let's see, I want to grab the part for the header. And that is starting from the container dash load right here. All right, so let me cut this whole thing, paste it down here and save. I'll let me now go to this and I will change this first to PHP. All right, so I want to go down here and go PHP um, require layouts slash header dot PHP. All right, so there we go. We also want to grab um, the config file. So I'm going to go another step back right here. And I'm going to remove this whole thing. So this will also be config.php. I want to also go down here um, and basically grab my library right here. Uh, the library is... Um, the library's file i want to grab the app. i want to grab the app class so this will be well actually we want to keep him um we want to keep those you know uh, rendering or requiring these files as as the one uh that we have in the user's end so i want to go right here and i want to see what i'm doing so we want to keep the config at the top and we want to keep the lips at you know after it and we want to keep the header after this all right so you now to not get any conflicts in, in the future I want to go ahead and go up there and paste this in. And I want to go ahead and paste this in also. Um, so this will be just lips. And this will be app.php. All right, so save this whole thing or simply just app. All right, save this. Let's now close this right here. Um, I want to also grab this and I want to go down here. All right, so let's cut this first and add it right here at the footer and save. Let's now remove this part for the table. We do not need it. So we go right here, PHP, require um, layouts, slash footer, dot PHP. All right, so there we go. Let's now save this whole thing. Yeah. This is a semicolon, not a colon. So save this whole thing once again. Um, and I want to go right here. Let me access this. Um, let's see. We want to go right here. Local host slash um, restaurant right here. Restaurant. Uh, we want to go admin. Admin dash panel right here. All right, and should go to the index right away. All right, so require config build of no such file, blah, blah, blah. So it looks like we got something wrong um, right here. So this is config.php. We should go if we are. Let's see. We are at the index right here, so we should go a step back. Well, actually, just step back, not two steps back. Right, so save. Now go ahead and refresh. All right, so there we go. Now the design is fine right now in the index page. So that means that everything is working perfectly. So now let's take care of uh, the login page. All right, so if we go to admins right here, and if we go to login-admins, if we rename this right here, so it will be .php. Let's simply open this up. All right, and if I go right here and remove this part, and we're going to do, we're going to grab these files right here for the admins. All right, so now we need it to be two steps back since we already in another folder and in a big folder which is the admin dash which is the admin dash panel right here all right and we want to go a step back for this all right so save this let's go down at the bottom um and let's simply go ahead and remove those let's now grab 
the footer. Um, so let me copy this. Let me paste right here. So this will be just footer.php. So save this part. Um, all right. So I want to go to this now. So if I go to admins slash login dash admins. um the dot php all right so here we go you know the design is messed up a little bit you know uh uh the menu that was on the side or the section that was in the side you know it's right over here at the header which it just messed up but we're gonna we're gonna work with the back end for now and we're gonna fix the design later all right so 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 for the login um for the login right here we actually have um we have the logic since we created the authentication right here, so I'm not gonna, you know, write it from scratch since we already have it. Um, all right, so I want to go ahead and copy this whole part right here. Copy this. If I go right here and if I simply paste this whole thing in, all right. So we're instantiating the class and then we're doing the validation session right here, which is simply I want to comment for now. Um, all right, because this is related to decisions. And after this, we're, ch we're checking for from submission right here. We're grabbing the, the password and simply we're, you know, we're doing our own query. This should be admins, not users. Um, after this, we're sending the email and the password. That's fine. And after this, we're sending uh, the pass um, that we need to send uh, right here. So for the pass, after we log in, of course, we want to go to the, you know, we want to go to uh let's see admins right here so we want to go to the index page right away so this should be actually admin dash panel like this all right so this is all what we need right here let's now go down at the bottom and let's check the form so the form is this post and the action is simply could be login a uh, login dash admins right here all right, so we have an input and the name is email and uh, the, the other input, the type is password and the name is password. And we have the button right here, the type is submit and the name is submit. So all of this, it's fine. Um, it's great. So save this whole thing right here. Now, all what we need to do is simply just copy um, the part, uh, simply copy this right here, copy the table name so we can actually create it and go your database let's create this together so let's just paste this in and this will simply be id as always it's going to be an auto increment i guess that this will be the last table that we will create and this will be admin name right here um all right and this will be varcar um let's see for the varcar right here this will be 200 all right and this will be 10 and this right here will be just as word um this will be created underscore add um this will be timestamp and this will be current timestamp right here and this will be 200 and this will be just var car all right so after this let's click on save all right so there we go we got our own um admins uh, right here so we want to go ahead and insert um some data or uh, you know insert uh, a row so we can actually log in with it and since we already we go to the lips right here and if we go to the app if we simply try to access you know if we go control f and if we go log in right here you can see that we're using the password verify to, to, to verify the password you know so we want to go ahead um right here and yeah, we want to go ahead right over here all right and we want to um and we want to grab you know we want to grab a hashed password all right we're not going to go ahead and actually uh we're not going to go ahead and uh insert the raw password we need a hashed password since we already have the password verified because the first password verified is going to take some characters uh some raw data that we have and it's going to hash it and match it uh, to the hashed password that we already have inside the database so we need a hash inside the database in order for this to work um all right so i hope that makes sense so i want to go ahead and insert 
the hash that we already have in the user stable all right and right here i'm just gonna go and click on insert so i can insert some data all right so this is the hash that we have we want to go ahead and copy it we already know you know that the, the username and the email and the password are the same so now we know the password and we can log in with it well i want to copy this once more you want to paste it like this all right and for the admin name i'm gonna go something like admin dot first um let's see admin dot first at gmail dot com all right so i want to copy this no and if i click on go All right, so there we go. Now we're inserting this. So now we need to go ahead and log in and this is our own email. Yeah, we did not create an email field. So let me just go for the structure. I know that something was wrong actually. So I wanna go and create it after the admin name. All right, so I wanna go. So this will just be email right here. It will be bar car and be 200. All right, so there we go. If we click on browse, let's now insert. I'm going to keep the username as same as the email. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's now go ahead and refresh this. So now we need to grab the email from here and simply paste it. And now we know that the password for our own admin is this hash right here, which is this email right here. All right, so let me now is the same if we click on login right here that's undefined constant app url and blah 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 all right so at line 160 so yeah if we go right here so it's not seeing the app url right here that's actually that it should go to um all right so i want to go first and i want to fix this um not at the users if we go to us if we go to the user side first just for a second um so we're sending the pass right here but we're not working with it um so i want to go right here i want to go let's see i want to go at the app so instead of this i want to go ahead right here and like grab the pass all right and simply just paste it down here and save all right, so we're gonna use the pass for the location. Um, all right, and now it's, you know, the pass, it's gonna be, uh, if we go to login dash admins, you know, after we log in, it's gonna go to this pass right here that we specified, all right? Since now we're choosing, uh, you know, for the location, we're choosing the pass. All right, so save this whole thing and go down here and save everything. Let's now go ahead um, and try this once again. So oh, let me just, grab the email and let me go to the users and paste this as the password if we simply go to this all right so as you can see right here it's going to the index right away which is what i wanted to do uh, right over here uh, so the login now is working perfectly all right so i guess that this will be all and i hope that was not very confusing to you you know um so yeah, this will be all. And in the next video, we're going to work our way um, through the sessions. All right. All right. So in the last video, we went ahead and we actually um, logged in. I want to go ahead right now and start working with our own sessions. I want to also show the username right here. And I want to also create the logout, the logout page. Um, all right. So that, now let's go ahead. Um, right over here if, you, if we go once again to labs and if we go to app you can see that we already have decisions uh, right over here so we can simply use uh, use them um, all right so i want to go ahead um, right here to log in dash admins and i want to go ahead this this is actually the part for um, for validating decisions which is this uh, right here decision validate so I want to go ahead right now. Since we have decisions, I want to go, um, let's see, layouts, and I want to go to header. 
let's now validate uh, this part right here and let's echo out let's validate the header right here and let's echo out the part uh let's echo out uh, the admin name here um all right so i want to go ahead right here and i'm gonna actually echo out um the email so i'm gonna go um echo um session right here and i'm gonna just echo the email all right so save this whole thing and i want to go at the top and validate um this part right here for for them you know this section on the side so i want to go if if we have um we have a session we're going to go ahead and display this and if not we're not actually going to display anything all right so if i go right here so php f s that right here session um email All right, so we're gonna go ahead and display all of this. Otherwise, we're not gonna display anything else. So I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna go end F. All right, so this will simply be all. Um, I wanna also validate the part for the login, all right? So I want, uh, you know, I want the users to only view the login page when they are uh, logged in. Sorry. I. Sorry about that. I want the users to only view the login right here when they are logged out. This is the only page that the users will access if they are logged out. All right, so I want to grab this right here and paste it at the top so I can manage to do this. I want to go ahead right here and go HPF. Um, let's see if the session is simply not dead. All right, so if we go right here session um email if the session is not set we're gonna display the login right here all right and if not we're gonna display the home we're gonna go php else we're gonna display the home and we're gonna display the part where we display um the admin name so right here we're gonna go and f all right, like this. So save this whole thing now. Um, and right here, we want to go ahead and uh, do the logout page. So I'm going to go ahead right here and do and write my logout page. But before we go ahead and do this, I want to create um, a base URL for the admin. So I want to go down here and go PHP. Um, let's see. I want to go down here, go define, um, uh, like admin URL. All right, so this will be this right here. So I just copy this, remove this right here, and I want to also start the sessions right here. So, um, if we go to includes right here, and if we go to header, you can see that we start the session using our own um we started the session using our own starting session um method right here so just paste this in you know um and this will start the session right away all right so i want to go down at the bottom well let me grab this first i want to go right here now let me go right here php echo admin url and let's go slash after the slash i'm gonna go to admins and i'm gonna go to log out dot php so i'll copy this let's save this right here and let's go to this folder and paste this in all right so there we go um the code is going to be pretty similar to the log out that we had and the user side so i want to go right here i want to copy this part let me remove this and paste this in right away so after we log out we only want to go to admin slash you know log and dash admins 
app.php because again this is the only page that the user is going to access well before we before the admins actually we need to go admins we need to go admin dash panel first slash admins and then our own page right here so save this whole thing let's now close this right here um all right so so we need to add anything else i don't think that we need so let me just save this whole thing now we did not do anything right here so let's go ahead and refresh this all right so now we got the email right here so it looks like we got something wrong because we got the email um of we got the email of um of the users right here all right so if i go right here um let's see if i go to the user site local host if i simply go ahead right here and if i log out all right so let me just try the logout right here also all right so it's actually working we're going now to login dash admins dot php let me just go ahead right now and simply um let me go ahead right now and simply try to log in all right so i want to grab email right here and let me go to users grab the email because this is simply the password and if i click login all right so we got the email now for from the admins and so yeah this is working perfectly this is awesome right now um all right and this is what i wanted to work with in this video um so right here we allowed it uh, that you know we made it so the user will not view uh, the login um the login link right here um but you know but the user can simply go ahead and access them from here um as you're seeing all right over here and this is totally messed up we want to fix this so this will be fixed simply if we go to login dash admins right here and if we simply go ahead and um just went ahead and decomment this i want to go i still want to go to this message right here because i, I want to see what it's actually doing so it's going to go back to the index page um gonna go to the index page of the user's side actually and it's checking for the user underscore id oh so let's try it out and let's see what's gonna happen you know you know possibly it's uh, you know applicable for both the admin and the users end. and if we if it's not applicable for the admin end, we're gonna create one that's fine so i want to go ahead right here now and refresh this all right so validate session thrown in app line all right so it looks like we got an error right here 177 if we go this right here so checking for a user underscore id and scribing the id right here so let's create you know let's create another validation session right here that's fine so i can go ahead and copy this and go right here validate session admin so if the email right here if the session is set for the email um we want to go ahead back to the index page so i'm going to add this admin well this will simply be now um admin url and when i go to admin dash panel all right and i want to go right after this slash index dot php all right so if we save this whole thing right here um so this will be validate mission admin so save this whole thing 
separate and save this also. So let me just go ahead and refresh this right now. All right, so we're going back to admin dash panel uh, right here. All right, so it's actually working, but you know, there's something wrong with um with the path. That's all. Uh, so let's see admin dash panel right here. Um, and we're gonna go to the index right away. All right, so admin. admin dash panel and go and flash admin dash panel so this should actually yeah we should remove this so it's gonna be like this right away so let's now re now go ahead right access the index page all right so as you can see right here working perfectly let's now try to access this so if we go to, to the login dash admins right here we're going back to the index dot php page so yeah it's working it's working perfectly you know we just needed to create another method for uh for the validation all right so let's remove this right now and yeah i will see you on the next video all right so now let's continue working with our own uh our own login system right here you know we don't have uh much to do actually you know we almost we we're, we're almost there um so let's simply go ahead and validate the inside pages you know and you might think what do i mean by this if we log out right now and if we go once back to the index page you know we can see that we're you know that the user is still grabbing some the statistics the statistics page uh some information from the inside pages so we want to go ahead and actually um prevent him from doing this because again if he's logged out the only page that he's going to access is the login page all right so we want to go ahead clips and we want to create uh another validation method right here it's simply going to be uh, the opposite of this so this will be validating addition admin um uh inside something like this all right so we are it's basically the reverse of the last function so if the session is unset we want to go ahead back uh to the login page so i want to go to admins first and i want to go to slash uh, log and dash admins and we want to go to dot uh to, to uh dot php right here all right so this will be all so i want to copy this part I want to copy this method right here and I want to go to admin dash panel. I want to go to the index right here. Um, I want to go right after this. And I want to go and instantiate our own class. So app going to equal new plot, you know, new app is our class. And after this, I'm going to go to app. I'm going to simply just paste this in and save we should actually include this at every inside page that we have we should include this at every page that we have except um except let's say except the login page all right so in the admin panel of course so if we save this whole thing let's now refresh all right so we're going back to login dash admin start php again um so yeah this is this is awesome so I want to go ahead actually and I want to go and you know um fix the design for this page right here. So the problem was basically um if we go to layouts and if we go to the header, so it's not seeing the style.css uh file. So I want to go ahead and give it the right directory. I want to go to admin URL uh and I want to simply go to slash styles and after this i will go to style.css so if i save this right i now refresh so as you can see it's working perfectly um and yeah let me go ahead also and fix these links you know there are there's still uh html links um all right so well, yeah we should fix it actually from the header so if i go to this right here this is simply 
the home so if i go php echo um well not this admin url all right so let me copy this part and i need also fix yeah for the login right here so let me add this and go to slash admins and this will just be an, a php page and we also have a part for the index right here for the home so let's also save this let's now refresh all right so if i click this so it's going to the same page let me now go ahead and just grab the email right here let me grab the password let me log in all right so again working perfectly if we try to access the login we're going back to the index.php page so yeah awesome do we still have time yeah well we still have time if we go to the admins right here uh we want to go ahead and display the admins we can work with this in this video because you know why not um so if i go to admins right here and let's see I actually want to fix the links in for the admins where while we are in the header right here so there it is so if i paste i paste this in let me not paste because we grabbed email so let me just add this quickly so slash admin slash admins dot php um all right so save so if we now go ahead um well first if we go ahead admins.html and if we change it to admins.php um we're gonna go ahead right now and change this to php all right so we're going to the php page now um so if we simply click on this now let's make this dynamic and let's quickly select the data and do it for each now it's nothing nothing big if i go to login-admins i can simply copy those let me close it let's paste this in let me also close this and this and this um um all right so if we go down at the bottom and if we included the footer so we can go right here footer.php so if we save this as you can see we're not grabbing you know the email here dynamically but if we refresh you can see that we actually grabbed it so um this is working dynamically and let's now go ahead and grab you know if we go to the index page you know in um in the user's end you can see that we have some um some examples that will allow us to simply um select the data so if we go ahead right here php if we go and paste this in all right so it's going to be select all from admins and we're not going to need a where right here and if we simply go ahead and instantiate the class and if we go right here and name this so it will be admins all right so here we go this will be admin right here admin name and i want to go ahead right now and remove those two so i can simply go at the top php for each um admins as admin right here if i simply go ahead and grab this if i go right here echo admin admin name if i copy this part right here well this is actually the id and if i go right here this will simply just be the email all right so if i go right here and for each so save this part and if we go right here and refresh all right so we got um the only admins right here that we have in the table admins so yeah this will be all and i will see you on the next video all right now so let's go ahead and try to create the admins through this link well first of all let's go to admins right here and let's change this to php um all right so let me now go ahead and rename this 
PHP. All right, so there we go. Uh, let's save this right here and we go to create dash admins. So this will be kind of similar to the registration page. So I'm just gonna go ahead and actually grab uh, the code from the registration page in the authentication system. And you know, it will be really quick. Um, let me just first add the footer right here. So save this part. And if we go to auth, we simply go to register.php. Um, all right, we can copy the whole part. That's fine. Um, we go right here and paste this in. Um, all right, so here, validate session. So I guess, you know, um, that what we need to pass in is, is actually, let's see, that's the method in the index right here, which is this method. So we need, again, we need to pass it. We need to pass this in, in every inside page that we have. Um, so we want to go ahead and paste this in, All right, and save. And let's remove this. And we want to also add it to admins.php. So let me just go down there and add it right away. All right, so save. Um, we go now to create dash admins. We're checking for a post submission right here, and we're simply going to grab admin name from, um, the input with the admin uh, name, with the name of admin name, and we're going to grab the password and then, um, and going to grab the email and then the password. All right. Of course, we're going to hash it, you know, with the password default, um, right here. And then we're going to simply go ahead and pass in or write in uh, the query. So this should be admins. And again, should be, let me copy this. This will be admin name. This will be also admin name, admin name, and admin name. And uh, the rest is simply will be the same. All right. So after we simply create, after we create our own admins, I want to go back um, to the admins page right here. So. I want to paste this in. All right, so I want to go now to the form. So the method is post and the action is simply, let's see, um, create dash admins.php. All right, so for the inputs, the name is email and the name right here is actually admin name, you know, and the input right here for the last, um, the name for the last input it's simply password and the type is password so awesome and the buttons uh, type is submit and the name is submit so yeah all of this looks well all of this looks awesome so save this whole thing let's now refresh all right so if we simply go ahead and click on this and if we go right here um admin dot second right here add the mail.com let's copy this one more time paste it right here for the admin name and also for uh, for the password and if we click on create so as you can see right here we're getting our own data and we're going back to admins.php we simply go to the admins table and if we refresh as you can see the password is hashed and you know we can simply uh, log out from this and we can try to log in with our new user so as you can see we got the email right here so yeah looks looks awesome so this will be all and i will see you on the next video all right so the last thing in you know that's right to the admins is basically the index page that we have right here so let's grab uh, the numbers of these uh, things the admins bookings orders and foot items um so if we go to the index right here well simply you know all is done for the index we just need to grab uh the data um all right so what do we need to grab if i go to index.php i can simply just grab one of those again and if i go to the index inside the admin dash panel um if i simply just go ahead right here well we do not need to instantiate the class because we're already instantiating it at the top I'm going to go select all from 
um let's see the first thing that we need to grab is simply yeah it's simply the foods so i'm gonna use the count method our keyword and um in sql the sql language i'm gonna count all as i'm gonna add an alias to it so we can use so we can use it uh, you know an alias to the count right here and alias is basically just a fake symbol name uh, so this will be count underscore foods all right and from foods we're gonna remove this part we'll not need it and simply this will be just um count underscore foods all right so i copy this right now well this should actually just be select one that will be all um we copy this and if we go down at the bottom if we simply go ahead echo this out echo this right here this this assembly should be count foods which is the alias right here save this part let's go ahead and refresh all right so as you can see number of foods is simply three if we now go to the foods as you can see we only have three uh, items right here and we're gonna do the rest for these right here so we just speed up the video of this if this is too boring for you um all right so after the count foods we need to count we need to count what exactly so we need to count the orders all right so if we just copy this and paste it right here and this will be also orders all right and now let me just go ahead and copy this go down at the bottom and HP echo count orders and this will be just count orders like this because this is now our own alias um we also try to grab what else yeah the bookings so this will be count underscore bookings like this would be count bookings right here and we're gonna grab this from booking um all right so let me copy this we go down right here p p echo count bookings and let's paste this one more time so there we go let's save this thing um the last thing that we need is simply the admins so count underscore admins so let me also paste this in as an alias and this will be just admins like this and let me now um go ahead and copy this part let's go down to the bottom php echo uh count admins right here let's also paste this in so let me remove this and save this whole thing let me now refresh all right so as you can see the order is now is one the bookings is simply three and the admins are two so you can check those right here so for the orders we got one and for the bookings we got three and for the admins only got two so yeah this this is all what we need to do in this video um and i will see you on the next one all right now so since we finished the admins and the index page let's now move to something else which is the orders right here so we want to go ahead and show um and show the orders all right and we want to actually we want to make the status as a link so we will um so we will actually uh, have the ability uh to edit it or, or to update the status you know from uh, you know for the orders from pending um the confirmed or to done uh something like this all right and we also delete uh, right here this is the part for the orders all right so if i go right here to orders dash admins if i go to this i want to change this first uh i want to change this first so it will be just php all right i want to go ahead right over here and we want to remove this whole thing i want to go to admins and i want to go right here and i want to grab this whole these whole links right here and anyway, copy this and go down at the bottom and paste this right here so this will be just 
folder.php. Um, all right, and I want to go once again right here and I can copy this whole part because you know it's pretty similar. Uh, so this will be just orders and we're instantiating the class and we're simply going ahead and validating this part. You know, with the valid decision validation right here method, all right. And after this, we're gonna go ahead and also so it will be orders, all right. And we're simply just selecting all. We're grabbing this method right here, all right. So it's like any other select that we are doing, um, all right. So let me go down there and let me delete those two R's right here. I can simply go ahead above this tr and go php for each orders as order right here all right so if i copy this go down here php echo order right here and this will simply be just the id if i copy this part and if I go right here and paste this in, so let's rename this. Let's go down here and paste this in. This will be email. And this right here will be just town. And this will be country. All right, and this right here will be, I guess it's actually zip code. So I'll copy this, and paste it right here. Um, and I copy this once more, and this is the phone underscore number. Um, and this right here will be the address. All right. Let's paste this right here and type in address, and this is the price for the order. So here it is, and there is simply the status, and the status is going to be a link not just a simple text so i want to go right here and i want to copy the delete and paste it and i want this instead of danger this will be just success um or primary you know whatever that you want that it to and this will be just status you know um all right so this will go to um status page we're gonna work with it in the next couple of videos um so this will be PHP page, of course. And we want to go ahead and get some kind of ID for it. So um, the ID equal PHP echo um, order. And we're going to set in the ID right here so we can update the status. Um, and this right here also will be PHP. And we're going to add in the ID going to equal the ID right here, you know, and after this, we need to simply finish this up with an end for each. Okay, so, save this whole thing. Let's go ahead now and refresh. So, this is the PHP page. Let's now refresh this. All right, so undefined variable price right here. All right, so it's not price, it's total uh, price right here. So, if I go this and paste this in save and now refresh all right so as you can see it's 30 dollars right here and if we go to the orders we're going to see that we only have one order which is right here all right so this will be all now and i will see you on the next video all right now so let me just go ahead and start working with um, the status right here if you hover over both of those right here you can see that we're getting an id which equals four uh right here which is the id right over here all right so the status will you know for the status we're simply going to click on a link and it's going to go to this certain page right here and we're going to just see a very simple select box and we will choose from pending uh to confirmed um all right and that will be all it's very very simple um, all right, so I want to grab a page that have a select box. If we go to foods and dash admins right here, if we go to create dash foods, this is a page where we have uh, some kind of select box. So let me copy this whole thing. Um, and I want to go to orders dash admins. So right here, 
and I want to let me go and create a file. So this will be status right here dot php. All right, so let me paste this whole thing in. So as always, we need to go ahead and remove the part, this part right here. And let me go and copy this whole thing. Paste and let me grab the header and go down at the bottom and add the footer. All right, so this will be footer.php and save. Um, I'm gonna go right here and I wanna start my PHP. All right, so since we're sending an ID, and of course, we're gonna go ahead and uh, update based on our ID, so we need to grab it. So I wanna go fs set right here. Um, get like this and you're going to grab the id if we got the id right here let's simply go ahead and put it inside the variable all right and now what we need to do is simply go ahead and update uh, based on it so i'm gonna go let me actually go at the top and go and instantiate my own class so this will be new app right here all right so after this i want to go ahead and go and type in my own query so this will be update um orders that um let's see that what exactly that the status is equal to the handler right here so there is the status um where um the id is equal to the id that we're grabbing up there all right so this is the query let's go to our own class at lips right here and let's just go update so there is our own query we need to pass in the query and we need to pass in some kind of array and we need to pass in the pass uh, right here after um after we simply go ahead and update we're going to send a pass that this will go to um all right so i want to go ahead down over here so after the query i need to do my own array so the array we will have only one uh thing right here and that is the status um all right so for the status right here the handlers it's going to equal the status that we're assembly uh grabbing all right so this will equal the status variable right here and i will show you how exactly are we going to get this in just a minute all right so after this simply we want to go ahead now and do our own query um well actually we need the pass first so for the pass we're going to go ahead to show dash orders dot php so show dash orders uh, dot php right here after this we're going to go to app and we're going to go and grab our own update um method right here um all right so first of all we need to pass in the query is right here and then we need to pass in the array which is right here and we need to pass in also the pass all right so this is everything um for this one so again we need to grab this that is right here which which is the data that the user is simply uh, gonna submit um all right so how exactly are we gonna do this well basically from from the form um all right so i want to go right over here i'm gonna go f um it's that right here um so this will be um f simply the post right here with the name of submit is set that means that means if somebody clicks uh, the button um we're gonna go ahead and simply trigger this whole code all right and we're gonna go right here and grab the status value that's coming from the select box all right so this will be post and it's gonna be grabbed from the select box with the name of status um all right and i will show you how exactly are we going to go ahead and do this 
So let me just go down the bottom right here. So for the form, the action of the update, I'm going to keep it so it will be that is right here. Uh, dot php of course we need to send in the id or this will not work so send the id that we grabbed right up um right up there all right so after this we do not need those inputs or this even or this text area even all what we need is simply just this select box um all right so let me go to select box so this is going to be choose that is right here and it's going to be like ending all right so um let's see right here this is also going to be pending and this is right here confirmed and this is also going to be confirmed all right so remove this part and just save this whole thing and as you can see the type right here submit and the name is submit and it's all it's all fine it's all great um all right so as you can see right over here everything looks fine so save this whole thing and hopefully it works without any errors so if we go to status right here so as you can see we're going to status.php and the id is, is for simply if we simply go ahead try try to choose a status if we just choose this to be confirmed we click right here all right so the status right here let's try and go to orders right here the status was pending all right so if we click it's not grabbing the data so that means that something is wrong so update orders set status is equal to the status right here where the id equals the id so that is Orders it status right here. Update. Oh. So yeah, we did not actually. Yeah, the name right here should be status. This is where we're grabbing the data. This is what you know. What the error? This was the error coming from. This is where the error was coming from. All right. So if we click on status. Now we're back again. So if we click on confirmed, click on create right here. We simply browse. All right. So as you can see now, it's confirmed. Um, so yeah, it's working perfectly. I also want to like, I want to show the status or something. Um, so I want to go right here uh, to show dash orders. I want to still show the status here. So I'm going to copy this part. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste this right here. All right, so this will be um, that is like status value or something. Um, and sub up the status right away. So I wanna copy this and paste it right here. And this will just be status. I I will remove the dollar sign. Save this. Let's now go ahead and refresh this. All right, so you know, uh, as I expected, it's missing up. Um, the margins and the design right here so let me just go ahead and remove one one of those you know i can simply just remove the zip code or something so let me remove right here and i can remove right here and can go right here and remove the zip code all right so now it will work perfectly if i want this back so the bending i can simply just go right away and now it's you know it's uh, it's back to pending um so yeah this will be all well maybe i'll go to the status and i will change the button from create to actually update something like this save um let me go back once again all right so you can i want to also like change this from create for items to update status so if i go here this will be update save this whole thing let's now refresh so here we go um yeah this will be all and you'll see you on the next video all right something else that we can take care of which is um let's see if we go to orders all right so we possibly want to change 
this at the header. Yeah, let me take care of this problem first. So if we go to if we go to header right here, let me copy this. Let me go right here and paste this in. So this will be orders. All right, so this should be just PHP save. Um, let me now refresh. Of course, we need to change this first to PHP. Well, like we got um, orders dash admins slash orders dash admins. Yeah, of course, let me just go back once again. Push this. We click on orders. All right, so now it's working. Um, you know, the topic of this video is basically working with the delete right here. Um, all right, but I don't want to delete this record, so I'm gonna go ahead um, to the orders right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy it. Um, all right, so let's keep this order like 20 dollars so we can have something different you know so if we simply just go ahead and click on go all right so now we got another record all right so there we go now we can try working with this um so the delete you know it's no big deal we did the delete a couple of times in this course so let me just go ahead I'm gonna close this right now. I do not need it. Um, did we do the delete at anything right here? Yeah, here it is. The delete dash item. And the thing about the delete right here that we do not even need to create any kind of form. This is why I like this query. So copy. Um, now we can copy this part right here. The part for let's see. Yeah, we can copy these two parts right here close this and if we go to orders dash admins let's now create this it will be the late dash orders dot php uh, let's paste both of those right here so if we go to show dash orders right here you can see that we're going to delete dash orders and we passed in the id for this order um all right so i want to still go to show dash orders right here and i want to grab these right here because we need to include the header and we also need to include um our own class of course so this will actually prevent the user from uh accessing this page directly i already featured uh, this code uh, in the user's end so this will be admin url all right this is this thing is whole capital so admin url like this all right so here we're grabbing an id and then we're performing delete from this will be orders where the id is equal to the id that we're grabbing we're in instantiating we're in instantiating the class and uh for this right here we're not going to go to the cart we're going to go to show dash orders dot php and after this we're going to pass and the query and the pass um all right and if something wrong we're going to go to the 404 page all right, so this is right here inside. Um, it's yeah, it's right over there in the root folder. Um, right here. So how can we actually reach this? Huh. No. Let's leave it as it is. Let's see what's gonna happen exactly. All right, so let me save this whole thing let's refresh right now if we hover over this you can see that it's going to the id 5 if i simply click delete all right so we're going back you know there is no problem working with this so if i go right here and if i click on browse i should see that the record with the id 5 now is done so yeah great this is working perfectly it was a pretty simple video you know it could be because um again the delete right here we do not need to add any kind of form or anything like that so this will be all and i'll see in the next video so the next thing that we can take care of it it's the part for the foods right here all right so we have to change you know the link of course in the header um so 
you know we're only gonna go show the foods the food items um and this will be all actually um all right so let me just change this first to php let me go back um go the layouts right here and let me go to the headers let me grab this link or let me grab this right here so put dash admins go dash foods and this will simply just be a php page save this and close um let's now go ahead and refresh so if we simply click on foods right here all right so there we go um let me now go ahead to show dash foods and of course as always you need to drill let's remove this part um and let's go right here let's go possibly to admins and if we copy this part paste it right here all right so awesome let me copy this part for the header if we go down to the bottom and paste this in so this will be just footer that php and save this whole thing you know let me now just go ahead and refresh this so yeah um there we go we you know the header is working uh perfectly and it's dynamic all right so i want to still go to admins i want to copy part and I want to go down here and paste this in because again it's pretty similar. So select all from foods, so we're gonna instantiate the class and we're gonna validate uh, our own page. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this foods. Alright, so I wanna go down at the bottom, copy this. Um, and I wanna remove a couple of these TRs because we do not need them. Um, so let me remove this whole thing let me go above the tr go php for each for right here foods as food uh we can simply just copy this right here and go php echo food and let's simply just echo out the id and this right here this will be just the name and this right here is the image so for the image you want to go right here um image src which is the source for the image um so yeah we should actually grab them from the image right here uh this one right over here but you know let me go ahead right here so we should go a step back i guess and then after we go a step back we'll be at the admin dash panel right here um so we want to also another and also go another step back and we go to the image folder right here all right so after this we're gonna go um splash and we're simply gonna go right over here php echo um food and we're gonna go um and grab the image right away so let me copy this and this right here will be just the price of this and this is simply uh the page where we're gonna go ahead and delete uh the foods if we want so this will be delete dash foods dot php right here of course we did not create this we will create in the next couple of videos so we're gonna go ahead and echo out food right here id all right so there we go we go right here php and for each so if we simply just go ahead right here and go save this whole thing in let's go ahead and refresh all right so as you can see we got the data except um these images are too big so let me go right here style equal to with uh, like 50 pixels or something you can say it however that you like but i'm gonna uh, whatever that you like i'm gonna go ahead and stick to 50 pixels uh for every image width and height all right so as you can see there we go um there is also the price and if you hover over the delete it's gonna go ahead uh right here um 
and allow you uh, to view uh, to grab an, a dynamic ID to see a dynamic ID right here this is three this is two and there is one all right so yeah this will be all and I will see you in the next video all right now so let's go ahead and try to create a food item um with this link right here so this will go to an html link so we better go ahead and fix fix this um if we go to orders dash admins right here well not orders if we go to this right here so i'm gonna go ahead and make this so it will go to php um and after this while we're at actual dash foods right here we better go ahead and change this also to php um so save this whole thing let's now access this page um if we try to go right here and just change this it remove this whole thing and let's copy this right here and copy this part and go down at the bottom just paste this in and we're gonna go ahead and simply um add the folder.php right here so save this whole thing let's now try to make this php all right so as you can see we're grabbing the email dynamically so let's work with this form and it's going to be a little bit different from every uh creation uh, that we're trying to do because we're gonna now insert uh, um, uh we're gonna insert an image um all right so we want to go ahead oh, let's see it admins and we want to go to create dash admin right here and grab this whole um block vp block uh if we go right here and just paste this in all right so this will validate the session you know for the you know for the inside pages and this right here will instantiate our own class so we can work with this um and then we're going to check for from submission we're going to grab a couple of things we're going to grab the name the price the image and we're going to grab the description and um the mail id right here all right so let's see this is going to be name this is name right here so this will also be price will also be price right here and you know i'm gonna insert the image at the end um after this we will have description right here so this will be just description of course we're not gonna go ahead and hash this so we better remove this part right here um am i am i getting the description right let me go to foods right here well, after this let me go to structure all right so i want to grab it and paste it right here so i don't have to face any errors in the future um so after this we're gonna do also one more for the mail id so if you look at over here we have this the mail id i'm gonna go ahead and paste this in paste it also one more and right after this i want to grab one for the image uh, so this will be inserted with a special a sober global and that is the files sober global all right and this will accept two of these right here it will accept the image and also the name of the image all right so this will allow us to simply grab a image name and insert it inside the database after this i want to do a directory for the images you know because we're not just going to insert a uh, you know some text in the inside the database and that will be all no we also want to go ahead and um, create some kind of folder right here and we will do the directory for it so we can insert the images um you know inside this folder all right so uh this right here will be foods uh dash uh images all right so this is the name of our own folder and we're simply going to concatenate this with the base name right here so the base name will take this parameter which is the base name for the image all right so great and after this we're simply inserting so this will be just foods um all right so it's going to take the name right here and also right here right here and also right here so we're going to do this for the rest of course so this will be just price and price right here and right here and right here um 
All right, so after this assembly description, so this will be description, 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 and description right here. Um, and after this, we have the mail ID, uh, the, the mail ID, not the mail, the mail ID. <laughs> um, all right, and after this, we have the image. Um, all right, so if we go right here, see, here's the description. So we have the mail ID right here, and we have the image right here. All right, so let me copy those like two times because we need to pass in also the arrays for these. Do not forget these right here, or this will just blow up right and will not work. These are basically the handlers that are used with the prepare um, method inside PDO. Um, all right, so right after we insert, I want to go to show dash foods dot php. All right, so right over here, I want to go and make sure that everything is working perfectly. Actually, so I'm going to go and do a small simple if statement, and that will be move uploaded files. So this will take in two parameters right here um, a file name right here the temporary file name all right so we will add temp right here as the temporary file name and after this um we need also to pass in the destination or the directory and here it is there the directory right here so just paste this in um all right so if this worked right here we're gonna go ahead and trigger our own function which is right here all right, so I guess that this will be all. Well, first we need to go ahead and grab um, and grab this, copy it, and we wanna go ahead and insert or create this folder here. All right, so save the whole thing. We wanna go down at the bottom. We did not do anything with um, with the form, so I wanna go ahead and copy the name of the form and paste it inside the actions. And the ink type right here will allow us to simply upload a file with the form. So this is really essential and important right here. If this did not exist, the form will not upload an image. So right after this, we're seeing that we have inputs with a couple of names as always. So the name, price, and image right here. And the description right here. We did not add a name for this. So this will be name, um, description. Let me go at the top. Let me grab this. Um, so there it is, and for uh, this right here for the select box, we're selecting the mail, uh, the mail uh, underscore ID. All right, so for the values right here, we have the value for the breakfast, which is one, and for the lunch, it's two, and for the dinner, it's three. All right, so I hope that this makes sense. If we look at, we'll click on browse right here at the full table, we can see that the mail. Uh, a meal idea right here is one two and three now one is for breakfast two is for lunch and three is basically for dinner if we go for the button right here the type will be submit and the name is simply submit so yeah hopefully that we we did not make any errors right here so just save this whole thing and let's now refresh this and let's add some other uh some other food right here so i'm gonna keep this like something like food sample um something weird like this so the price it will be 20 dollars and the images i want to go right here and just grab a simple image so i want to go to exam and i go to ht docs um so grab any kind of image that you want you know let's see if we go to our folder project folder Let's see where I am exactly. Kind of confused. Um, yeah, I am in the HD docs. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so if we go to images and you want to grab something like something like like this, this will do. So for the description, let me grab a symbol text and the mail. Here I'm gonna show so I'm gonna show it so it will be breakfast. 
um all right so if we click on create so we're going back once again so as you can see food symbol right here and we grabbed um and the image is showing up and there is the price i want to go ahead right here and click on browse so as you can see right over here working perfectly now if i go to the folder i can see i can simply see the image right here so yeah it's working perfectly actually yeah i did not thought did not think that it will work uh this perfect you know from the first time weird all right um all right so yeah this will be all and i will see you on the next video all right so now to the delete right here and i don't want to just delete the record um i want to also delete the image right here um all right so we will use the a link function to simply delete files and this is the one of the most important functions you know when it comes to deleting files in php all right so let's see how this will work so if i go to forward uh, dash admins right here which is the folder i want to go and create this right here delete dash foods dot php all right so there we go um let's see did, yeah we actually deleted stuff you know uh, so we can make use of the code that we did earlier and that is right here in the delete dash orders so let me copy this let me go the dash foods and just paste this in since the you know since the foods right here uh sorry since the deletion right here do not need any kind of form uh, we will perform this with just uh, pure logic right away so we will grab the id right here because if we look at show dash foods you can see that we're sending in the id dynamically all right if we hover over this and see that we're getting the id down at the left right here uh, at the bottom of the page all right so after we grab the idea we're going to go delete from uh this will be foods where the id is equal to the id here and then we're going to go ahead and instantiate the class and after this we're going to uh, like uh choose our own path right here that we will go to so this will go to show dash orders.php and after this we will pass in the date and all of this is simply fine before we go ahead and do this i want to go ahead and actually um delete uh, the file first um like all right so how are we gonna do this well if we go um we go to full right here and if we go so let's see add dash cart um we can simply grab this part right here this is the part that we're gonna use to simply grab the data grab a single uh, a single row at a time so this will be select all from foods that's fine where id is equal to the id which is right here we're not going to instantiate um well um we're not going to instantiate this actually because we are instantiating it right over here um all right so after this we're going to go ahead and go select all and we're going to pass in this query so after this we're gonna go and type in on link right here so there is our own function so we will pass in uh first of all um the folder where we are keeping our own image so this is foods uh dash images slash um we're simply gonna concatenate this with one right here and grab the image from it since the one uh, right here is simply the object you know since we're grabbing the data from this object right here we can simply grab the image now from inside it all right so yeah this this is the only thing that we need so this will be forward show dash foods right here dot php all right so awesome great we can simply move the part you know uh so save this whole thing right here now let me now go ahead and refresh a little bit what's going on with this so if we click on the right here all right so now got deleted actually so the record is deleted successfully so as you can see right here if we now go ahead and refresh this if we go to the folder as you can see the image is vanished because 
now the L link is working and the image is basically gone. You can refresh this if you want, you know. Um, and yeah, this will be all, and I will see you on the next video. All right, so I would say now that the part for the food items right here is simply done. Um, now it's time to go and move to another part right here, which is the last part, which is the bookings right over here. Um, all right, so let's go ahead to um, let's see admin panel first, and we'll go to layouts and let's fix the link. So I want to go right here, copy this part and paste right here slash booking dash bookings dash admins, and this will be show dash bookings dot uh, php. So save this whole thing. Um, all right, so we want to go bookings dash admins. Let's rename this. So it will be just PHP. And let's make it dynamic while we're at it. Um, we go to admins, and if we go this right here, we can simply um, can copy this whole part since we're going to just collect some data. If we go to foods, uh, not foods right now, we already uh, we already finished this. If we go to show uh, show dash bookings dot PHP. We go right here and paste this whole thing in. Let me copy the part for the header and go down at the bottom and add this. So this will be order.php. Um, all right, so let me save this whole thing. Let me go back right now, refresh this whole thing. Let me go to bookings. All right, so there we go. So we're, you know, we're getting our own email dynamically. So we need now to go ahead and um, grab the bookings right here. So it's a pretty simple uh, data selection. After this, we're simply um, instantiating our class. We're validating the page. And after this, we're selecting. So this will be just bookings. All right. So if we go down at the bottoms, if we go down at the bottom right here, and let's remove those two right here and let's go php for each um bookings right here as booking all right so let me copy this php echo booking this will be id copy this part right here name and this right here will be email and this right here will be let's see date underscore booking or booking right here um uh, this will be number of people so num underscore people like this and this will simply just be um we paste this in uh this will be the special request so let me copy this paste it down here after this we have the status so let me copy this part and add this right here well this should the status should be actually um a button all right, so let me copy the button right here. So this is the delete button. This should not be a delete button. This should be a status uh, .php right here. And this shouldn't be a danger. I'm going to keep this so it will be a primary, you know, uh, a button type of primary. So this will be status or change status, you know, however that you like to call it. Um, all right, so this is right here is the created at. So if I simply just go ahead and paste this in, so this will be created underscore at. Um, all right, and this will be also PHP. When I pass in the idea right here, PHP echo, um, booking, and we're gonna grab the ID. All right, so let me also copy this part right here. I wanna add it to the status so that yeah, sounds great um 
PHP and 4H right here. Save this whole thing. Um, yeah. This will be all. So save once again. Let's refresh this. All right. So there we go. Um, I would say it's looking great. Except that we want to see the status of uh, the value of the status. We're not going to just, you know, show this link right here. So it looks like we need to go ahead and um, remove uh, something from those. So I will possibly remove it and we can add the status, you know, instead of it. So if we just remove the idea right here, if we remove this, I want to go, well, I want to keep the status after the created ad and i want to want this to be change status and i want to copy this and keep the status like uh, above it right away so this will be status like this all right so um let me go same right here so copy this also and i want this to be status like this so save Let's go ahead right now and let's see what we got. All right, so name, email, date, booking, for people, for special request, created that, and that is right here. So it's messing up with, uh, messing up with the design. So I possibly go right here, go save this, move this word. All right, so as you can see right here, now this will allow us to simply just change the status right away if you hover over it you can see that there is some dynamic id uh, and also for the delete all right so yeah if we look at the bookings right here yeah we have three bookings and those are all three so this will be all and i will see you in the next video all right so in the last video we went ahead and we showed uh the bookings right here so now it's time to go ahead and work with the status right here um and this is going to be pretty simple because we already did it in the orders dash admins right here so i want to go to status.php i want to copy this whole thing and i want to close it and then go to bookings dash admins right here and create a status.php page all right if we go to show dash bookings once again you can see that we already passed in the id right here all right so if we simply go ahead and paste the code that we copied from the status so here we're simply rendering or requiring our files um all right over here we're going to grab the id and right after this we're going to set the id in a variable and we're going to check for a post submission and there is the status right here so this will be update orders well not orders now this will be bookings did status equal to status where the id equal to id um after this we're going to pass in the array and we're going to pass in uh the pass right here so let's see this will be just bookings show dash bookings like this and then we're just going to trigger the update function from the object that we create up there um all right so if we go down at the bottom so this will be update status that's fine and this will be the same page which is status.php and we're going to pass in the id um all right so this will be choose status in so yeah that's that's fine i would say that this is actually pretty much it uh, all right so save this let's now go ahead and refresh this part right here so for the booking uh, if we click on status right now all right so it's going to status.php and here is the idea assembly one assembly make this so it will be just confirmed we click on update right here all right so as you can see confirmed uh, right over here um if we go now to bookings all right so there we go confirmed we can also add something else and that will be like uh done means that you know that the booking is over and um the customer got the service and it's all fine so if we copy this and paste it right here save now we refresh this we can go to this uh booking right here 
if we click on status we can simply make this so it will be done we click on update all right so as you can see it's rendered done right now we simply refresh this as you can see right here it's done um yeah this this will be all do we have time yeah we still have a lot of time so why don't we just go ahead and wait right here um so again this will be pretty similar so uh, the order is right here we go ahead right here and go to lead um uh, dash bookings dot php all right so there we go um if we go ahead lead dash orders let's go ahead and copy all part right here if we paste this in we go back once again to show dash booking so we're going to see that we're passing it. um all right so that's fine um so yeah if we go down at the bottom we can see that we're grabbing an item here so and we're going to go to the query so delete from this will be just bookings like this where the id is equal to the id and then we're going to go ahead and instantiate uh, the app class after this we're going to go after we delete we're going to show dash bookings dot php and here we go if we simply trigger the delete function we're going to pass in the query and then the pass and we can simply just delete this whole uh, thing from here um all right so save this whole thing let's now refresh we simply just click on this all right so now we deleted the last record right over here um if we simply refresh this you'll see that the last record with the id3 is gone um so yeah again it was pretty simple because we do not even need to write any code anymore since we already have the codes um and yeah this will be all and i will see you in the next video all right now so in this video we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a very simple thing well if we look at the admin dash panel right here if we look to uh, foods dash admins you can see that we inserted uh, the foods uh, right over here inside uh, this folder uh, we inserted the images inside the foods dash images right here so we should actually go ahead and grab them from this folder um, all right instead of you know if we go to the index.php we're gonna see that we're actually grabbing them from the image um from the image folder right here that's in the root uh that's in the root uh folder which is right here all right so there we go we're grabbing them from this image right here all right so we should not grab them from uh, here because now uh the, the new ones the new foods right here are going to be inserted uh, right in this folder all right so we better go ahead and create uh, or define a new constant you know for them and we should grab them from here all right so i want to go to let's see right here i want to go to includes i want to go to the header and i want to define a new constant for them so this will be um app images like this so we want to go to slash restaurant and we're going to go to slash admin dash panel right there and we want to go to slash um codes dash admins right here all right and we still want to go to this folder foods dash images all right so this is where our images are so let's just paste this like that um all right so since we already said this let's now save let's go down at the bottom and let's actually use it um all right so well not here sorry about that if we go to index.php now we should like use it right here so i want to go ahead and go right here php echo i'm going to echo out this and we're going to go to slash you know this right here um all right so this will be all and also we want to do it for the part in the cart you know we're still grabbing images in the cart if we simply go ahead and go control f you're gonna see that we're having uh this part right here so we want to remove this whole thing you want to add this 
well let me just go ahead and type in php echo app images like this all right slash and we're simply gonna grab the image itself right now so save this part um and i guess that those are just the only two places that we're echoing out images you know dynamic images you know for the food items so save this let's now go ahead and refresh and now the index page so if we go down at the bottom you can see that the image now is not showing up um and that's of course because we're grabbing it from uh, some other place all right so i want to go right now to the c drive i want to go to the exam and i want to go to hd docs um let's say i want to go to my folder structure right here and i want to go and grab these images from right here and i want to paste them inside the new folder um all right so if we look at foods right here um you can see that we have a couple of images menu one two and three all right so let's grab those and paste them inside our new folder so there we go let's actually cut them all right so they're not even going to be here um so if we go to admin dash panel if we, if we go to for dash admins and if we go right here and just paste this all right so if we refresh now and we should simply just grab them so there we go we simply now go to this all right so as you can see right over here they're simply just showing up we now try to go ahead um to the users and let me access the cart also so we need to log in in order to access the cart um all right so let me just go ahead and click login all right so there we go um if we click on the cart right here all right so it's showing up also at the cart since we already um changed it since we already changed it um all right so let me log log out once more and i want to create i want to go um let's see i want to go to admin dash panel right here now let me just go ahead um and try to log in with an admin and let me create a new um a new food item all right so let me grab this let's see if it's actually going to show up with the image uh, in the user's end or not so if we log in let me go to foods right here let me create new one so this will be sample um food item right here and the price will be like 50 dollars and the image right here let's pick an image right away so uh let's see let's grab the bg hero dot gbg right here so after this we're gonna grab a description and we're gonna keep uh choose the meal as the breakfast by simply click on create all right so as you can see sample food item and it's showing up right over here so i want to go ahead right in a log out and i want to now access um our users end so if we go down at the bottom so as you can see now we got it right here with its own image so it's showing up at the breakfast of course because they were inserting it with um the idea of the breakfast which is simply one we go to foods right here and see that the idea simply b1 for this um all right so as you can see right here um yeah this will be all and i'll see you in the next video all right so you know i was just checking the website and all or just checking our app or uh some validations uh, some errors here and there um and you know i'm logged out right now and if we simply click on the view right here and go to the view page where we can simply add this item to the cart we can simply we're grab we're getting this errors which is undefined variable count right here um all right at 104 um so this at uh, dash to card dot php so i want to go um the food right here and i want to add dash cart so if we go to the count right here i want to go ahead of this and i want to check for the session so i'm gonna go f um as that session right here um the session is simply 
All right so if the session is right there we're gonna perform this code you now that's related to the account right here um otherwise we're not gonna do anything else php and f all right so save this let's now go ahead and refresh this right over here all right so this part now is simply done you know you can notice that the add to cart um assembly gun also which is actually what we need we don't want to like um we don't want to show the button you know which is add to cart while the users are logged out um all right because they're simply cannot add any any item to any cart when they're logged out we need it like this all right so um you can see that at the top right here we need the session right over here in order for this to work in order for them to add you know any item to the cart so if, we're, if they're logged out you don't have any session so this will trigger an error uh, right away all right so it's better to be like this of course in order to protect our own session um so yeah this was a very very uh simple thing but you know um i should note it out so yeah um this will be all and i will see you in the next video